Good morning. Yes, my stream is better. Thank God for that. What is this rubbish? Stream health good. Perfect. All right. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me just share. <laughs> Let me just share the link, and then um. Why is my title all wrong? Oh my god, this is all wrong. I've got to change this. Hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, I'm coughing. Alright, that's fine. Alright, let's uh, let's do let's do this, yeah. Let's see if we can evaluate. It's hard. The markets are hard right now. They're not easy. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome again. Welcome, Uz, Uz, Usum, Usama Zafar. Welcome, T13. Welcome, David. David, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, where are you guys from? Usama, T13. It's good to know where you guys are from. I know David is from the UK. Um... Usama Zafar, bro, already update. My buying is 44. Upcoming hour. What you look. What you look. Okay. I can have a look at Audi. Um Let me just have a look at Bitcoin first. All right. I'm going to have a look at everything today. I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at the broader market and um, trying to come up with some ideas for what could happen and what could be happening at the in, at the moment. So uh, let's start at the top. Bitcoin dominance. We broke out of this range. And we're above these pivots. We back tested this pivot here. You can clearly see that. So we have an easy invalidation now for Bitcoin dominance. Okay. Um, let me get rid of these brush strokes now. If the price starts to fall back underneath that 
that pivot, then um, we're going to probably head back to the value area low, uh, high of this range for to see if we can find support. And then the question will be if that pivot forms a resistance, okay? Otherwise, we just kind of hold here for another attack at the top. So you can imagine that this top part is another range. And then this is the middle part. And then obviously we have the value area. So we have possibility of three mini ranges here if we fall back here. And that's going to give us clues as to how the altcoins are performing. I think if Bitcoin pulls back and it pulls back suddenly, it's, a po it's very possible that we attack the higher level of resistance there. Yeah, it's not, it's not far away. So it's, it's kind of weird that we're here, but we haven't actually gone there. And we haven't actually hit the golden pocket. Good morning, Piotr M. Greetings to everyone. New here. Welcome. So I'm just doing a just a kind of like a broad update of where we're at. This is Bitcoin dominance. So actually just looking at that, unless I see weakness in Bitcoin dominance now, to fall underneath support, which is going to give all coins the, the space they need to run. I'm actually now in my mind that we do make another attack. And that kind of makes me think that it is possible that Bitcoin could fall into a little bit of weakness again and scare the market again, but it doesn't necessarily have to happen today. Um, you can see that we're kind of trying to hold this previous pivot on the weekly time frame. We had a very powerful move break. That's because of Bitcoin pulling back and liquidating. That's what happened. That's what this caused. This created that effect. I think it's quite weird that we wouldn't go up to to, to make another attempt. Like if, I, I can't imagine that we've come all this way and we don't we, we don't go into our area of interest, which is the golden pocket, which is here. Now, the conditions for Bitcoin dominance to go up are weakness or, or strength, massive strength, massive strength. Yeah. So Bitcoin needs to be extremely strong, so strong that the rest of the market bleeds into Bitcoin or has to be extremely weak. Yeah or show like volatile weakness and that's the two conditions otherwise usually what happens is that bitcoin is going sideways and it's on support and bitcoin dominance goes down so we are trending up we have broken out of this inverse head and shoulders above the neckline we're above the neckline now trying to find support on bitcoin dominance I think it's very unusual that we wouldn't make an attack of my area of interest, which is this uh, third test of this trend line, the back test of this broken trend line into the golden pocket. I think that's when, oh, personally, I think that's when alt season begins, when, when Bitcoin dominance hits massive resistance. And we're just not there quite yet. We're almost there. Just not, not, not quite. So that would complete our inverse head and shoulder pattern to go up there. That's exactly what, where we want to be, because that way we can start our alt season. I think that's when alt season begins. In any case, it's always possible that it takes a while for this to play out. It may not happen immediately. I don't know. I don't think it would be very unlikely to get a sudden reaction like that. It's more likely because if this is going to top out here, if you look at previous toppings of Bitcoin dominance, you see this took two weeks to top out. Um, let's have a look. This kind of took about six weeks. You see, it took about six weeks to top. Um, this took about two to three weeks. 
you had about two to three weeks here this was the only one where it kind of went up and went down um it wasn't really a top it was kind of the range when i'm looking at these tops unless we're in a massive trend it's usually it takes a while to top out yeah i'm not expecting this dissimilar behavior for bitcoin topping a dominance topping out here i think it'd be very unusual for bitcoin dominance to just suddenly top out like that i think it's more likely that we try and get through and then fall back okay so i'm keeping an eye on this we're still not there yet and i think it's it'd be very strange to just fall back now um so that kind of gives us a little bit of a clue on bitcoin in the context of bitcoin it's all about context so <clears throat> this is my usdtd chart usdtd doesn't show the price of usd it shows market confidence in the value of bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market so it's a very psychological chart it's all about this one's all about psychology of whether people give value to usdt or give value to crypto and so obviously it's been trending up and we had a break let me just go to this is the weekly time frame that i'm looking at let me just hide all of this stuff because it kind of gets into the way you know? let me just hide my moving averages i don't need that hide the volume as well it's not, it's not important so we have a very high time frame trend line on usdtd which is this yellow trend line we had a intermediary trend line and then what you can see is that there was a bump okay so you get this higher time frame trend line, which bumped the, here, this trend line, it bumped. This was the lead in line. The price was nicely trending on this leading line until it bumped and it bumped because we had this higher time frame trend line uh, and USDTD bumped. This is called the bump. This is where you break the bump line. And this is where you break the leading line. And this is where you back test it. Okay. So in effect, what we're experiencing with USTTD is a bump and run pattern, which is in, in, in execution at the moment. Uh, and it's a reversal. It's a higher time frame reversal pattern to the downside. Um, This is the pattern bump and run reversal see that and we're looking at a higher time frame reversal pattern that's being that's being played out now this is this is not about the price of usd this is about the confidence in usd with respect to crypto so whereas before the confidence in usdt with respect to crypto was trending up i.e the confidence in we crypto in comparison to USDT was lacking, was slowly declining. You can see now that we've broken some key trend lines and we're making an attack for the lows. The way this uh, pattern behaves is that the price will usually try to target uh, the bottom of the beginning of the leading. Okay, so the bottom of the leading is here. That's the target. However, there are intermediary levels of support in the way that the price isn't just going to go down. When I say price, the percentage isn't just going to go down like that. That's not the way the market works. Okay? So you can't expect the behavior to be like that. We have this volume range, which I've marked out. We have the value area high. The high volume node is there. We have a point of control there and then we have the value area low and for me the target of USTDD, USTDTD, okay is the golden pocket 
that's from this pivot here where the leading began to the top here and the golden pocket lies perfectly on the at the value area low of this range we haven't we've actually if you look at the where the um the ust usdt dominance is you can see that we've fallen into the value area and now we're coming into resistance you see that we're back testing resist uh, a flipped level um the vah the value area high should flip once you've broken it we're coming back to test it as resistance good morning war child so we have this higher time frame pattern forming on ust dominance doesn't show you the price of the usd it just shows you um confidence in the usd t versus crypto okay so right now confidence is coming against resistance if it holds this is where it has to hold um fake outs can always happen yeah wicks can always happen this is the weekly time frame and if you look at the past if you look at pri historic price action or percentage action whatever you call it you can see it didn't just take it took a while yeah this is when it was resistance this is when it was resistance then we had a breakout and we've just come right back in now now that we've come back into the value area uh we're coming back to to test this sr flip on the higher time frame of the usdt dominance okay so as far as i'm concerned ust usdt is in is coming into resistance now um it's going to take a while this isn't like this it's not instantaneous this stuff I'm looking at the weekly time frame you can clearly see that it, it can take a few weeks okay i'm not expecting a few weeks but it could um so that's good to see it's good to see that we're coming back into uh, some kind of higher time frame sr flip let's just see if the value area high holds I, I think it will i don't see why it wouldn't you can see that we've come for a few weeks down into the value area now we're coming to back test what you don't want to see is for this is not what this is not what you want to see you don't want to see the this candle to go up and then to come back down and back test this as support for continuation that's not what you want to see if we see that then there's a serious problem with crypto okay if that if you if suddenly that is what we experience then crypto is having problems the whole of crypto not just bitcoin will be the whole of crypto that will show significant shift from strength to weakness in crypto if that was if we were to experience that kind of behavior that's definitely not what we want to see um what we need to see is continuation and this is a good place for ust usdt to reverse and then for the value of usdt to come back into crypto so now is actually a good time to buy crypto because we're you can clearly see that the USDT is coming into resistance. Yeah. So now is a good time. Now is if like if anyone is sitting on profits, now is the time to deploy them back into crypto because USDT is coming into resistance on a higher time frame. Uh, I expect this level to hold. It could take a while. It could be quick. And if this level holds, then we could probably be heading for the next higher time frame level which is this volume this high volume node that i've got marked out that will be a natural place uh to take profits on crypto that's kind of what i'm expecting so if people are thinking to themselves when is a good time to take profits it's always a good time to take profits when the us um usdt comes into support and shows that there's some support if you see support you see a reaction and you see that it's coming into support it's a good time to take profits because naturally it means that crypto is coming into resistance and this is a really easy to see higher time frame uh chart where you can just keep a track of the good time to buy and sell crypto okay it's been good to buy crypto uh 
all of last year really all the way through to now you see it the whole of this has been topping then you had the breakout in october yeah back test and then we're down so it's been quite good on the higher time frame i'm expecting this to collapse all the way down to um the point of control that will be the next real big test i mean i think we'll find support here but i wouldn't necessarily like i mean i don't who knows no one can predict the future but maybe we we go all the way down to the point of control that will be the kind of big area of support for us dt okay and then maybe in the future we could head back head to, to, to the value area low which would probably be the culmination of um the bull one the bull run you know we have to see how these time out but that'll be the good that'll be kind of if we can get down here by the end of the bull market that'd be amazing because we'll see we'll know yeah that'll be big support if there's some kind of who knows like random super cycle whatever 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 who knows massive hysteria if we try to if we break through then i think the lowest limit will be this 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 leading line i'm not really expecting that to be honest with you i think it'd be very strange for that to happen and maybe that will take a it will take a few months for that to play, play out it's kind of 50 50 i think if we get down there it'll be like a coin flip um, but you never know so we've got to keep an eye on this um and then looking at the low a slightly local time frame on usdt you can clearly see it's coming into resistance now if you look at the local time frame i had this triangle pattern which broke out and um usually with these triangle patterns it completes when it goes to the top of the inverse triangle so i think i drew it out uh in my stream like that yeah so basically it had two options once you have a breakout there's two options you can hold the neckline which is what it did and continue or you can fall back underneath the neckline and fall back into the pattern and then continue downwards okay so once you get into this situation it can only really do one of two things and what it did is go to the upside it went all the way almost completing my imaginary pattern that i created that, that i drew and it fell right back into uh that was the liquidation event on saturday then it just fell back into uh underneath the value area high you can clearly see the value area high is acting as resistance uh i don't expect the value area high to give up its level of resistance look we've tested it many times we hold it's holding this isn't bullish this is bearish yeah it's very different to consolidation underneath resistance in an uptrend you can clearly see that the trend is down right if this is a downtrend this whole thing is a downtrend all this is now is a back test so to come underneath resistance now and hold it as resistance is not bullish it's bearish this is just a back test of resistance uh for this to become bullish you need to break it and you need to back test the other side as support for continuation okay so we have no way near crypto losing its value right now and we clearly see it this is a it's really good when you have these lines because it's so easy to see what's happening yeah and these are higher time frame lines so this value area high is very easy to do you just go onto your charts you just use this tool this uh, fixed range volume profile and you can just pull the volume range the volume profile of the whole range yeah just like that and that gives you the levels basically it gives you all the levels that you need i've got the value area high there i've got the high volume node there I've got the point of control there, which is the most volume at that percentage or price. And then you have the the value area low. Uh, it's slightly moved a little bit. Let me just adjust it slightly. Okay. 
so that's USDT. Um, I think it'll. I think it's really easy to see what's happening with crypto because this is behaving very um, nicely. You see, it's quite nice the way it's behaving. So even though it it looks like it's it could break, it, I, I think it's more is looking bearish to me because we're holding. It looks like resistance is holding. There's no reason why you can't go up and fake out. Yeah, that can always happen in crypto. In crypto, you always have to expect fake outs. That would be to go up and make everyone feel like it's gonna, crypto is losing, is going to zero, and then it just it just does the reverse. Yeah, that's always possible. But you wouldn't, you don't presume or pre presume that's gonna happen. You just have to see what's happening now <clears throat> and take it as it is. If that happens in the future, then you have to take it as it is in the future, as it is in the current moment, yeah? You can't preempt the future and say, it looks like it's going up, therefore I'm going to sell all my crypto because at the moment it doesn't. It looks like it's holding. It looks like it's holding resistance. If it goes up and starts to back test resistance into support, then you can start thinking about scaling back of crypt on crypto. And actually, confirmation would be continuation. Yeah. So even if it did that, it could fall right back. The confirmation would be continuation. It's just that's a good if that was to present itself, you'd have to de-risk a little bit, I think. All right. Good morning, FE4 for life. How's it going? Very good. I know you're not too fond of XRP, but <laughs> what do you think about tokens on XRP L? XRP Healthcare specifically. They have actually been making moves, researching the company is intriguing. Never heard of them. I'll have a look. Um, all right, that's USDT. It's good to have a kind of like a, a refresher on where we are because that's going to help us analyze the rest of the market. Bitcoin, um, you've got the Bitcoin Dominus, which is sitting on support at the moment. Um, and then you've got the USDT, which is into resistance. The DXY. It's always good to keep an eye on the DXY. The DXY has managed to break out and backtest this higher time frame trend line that I have in white. It managed to go through this yellow trend line, which is a historic trend line going back many, many years, all the way back to um, the beginning of creation, 2011. And you can clearly see now we found strength and that's probably partly due to the news. So um, USD is a risk off asset or whatever. That's how they view it, risk off by the dollar. But you can clearly see that now that we've come up here, we're into resistance. Yeah, there's a weekly level that I've got marked out. And so now even though the DXY looks quite strong, it looks like it's breaking out, it's actually into resistance now. We're actually into resistance on the DXY. Put that in contact with what I'm, showing you of the us uh dt coming into risk the resistance too so you've got the dxy and the, the us dominance or usd t dominance coming into resistance that's a good it gives you a little bit of a clue these are quite higher time frames this is the daily time frame um eth btc is struggling at the lows it's very obvious to see that it's struggling and I think one of the reasons why it's struggling is because of an impending breakout for, of Bitcoin. Yeah. So historically, when Bitcoin breaks out, the the value of um, crypto will pour into Bitcoin. Yeah. So it's possible that this will will bleed all the way down to the best area for ETH BTC to find support. That all depends on Bitcoin and whether Bitcoin is able to break out and how and how fast it moves. Because if it starts moving fast, most of the altcoins will bleed into Bitcoin. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them. OK, and it won't affect the USD price that much because as Bitcoin goes up, the whole of the crypto value of the market will go up. But it just means that for a short period of time, Bitcoin will go up much faster and um, what I have here is this SR flip. I've got this pivot from 
mid 22 um we came and we swing failed that pivot we came and we came again and now we're underneath it so we basically on you on ETH BTC we're underneath a really important SR flip right now but basically we're underneath a lost line a lost level okay um that's actually quite weak what we're seeing right now with ETH doesn't mean I'm bearish on ETH it just means currently what we're experiencing with ETH is weakness yeah this is weak there's a previous range value area low and we're kind of just teetering at that level it's looking very weak yeah it's not looking strong at all so historically when ETH BTC bleeds all of the alt market bleeds and it all goes into Bitcoin yeah there's no reason that this time is going to behave any differently to the past okay and we don't know when and how and when it's going to happen but it's very possible that altcoins will bleed into bitcoin as bitcoin pumps okay so just bear that in mind that doesn't mean altcoins are not are going to lose value it just means that once you get a, a little bit of a dump then maybe you get a pullback and that will be alt season yeah now we don't know how far this is going to go from where we are now down to the big resist uh, the big level of support is a 35 percent bleed that's a lot of value going into bitcoin for eth btc to drop 35 percent into bitcoin that's a lot of value that will go into bitcoin so we have to see how how uh how this plays out it does look like it's timed well to coincide with the bitcoin halving it is possible that if we break out then this is going to go like that okay this is it's possible that that happens really quickly the reason it's it should be quick is because you it moved up quite quick like over a period you see it moved up over a period of three weeks and it could be another three weeks down it could be like three four weeks where this goes all the way down finds support and that could be alt season now i've said in the past that if btc on the, on the higher time frame on the yearly time frame looks strong okay i think it does but it doesn't mean it can't drop first yeah you, when you're looking at the yearly time frames yeah just because at the moment it looks like we're holding the previous year low or the previous previous year low doesn't mean this year this can't go down and then form a wick and then come right back up. The year is quite a long time. And actually looking at these yearly candles, even though the golden pocket is probably the best place to find support, you can see these previous yearly highs could also offer some kind of support. Okay. You see these wicks. Uh, let me just investigate them a little bit more probably here somewhere here you could find some intermediary support uh depending on the strength and or weakness of eth uh let me just quickly do a range pull here a fib pull rather i've got it there let me just do full fib so you can see right now we're kind of sitting on the 382 so even though we've lost the sr flip we are actually still on support so I think if we were to lose the 382, that would be, you'd probably see a little bit of a sell-off on this into Bitcoin. You see that? it's this These Fib lines are perfectly being respected. Yeah. Uh, and so even though we're kind of underneath this SR flip, which is this previous pivot, which I marked out, um, we have to lose this line first to go down right and then probably we'd be probably aiming to the next line here which will be the 50 percent mark i think that's probably the where the target if we get if we lose that 382 that will be here see that this line here that's at 0 0.03777 maybe we don't go down all the way down to the golden pocket we just come here 
and that's alt season yeah like we're trying to see alt season basically what we want is we want ETH btc to bounce to get its bitcoin that's what we want to see yeah. so we, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon so we just have to wait for this to fall into support and that's alt season that's when we're going to start seeing a bounce on ETH and then a little bit of a rotation of capital and probably if we do experience some kind of bounce then it'll be easy to see when all season ends because naturally this will come back into resistance which will be the line that it lost see that and you see how these these higher time frame fib levels are being nicely respected you've got the 236 you've got the 382 now that's been touched and if we lose the 382 then it's all the way back down to the 50% mark uh, and then we'll have to see what happens okay so we can keep an eye on the situation on the higher time frame with ETH BTC the great thing about these uh, charts is that the higher time frame fibs are all being respected you can clearly see there's respect so it makes it a lot easier to analyze when you're being swimming. oh my god FE for life is spamming um, deals being made in Africa, companies based in Dubai also offers 20% staking for six months. Da, 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 da. Sorry for the spam. Probably. <laughs> All right. So that kind of gives us a little bit of uh, context of the wider market. Let me just have a look at Pax Gold against Bitcoin as well. So Pax Gold um, against Bitcoin. So after that war news, Pax Gold spiked up with a massive wick and it naturally went to back test um, the point of control. You see that all the way up to the point of control. That was the best place to sell, <laughs> not buy, because it was back testing it. You see that. And so whoever actually ended up buying gold all the way up at the this price 0 0.051004 is now heavily underwater <laughs> because that guy was an idiot um he bought it there and then his he's he's down 27 percent on his buy because he bought into resistance effectively yeah it's clearly resistance because you can you can see how as we lost the point of control we came back up to test it so it's been tested you see that's a level that's been tested so you know that that is now resistance it's resistance until you flip it and back test it into support when you see the test you know that it's been flipped that's the confirmation right so we can clearly see the point of control is acting as resistance now and whoever that idiot was is now heavily underwater because he panicked right now the golden pocket wasn't back tested. And so you could argue as we lost it, you could argue this is the first test on the golden pocket. All right? The point of control was tested. So the point of control was a confirmed resistance line. So anyone who had orders there to sell gold into Bitcoin made a crap load of money. That was an easy trade. Uh, now, because we've created the wick, it is possible if Bitcoin finds weakness, it is possible to really test the golden pocket. That's possible. And for Bitcoin to find strength, all that needs to happen is we need to just fall back into this range here. That's all that needs to happen. You'll see it very clearly. If you see the price of gold against Bitcoin come down here, then we are back into the range. That's a sign of weakness. That's a fake out or deviation from the range to the upside back into the range and you can sell gold against Bitcoin. It just means Bitcoin is much stronger against gold. It means Bitcoin is rallying and naturally the first area of support is going to be the value area low. You can clearly see again that the value area low has been tested as support. You see how the price came into the value area low and it held. So uh, you can clearly see, you wouldn't expect us to go down like that because you can clearly see that there's support. You'd expect a reaction, okay? 
if you don't get a reaction, then at the very least you want to back test to confirm that there's a flip for continuation. Yeah, you wouldn't just assume that there's no reaction, even if there is no back test, because what could easily happen is it could just wick out just like that wick. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to chase that. You know, you need to see confirmation of uh, levels being flipped. Otherwise, you could always get faked with a wick. OK, so at the moment, gold is trying to figure out what it wants to do. Yeah. Doesn't look strong to me. Um, to bit compared to Bitcoin. It doesn't look strong at all. I think if it was strong, um, there'd be continuation in that in that buy up. Yeah. And actually what you can see when you're looking at these candles, you can see that there was a second attempt and it closed lower. We're basically back underneath this level here. So we are, I think with gold against Bitcoin, we're kind of in the local range. And we're showing a little bit of weakness yeah there's a little bit of reaction from the highs so we may this may be the mini range that we're in right now um and it, it's also possible that we if we do lose that line that we just head right back down that's kind of the line in the sand to see uh whether bitcoin is strong against gold or not that's a good way to good morning tim the chin really <laughs> Osama wants an Audi update. Yeah, I know that. I'm going to look at Audi. Uh, it's a good way to see how the market is performing and how big, whether Bitcoin is strong or weak to look at this PAX gold against Bitcoin. All right. Um, I'm not going to look at anything else. Let's just go straight to Bitcoin. So we're getting a little bit of pullback, which um, was a bit was expected. OK, uh, yesterday I was bullish. And um, we took, I was bullish down here, right? If, if anyone remembers the stream from yesterday, we were down into the golden pocket. We kind of lost the low, we claimed the low, then went back to the low, then came back up, then came back down. And effectively what happened was that the lows held as support. Uh, I knew, I could see what was happening. It was quite obvious. And on on my Twitter, I posted um, something. I posted this. That's kind of what I was thinking. It almost did what I was thinking. Just lots of zigzags attacking the lows. We're back above the neckline. Now, this is the question. The test. Okay, so the test is really important. Um, you look at the one hour time frame you can see that we've been making lower highs here and we finally made higher highs lower lows is that a higher high and we've taken the low already higher high and we're into low are we back into bearish or do we really do we need to make a pivot here and attack the high again one more time yeah um it's starting to look bearish now yeah whereas yesterday i was i was i was looking at it it looked, it looked quite bullish today i'm looking at it and it's looking quite bearish the reason why it's looking quite bearish now is because um we just haven't been able to hold this higher range after we broke out. Yeah. So we were kind of in a little range and then we lost the range. And that's not strength. That's, that's a little bit of weakness there. Also, we've basically coming back underneath all of these kind of previous highs. We none of, none of them have offered enough support to hold the price up. Okay. So we're seeing a little bit of weakness. I think f when I look at the price action, I'm thinking to myself, uh, we're still okay because all that's really happened is that we've cleaned up the volume gap in this candle, which is pushed up. We've come back and we basically filled that candle and we're still kind of above 
where the initial breakout happened. Often that happens with crypto where you have a breakout and the price comes all the way back to fill the volume gap of where the breakout happened. And then you just form a low here and you have continuation. Yeah, often that happens, okay? So even though it's looking quite bearish because we've lost this higher range, it actually helps us. It helps us because we can then, we don't need to take longs right now. We can wait for strength to return. And it'd be quite easy to see when you're looking at the way these, the formation of these uh, candles, it's quite easy to see when you lose ranges and reclaim ranges. You see, when you're looking at these candle patterns, there's these nice kind of break lines. You know, if you see how this candle broke underneath the kind of the, the division in this candle here, as soon as it broke, you kind of lost this higher range. Okay. So it'd be very easy to see the can the price to come back up because you just need the price to come back up, close back above there, and you'll be back into the range again. Yeah, then you'll be back into the range. Yeah. And the good thing about if that was to happen was that you'd buy it at the low of the of this higher range and you'd be expecting higher prices because you're reclaiming a range. Yeah. So there's no real panic. Has it, you don't really have to panic and go, oh, I need to go long now. Because, because now effectively what you'll be doing is catching a falling knife in a sense because you just we just don't know how far the price is going to go down yeah we you need the price to find support before you long and at the moment it's trying to find support somewhere we don't know where but it'll be easy to see where it's found support because after the price finds support guess what happens you get a buy up and you're back into a higher level that's what happens that will be when you see that the price has found support the support level will be here but you don't need to enter here. You can just wait for the price to come back into the higher range. And then you have a really nice, easy invalidation. It's just the way the candles are moving. You see, it's quite nice right now. There's no like crazy market buying right now. It looks very organized and very orderly. Okay, so that's quite, it's quite easy to see when things are changing. I think what's happening now when I'm looking at it is... You see, like here on a two hour time frame, um, we were making uh, lower highs. Hold on a second. No, I don't really like that actually. No, that could be a lower high. My bad. So, this is the danger actually. This could be a lower high. We have to bear that in mind. Um, this is where we are. And we have to be, I mean, it's very hard to know whether that's a lower high or not, because this is the lower low. Yeah. All of this could just be lots of consolidation without even taking out the low to change market structure. Uh, and if that, what could, the other thing that can happen, if that is a lower high, then we're going for a lower low, which would be to take out that pivot. And then you just have a lower high. The high is a little bit lower. So if we do swing failure, that pivot, then you only need to get back up there to make a higher high. It's actually quite difficult to make a higher high right now on this time frame because you, you kind of have to, you have to take out this pivot here because that was the lower high before you made the lower low and in between everything is just ranging okay and that's the problem with bitcoin at the moment actually looking at the local time frame it does look like we we lost bullish market structure we we we, we had bullish market structure for a little bit it looks like we've lost it okay unfortunately you see here we're making lower highs here we're making lower lows and then this is where we make a higher high higher low higher high higher low lower low okay so we are in a little bit of a local time frame uh, down down move it looks like it 
and um, you basically need to get back above the neckline that was broken and then you just need to go and take out that high okay that's what needs Sorry, my internet disconnected for a second. All right, so that kind of makes me a little bit bearish today. <laughs> I was bullish yesterday, bearish today. Um, it's just life, life in crypto. You can see that also uh, we didn't have continuation. The price took the liquidity from the previous day high, and now it's pushing down. And I think possibly what we might experience is an attempt to collect more liquidity you can't preempt the future when you, when you're looking at these candles because the day is only really just begun we're in the london session and even though now it's looking bearish this could by the end of the day this could be anything yeah you can't preempt these candles what you have to do is try and look at the lower time frames and see what's happening um again on the four hour time frame we are we, we could potentially have put in a lower high you see that that is very possible. We needed to take out that high. Um, I actually thought we had a good chance yesterday. But I didn't really think it was a good idea to lose these lows here. Uh, it would have been okay to lose these lows if we hadn't put in that high. So that high changes everything. Because as soon as you put in that high, this becomes your higher low yeah so up to this point that was our higher high if that was our higher high this was our higher low here as soon as we took out that high that became our higher high and this became our higher higher low and as soon as we look you see that as soon as we lost that low you're starting to get a little bit of a sell-off that's what's been happening yeah so people might still be bullish and that's why they're buying but actually the, the market structure has changed and you have a very definite um, neckline that needs the price needs to get back above to become bullish again. Until that happens, it's not looking good, <laughs> which sucks. But this is the way it is. It's not looking great at the moment. It's not looking good. Um, so I think if you're leveraged, just take it. You know, don't over don't over leverage. Just deleverage a little bit um or let me have a look am i leveraged no <laughs> that's good it's good when you're not leveraged because uh you're not too worried about the price going down um yeah looking at the four hour time frame uh it's not looking good unfortunately uh, and so we've kind of gone from a bullish push up to a little bit of a reversal here right now okay these are local time frames nothing changes on the higher time frames yeah but it is possible now like when i'm looking at it it is possible we attack the lows one more time we still have to lose uh we still have to lose these these wicks it's also possible that this candle goes all the way down takes the liquidity or get somewhere lower down on this previous day wick find support and just we could form like a red doji here we could form another red kind of uh gravestone doji here anything can form here right now um and the thing that you have to realize is that as the price goes down people are going to buy because lower prices there's more demand in um in accumulating the price so I think the confirmation for me would be um, losing this golden pocket again, probably. I think you just want to, you don't want to lose it again, really. So that would be really, that wouldn't be pretty. But then again, you could easily swing fairly these lows and then come back up. It's very possible for that to happen too. Uh, so that's kind of where we are now. It's not looking crazy bullish. 
Um, maybe the bottom is in, is not in. It could have been. But at the moment, we're still not there. It's, it's, it doesn't look like it's ready yet. Effectively, what you needed was continuation from this push up yesterday. This was quite healthy, closed higher. And actually, you've just closed back lower. So what's actually happened is people have just sold into that rise. They haven't actually uh, continued the buying. And so what you needed was continuation like that. To take out uh, take out that one, really. And that would give people the confidence to 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 buy the dip because you've just made a higher high after you've put in a lower low. And so we, we're still quite away from achieving that, to be honest. Yeah, I can't pretend that it's looking crazy bullish. But what might end up happening and so you have to understand that just because it doesn't look bullish it, and it's therefore by de facto bearish, it doesn't mean it's bearish either. We could just be forming some kind of tightening range for some kind of breakout. OK, so I'm just trying to see if I see anything. I mean, you've got this kind of trend line here. Um, don't you? So it'd be very easy to see strength return because you just have to get past that trend line. All right. Potentially you have another trend line off these lows here. Could be we could be forming a little bit of a tightening range here. All right? That's probably what's going to be happening today it's going to get really annoying for people uh it'd be very difficult to trade as well except you just probably just have to have wide invalidations and keep on selling and buying and taking profit as as soon as you're in profit that's probably what's going to happen today that's what it looks like if we break this kind of lower line idea just you just got to be careful because the price could always swing failure these lows into the 786 and head right back up yeah price could always do that so you just have to be a little bit careful um but to all intents and purposes i think this is what we're in right now that's what it looks like okay a little bit of a tightening range Um, quite annoying actually but I think there's a lot of anticipation of this halving event um, let me just have a look at the local volume you see what's happened is that the point of control of the local volume is in the highs that's bearish but you can clearly see that the value area low and this golden pocket and this trend line are kind of in the same place um, so I think probably that's a good place to, uh, to scalp long, but you'd have to take profit quite quickly because we might be in this tightening range. It'd be more of, it'd be a, it'd be a scalp basically. Um, and if we are to lose that line, then obviously it's easy to take swing failures if they, if you see a reaction, um, but otherwise, I don't know if I would be looking to, I mean, the short, you could short with an invalidation above there. You'd have to take profit here. Yeah. You basically, you're shorting now, basically. What's happening is you're shorting this exact second because you're shorting this candle that's dropping down. Um, but you're coming into like some support levels. So I don't know if I like to short when the price is coming down. I like to, it'd be better to short in the highs or after a swing failure. Um, it'd be better to just wait for the price to settle on long 
or it will be better to look for a swing failure of these lows and if the price comes down takes the lows comes right back up that could be quite bullish yeah that would be like a real nice bullish reaction because you've lost this lower trend line you've taken out the liquidity from the lows into the 786 if you can get back above the golden pocket into this trend line that's really quite bullish and then you might see a little kind of rally up um you could always fake out there too like it's very possible that that happens and we're just kind of forming something much wider a much wider range yeah so just because we it looks bearish don't think that it's bearish because the price could always go down take liquidity and come right back up go up take liquidity and come right back down yeah this can always happen so i don't I'm not I'm not bearish or bullish right now, but I think it's a little bit more bearish than yesterday. Yesterday was a lot more bullish. Um, yesterday was a day to buy. Yeah, as you can clearly see, the buyers won yesterday. Yesterday was the the the, the sellers were completely defeated, and so the money to be made yesterday was in buying. Today it's a little bit neither or it's neither selling or buying because we it feels like we're getting trapped. Both sides are getting a little bit trapped. Okay. So it's going to be quite choppy today. So just be aware of that. Just what I'm seeing right now. All right. Um, just for the sake of consistency, I'm going to um, do my overall range. Um, not just a day today. Wednesday. Um, let me just put that in there as well. Very choppy day today, so just be aware of that. Um, even though it looks like we're going down, we're not just going down. <laughs> it's just got to see what happens at each level, level to level. Always think level to level. Never think the moon or the pits of hell. At the moment, we're coming to support levels. Let's just see what happens. Okay. See how the price reacts. Don't just think we're going down. It's a very different situation to uh, the crash of um, 21 April. Was it April or May 20? Very different circumstances. We're just pre Bitcoin halving. We're not going down in one go. We've had our big liquidation event. We're not going to have another one. Not not anytime soon. All right. Uh, let me just do the volume levels. If I can find my group. There it is. So you can see that um, we were trying to get into the value area low. Swing failure, the local range high, and we we just lost that. So there was no. Sh I mean, it was it wasn't looking strong. It was trying. We tried. It was a, there was a, attempts were made. Um, so we're still seeing a little bit of weakness or lack of strength in the way Bitcoin is moving. And I think that's normal because you kind of want people to short because that's how the price is going to go up. The point of control is slightly lower. I don't know why. It's weird. And then the value area low is slightly lower there. Um, see, look, that's... Uh, it'll be, it'll be e like I said, that neckline is really important. If we can get back into that little local range, uh, that will be a really good opportunity to long. So while I've got uh, a tightening range here like this, I actually think if we can get back up, we can break this this uh, this trend line. Um, like this and get back up into the value area, then there'll be a really good long opportunity there. So while I think down here is quite a good long opportunity, that'll be a scalp. I also, I also think if we we're able to reclaim that value area, that would be a really good long opportunity to, as well, especially after breaking that 
this kind of this this trend line yeah that would be a really good place to long here you're just longing into support as the price comes down but you're taking profit very quickly and then i think if we if you lose this local range value area you don't see a good reaction on the swing failure down here um and it's all about the reaction yeah if 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 you come if we come down take the liquidity but we get like a meh reaction <coughs> and actually when you go down you, you do want to hit the 786 as well you don't want to hit it for the first time the second time you want to hit it once have a reaction if it's a meh reaction we come into the bottom of this value area can't get back in <coughs> excuse me uh you could short that it'd be a breakout short but you're waiting for uh, you were looking for a weak reaction and also you're looking for the price to just come up and find resistance and the reason why that would be a good place to short is because you're going to get a lot of people potentially swing failure these lows they'll be taking longs but they'll be looking to take their profits very early and so effectively you're shorting people taking profits longs taking profits that's where you're shorting if when it comes into the value area low if you see that longs start closing you can short that yeah because what could happen is this you could just you could just do this and then you're heading for this low here and you are heading for the lows so actually that would be kind of what i'd be looking for to short rather than try and guess rather than like right now if you're longing and short and you're holding your longs and shorts you're guessing yeah you're, you're just basically flipping a coin what you want to see is a weak reaction of this swing failure and the price to come back into the value area this local value area and you want to see long start closing there then you can short and then what you're expecting is another low here and you'll then you'd expect uh, us to hit these lows here okay you'd have to take profit when once we take out that low because you could also get another reaction to buy because once you take that low you're probably taking this low too because of the cascade you have a little cascade here take out those two lows uh, and then you'll be looking to take your profit and then if we can get back above this one on the swing failure you might see a really massive buy up and that would be a good place to long okay if we get a swing failure of that low that would be a really good place to long uh, with a swing failure of that low okay maybe then, then then the low will be put in if we get a high volume sell-off and the price bounces right back up yeah and the volume is going to be really important to see what the volume is looking like yeah you kind of want a really high volume because you want to see a lot of selling and you want to just see the price come right back up taking clearing the liquidity from the, those lows that would be a good place to long so that means that if you are shorting uh the breakout here you kind of breaking out failing an sfp coming back into the value area low finding resistance because longs are closing uh then you short and once you take out the low uh if you want to take profit take profit and if you see that the price is sfping and coming back in what you would do is you'd close your short or reverse you'd flip because you're now from short to long okay and obviously what could happen is you could get a really rubbish reaction and the price could continue that's that could always happen yeah never think that just because it there's a there's a, you see a reaction that you can't get because what you'll get is you'll get longs take profit that's when you get the, the pullback and then the question is how much profit do they take will determine uh, how how far the price pulls back and how many people take profit you might get a long someone who's long with a much wider stop they don't like the reaction at the lows and they might just wait for the first pullback to take their their profit too so it's all about the reaction and the volume at that at that level okay so i've kind of gone through 
kind of certain scenarios where the price could react and how where people would be longing and shorting so this was the short that i had in mind um yeah something like that and you have to have an invalidation because like i said you could go right back up like that it'd be better to wait for the reaction wait for people to and the reaction would be seeing longs close you see swing failure and then longs close you could short that and then right now, when you look at the price, we've, we're pretty much trapped at the moment. Don't think that we're going to break out anytime soon. Um, although it could happen by the New York session, because looking at this triangle, there's going to be some kind of move quite soon. Uh, and what could always happen is you, you move and you're just forming something else. Yeah. So while I've got this potentially going down, it's always possible that we're just forming some kind of falling wedge or something like, let me just hide all of this and put it all into my Wednesday group. Let me keep my trend lines. Uh, you know, you could always, we could always be <laughs> doing something else. It's always possible that something else is forming. You know, like, if we don't have to take out this low. That's my point. We could be falling into some kind of falling wedge without taking out that low to break out slightly later on Friday without taking that low. It's very possible that happens too. So you just got to be aware of the possibilities. We're in a bit of a really uh, difficult period uh, of trading because is very indecisive as to what's happening a lot of people are bearish because they want lower prices and they want to clear the liquidity a lot of people are bullish because they know the bitcoin is halving on friday so you have a lot of indecision between the buyers and the sellers of the market right now higher time frame buy 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 higher time frame spot just keep on buying if you can just keep on scaling in to your favorite uh tokens and you'll be fine and this is just basically lower time frame at the moment this is what i'm contemplating on the lower time frame uh again like i said this doesn't have to happen anything could happen <laughs> but it's good to kind of conceptualize what could happen and how you could trade it where you would be looking to trade after you see that kind of behavior yeah so you're kind of try and imagine the behavior, try and preempt future behavior. And then if that behavior replicates your imagination, uh, and it's all based on reclaiming lines and losing lines, swing failure patterns on the high, swing failure patterns on the low. So that's basically what you're visualizing. And then you can take the trade. All right. Any questions on Bitcoin? One minute, one minute. I'm not going to look at the one minute. Have you moved location today? I'm, I'm moving location every day. Can you believe it? The life of a crypto nomad, uh, digital nomad, uh, Audi. I'll have a look at Audi. Sir, I am in loss. Please guide me. Head and shoulders on the one minute. I don't really want to. I only look at the one minute. If I'm trying to enter and I'm looking for a really good entry. Um, otherwise, I don't really look at the one minute. Where's the head and shoulders? Um, I think it would be better if you're looking at the lower time frame to look slightly higher. Like you're saying there. So, so head and shoulders usually happens at the high. So there is a head and shoulders there. You can see it. That's the head and shoulders. that that's why there was a sell uh yeah we haven't actually back come back up to test the neckline yet I'd, i probably would expect that to happen before we have a continuation just to just to kind of liquidate all of these early shorts clear all clear all this early shorts before we continue down 
I don't, you know, eventually what's going to happen is the price is going to find support. Shorts will close and the price will come back up. Kind of that's kind of where you'd probably want to look for a short. I wouldn't, I would expect after you form a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern there for the price to come back and test the neckline. Unless the neckline is much lower and we've already had that test, it's possible. But, you know, and usually on Bitcoin, it's not just once, it's usually twice or three times that things happen. So, it, I mean, it could it could be, but it's very it'd be very strange that if we don't come back up, um, you know, to there after we find support. We just need to find support right now, and the lower we go, the more the higher the chances of finding support. Like we're coming into our area of interest now. A bit lower down starting at about six two four one eight will come maybe maybe what happens is we um see there's not much of a range in in there's not much of a price percentage range it's only two percent down uh we might be swing failing this level here just to head right back up something like that oh dxy <laughs> okay what the hell On the one minute, it's hard to see on the one minute. Mm, not really. Don't really see it. Oh, okay, that might be easy. So, I mean, this is really easy to see. There is a neckline that's being respected at the moment. Okay. It is looking like a head and shoulder Z. So you might be right. If for it to be very bearish, you'd expect a smaller shoulder, not a big shoulder. We have to see how the shoulder is. Like a, um, a bigger shoulder, a smaller shoulder. That'd be really bearish. I I mean the. This is what you want to see. As soon as you you lose these pivots little back test and then you're right back into support and then you just take the take those lows not swing failure head right back down yeah i did say we're into weekly resistance on the dxy but again support hasn't failed yet the support is that neckline yeah you see this is an sr flip even though we have a little bit of a pattern forming, it's not complete. And the other thing is that if you can see it, everyone can see it. Yeah. And if everyone sees it, that's usually not a good sign because it will probably not happen. It will probably do something else. Yeah. I sw the main thing to focus on is the neckline. As long as the neckline holds, you could long. And if it, if it doesn't hold, you can short. Like these, these horizontal lines are really powerful. As long as the price is above, you can long. So we're at a good place to long. And if the price falls back underneath it, it's a good place to short. Yeah. Uh, and because you have really small invalidations and it's very easy to see the bias. If it's underneath, it's short. If it's above, it's long. So at the moment, it's still long on DXY. Because we're back in DXY is back into local time frame support. All right. That's uh, and then the. I think it's a bit unusual that we haven't touched this weekly level yet. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I am actually thinking we 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 go up and we we tap it. And actually, the better short on DXY would be a swing failure there into the weekly level. That would be a better a better short. 
Again, it's a local time frame short, but that would be much better. And then there is no head and shoulders pattern, or maybe that's the head. Maybe that was the head. Maybe this whole thing is the right shoulder, and maybe that's the head. And then we have a, a shoulder there, a right shoulder there, yeah? So just because it looks like a head and shoulders now doesn't mean that it is a head and shoulders. It could be a, a shoulder and we haven't formed the head yet. I think it makes more sense for the head to hit for that, for the DXY to hit that level that I've got marked. It'd be very strange for it to just miss it completely and then go down. All right. That's something to bear in mind. Um, so while Bitcoin is a little bit choppy and indecisive, the altcoins are not going to have fun. The altcoins are, are they're not going to necessarily struggle, but they're not going to be decisive. You're not going to get decisiveness on altcoins while Bitcoin is indecisive. OK, so for all intents purposes, like and this is the thing, a lot of people are in the mindset that um, that Bitcoin is going to dump and they're not buying altcoins, but actually most altcoins are in a really good place to buy most, uh, including TRVL. TRVL um, is in a good place to buy. 6.2 cents. And it, it goes back to the idea of um, value that I talked about a few weeks or months ago when I initially started streaming um, when it comes to TRVL. I don't know if anyone remembers some of my streams, but we were here in this range and it was about three cents. And I was talking to, to people about acceptance at higher prices and the longer you stay at a range and then leave that range. So when you're at three cents and then you leave three cents and then now you're at four cents and the longer you're at four cents, then as soon as the price does come back into three cents, you don't get, you get a rejection because you get a buy up because mentally people's idea of the, of a, of a good price changes with time as the price is ranging in higher prices. Yeah. So there's a, psychological um behavioral pattern forms when the price ranges at higher prices and then if you go down you you don't get acceptance into lower prices because all of a sudden psychologically people are like oh my god trvl three cents i'm gonna sell my kidneys okay and the price comes back up into four cents so you kind of get that idea of acceptance of of value as the price ranges for an extended period of time at certain levels. And if you look at the TRVL price chart, you can see that we're at three cents for a while. Then we went up all the way up to nine cents. We got rejected because it was too high. People just sold into that because it was just too much of an increase in value. Then we came back to find lower, found lower prices at roughly four cents. We went down to three cents, immediately got bought up because again, people's idea of a TRV at three cents was that it was a bargain or if it was too cheap, they, they, they tried their best to buy as much as possible. Then you come into the idea of higher range, which was five cents mark. So we were kind of for a while, we were in between four and five cents. And, and then we had this kind of buy up, this kind of explosion upwards um took us all the way to nine and a half all the way right back down to five and five cents and then they had another buy up all the way up to 12 and then now we're right back down at uh roughly 6.2 right in the scale of things i want everyone to forget about this higher price action yeah forget about what's happened in the past A, lot, a little bit of kind of hype, a little bit of news releases. Da, 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 da. What's really happened is that we're just in the next bracket. Yeah, we're just, and actually, when you think about the way the price has moved, 
we've just all that's happening and ha has been happening is we've gone from two cents range to the three cents range to the four cents range to the five cents range and guess what we're at the six six cents range now yeah so that's where we are we're at the six cents range forget about all of that that doesn't really make any difference to the now if you think about where we were we were at five cents and you can clearly see that as the price is attempted to go back into the five cents mark range the lower range it's just been bought up because we've been above five cents for so long that there's no more acceptance in the lower ranges yeah if you go back to five cents you're going back to february and um now what's happening or what looks like it's happening is that five cents is so cheap that people will sell other altcoins to buy trvl at five cents that's what that's what that's this behavior is what's showing me is that at this price trvl people are willing to sell their other altcoins at a loss to buy trvl at five cents that's because we've been at five cents we've created price action of five cents and then we've moved from five cents to higher prices so naturally when you come back in from a psychological perspective five cents is cheap yeah psychologically five cents. maybe 12 cents at the moment is too expensive but five cents is dirt cheap okay and if it was to go down to four cents and then three cents then people would be selling their families to buy trvl yeah because it becomes really cheap and people value it or value it too much in comparison to the value okay so right now trvl when you think about it it's okay you can ima forget about all of that higher price action just imagine that we've been ranging here now for the last month two months at five at, 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 at the six cents mark forget about all of that it's not really relevant all that matters is that what's happening as you can see is that we're kind of moving from level to level yeah eventually what's going to happen is we'll move to the next level we'll no longer be at six cents we'll be at seven cents seven cents and then six cents will be too cheap and it'll just continue it'll just continue and i think i think i prefer this kind of i've always said that i prefer this step up level to level price action than this kind of exp up and down and this is quite traumatic i don't like it personally i think this is quite traumatic it would have been nice if we went up then i wouldn't have mind minded that kind of price action yeah uh and then we started forming a, a higher just we just had a real jump and skipped a level like a couple of levels and then we started creating a range much higher up Getting drop frames, apologies. I'm getting a few drop frames. But that's that can only happen. This can only happen. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, apologies, my internet briefly disconnected. It's normal in the UK. The UK is terrible when it comes to these kinds of things, unfortunately. It used to be a developed country. Um, so what I was saying is that you had... Um, you had... Uh, you can ignore the previous price. Just imagine that we've just been ranging at six cents for a while and we're looking to move up that's kind of that kind of puts it all into context so people aren't this like people are people shouldn't panic because we've lost we haven't made, managed to break nine cents eventually it will happen eventually we will break nine cents eventually we will push up but in terms of the way the price has behaved we it looks like five cents is the floor okay it looks like five cents is the floor is the stream okay now can people hear me is there still lag? I'm getting a few drop frames. 
Hold on. I'm getting a few drop frames. I don't know what the problem is because sometimes it's good and sometimes it just it's very unusual. So yeah, so I mean, it doesn't look bad. Uh, the price action doesn't look too bad. Um, I wonder if I should restart my internet again and take a pause. Yes. All right. I'm going to restart the internet. There's nothing I can do about the stream. Uh, there's a few drop packets. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> Apologies. So there might be a little bit of buffering. Um, let me just try something. A few drop packets. Getting a few drop packets. All right. Um, if it gets really bad, let me know, and I'll repeat something. I don't know. Don't know what I'll do. All right. Uh. So. Nah, I can't do this. Yeah, I'm getting too many drop packets.
Maybe it's maybe a thirty minute break. It's back. Is it back? But according to this, I, I'm getting drop frames. It says 60% drop frames and the bandwidth is half of what it should be. So there's going to be buffering. Uh, and I can't, I can't fix it. Unfortunately. All right. Well, let me know. Let me know if it goes bad again, and if it goes, no, it just I can see it. It just keeps on dropping. Yeah, it's not working. Okay.
I'm back. Yes, the stream is working. I can't believe it. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. The internet in the UK is a load of rubbish. All right. Um, so I was talking about TRBL. Um, so what I've noticed is the volume, you see, this uh, red volume on um, Bybit. Even though it, it looks bearish, um, just remember that this the buying has been absorbed. So if you look at the last 12 hours, uh, the last day, you see how there's a slight difference. You see the volume is almost the same. And while the, from here to here, the price declined 10% from here to here almost the same volume you see the price declined only 3% so it's a tricky one with volume because generally speaking when you see red candles you see high volume that's that's bearish that's not a good sign you don't want to see that you want to see high volume with green candles and you want to see when the price declines, you want to see the volume to decrease. When you see the price incline, you want to see the volume to go up. It's a tricky one because obviously the price is going down and it's quite heavy volume. The price goes up is low volume and now the price going down is quite heavy volume. But we're not breaking support and that I think that's really important. Yeah, if you get volume with support breaking, that's quite concerning. But at the moment, what you can see is that the 5.5 cents level is holding. This is a level that I've been talking about for a long time. And I've done a full analysis on why um, 5.5 cents is a strong level. I've created a folder here called support at five five 5.5 cents and while we have clearly lost a trend line not only have we lost it we've come in to back test it that's a that's a trend line that if we want to go up in the future we're going to have to reclaim that as a support level you can't you can't just ignore levels which are lost. Not, I mean, you could argue it's the trend line, or it could just be a neckline here. Um, so there was a loss of a level. It'd be very easy to see strength return to, to, to TRVL in the future because we just go up, we reclaim that, that lost level, that horizontal level is going to be very important. That's at seven cents, okay? So... Effectively, what I'm saying is to go up, we have to reclaim seven cents as a support level. There's no two ways about it. Uh, that's kind of like the upper line in the sand at the moment. We can't, you can't think about nine cents if we can't cross seven cents. Mm -hmm. You can't think about four cents if we can't, if we haven't lost five cents or five and a half cents. That's how you have to be thinking right now uh, until we get another kind of breakout or some kind of impulsive move right now when I'm looking at the current price action it's basically it's range bound between seven cents and you can go as far as five five point five or five point two or however low this wick is or this kind of this little area is that's basically where we are. That's kind of where we are. I don't know how long that's going to take. Yeah. I don't think it's a problem to create volume here. If we go back up. Yeah. If this becomes our reaccumulation range. Uh, I, I think this is not problematic at all. Even though... As far as I'm aware, so 
consolidation on support is generally bearish that's on a downtrend yeah on the higher time frame we're still trending up we still haven't lost our lost our higher low so as long as we're kind of still in an uptrend and a, a kind of a higher time frame uptrend it it's okay to come back and test a level a few times okay it's okay to do that not too much because <laughs> eventually if you keep on you have to look at the way the price is moving yeah if we keep on going down and you see the price keep on pushing down keep on pushing down keep on pushing down like really pushing down it will break yeah it's all about where the price is right now the price is nowhere near the support line so that kind of gives me confidence that okay it's not that bearish it's not bearish at all because if we would have had bearishness continue not only would we not have this kind of buy up which is all this buy up here is, is people who sold buying up because that's their take profit they sold higher and they're buying up either the same quantity as trvl that they sold or more and their pro their take profit is in terms of trvl that's all this is yeah maybe someone sold up there or here or here anywhere really and for whatever reason they sold and now it's like oh my god it's back at 5.5 cents i should buy that will be their take profit in in the in v, in trvl value okay that's all that is really and then you have someone who's might maybe some people who are bearish and they'll sell into that rise but actually after so much selling you can see the price hasn't really gone down down that much and it's all about context you have a lot of selling and the price is still kind of from here to here we're kind of middle of the range after all of that volume of sales we're still at the middle of the range i think that's okay i think that's quite good to see uh some tokens are right flat bat at the at the bottom of their support levels trying to hold on for dear life trvl is not holding trying to hold on for dear life trvl uh, is looking quite bouncy <laughs> it's looking quite bouncy so i think i don't, obviously i didn't I, don't, I think it would have been more bullish to hold here while bitcoin was correcting and i think this is what you guys who who are paying attention or watching the stream maybe some people have a large amount of value on the sidelines ready to snap this token up we got to also be thinking about creating the best condition for bullish continuation and bullish uh, structure. And this is for the future. This is not for now, because now we're just dealing with the here and now. The future will be dealing with the future. We have to be thinking about what we want to happen in the future. Any single person who's invested in TRVL should be aiming for higher numbers yeah we should all be on that same page yeah that's what we all want we all want higher numbers yeah we all want higher numbers right up there uh, that's what we want and if we want to get to higher numbers we have to be buying and selling correctly at the right places and the right levels okay and it's okay that we've come back to test 5.5 cents once more but fundamentally, what, what it means is that there wasn't enough buy, buy up volume here to absorb the selling pressure. Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, um, that's all about supply and demand. Now, the other thing that you can see here is that there wasn't enough buy up volume to push the price higher so that when it does pull back, we're still back into the range. That would have been a bullish uh, reclaim of a previous range so we haven't experienced that either so there's still work to be done in terms of uh all of us who are invested in trvl who are buying trvl when it comes to buying and selling and buying and selling correctly and how to buy and sell uh, it's always good to take profit at key resistance levels and ever since the beginning of when i started streaming i've been clearly marking out the higher time frame levels for everyone yeah so everyone has have has ample kind of knowledge 
and clarity about good places to buy and sell yeah and these levels are not hidden they're very obvious you know be very open and clear and obvious about um the places to buy and sell yeah i'm not telling people buy and sell i'm telling people do your own thing trade your own plan execute your own strategy but these are the levels of interest okay and you can clearly see that they're reacting there's reactions of all the levels that i'm indicating as higher time frame levels it's very obvious that there is a reaction but just contemplate this that if we want higher prices consolidation must be flat yeah it must be flat flat consolidation will get us to higher prices deep consolidations are bullish but they're not going to get us to higher prices it's only going to get anyone who enters here for the first time will get maximum value risk to reward but in terms of the people who are hodling for higher we need um flatter corrections to get to higher prices it's just it's just the way the market works and the way to get flat corrections in a small market cap token relatively speaking quite a liquid is whenever bitcoin is going down you buy trvl or you put orders to absorb the limit the price the selling yeah so the markets move in syn synergy with each other if bitcoin goes up all altcoins go up if bitcoin goes down all altcoins go down right it's not hard with an altcoin like uh, trvl to hold the price while bitcoin goes down because there isn't really much sell volume in the context of the wider crypto market. And so going forward, it's really important that we buy when Bitcoin goes down. Yeah. And I'm not saying market buying because that's the wrong kind of buying. We, I'm talking about limit buys to, to stop the price from going down further. Yeah. Because you're going to get people panic sell when bitcoin goes down but only if the price is going down if you if people see that and i'll give you an example in this consolidation range here there was a lot of buying and every time bitcoin went down the price was prevented from going down yeah that was a flat correction uh it wasn't an elliott wave but it was a flat correction because the price moved marked up and then this was the correction right it was an accumulation range okay and the reason why this is so bullish is because every time bitcoin was going down there was enough limit orders to prevent the price from going down further because there was enough demand at these levels um to 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 prevent the price from dropping further and it actually was making higher lows and Whenever Bitcoin went down, that was the opportunity that people had to fill their bags at a certain price because naturally the market moves down. So there's a little bit of a sell pressure when Bitcoin goes down. And if you've got enough limit orders holding the price up, the price doesn't go down. It just means people's bags start filling up. OK, that was this is perfect consolidation. And also you can see these wicks uh, above the price. These are just people market buying, market buying, just just in a rush, just market buying. They just want to just buy it up as much as they can in a short space of time. That's that kind of behavior. But actually, the it was it was bullish because there was a lot of limit orders here absorbing the sell pressure. So when Bitcoin was going down, the price was prevented from going down, right? And we all experienced that together. Then you had this massive ejection of volume coming, probably one whale or two whales, just buy up. A whole bunch of token at once and that created this kind of shock wave this kind of sh this is like a shock wave effect it's like an earthquake and then there's the kind of the the after effects the afterquakes it's like a wave see that lots of waves until eventually because of the continued buy pressure because it wasn't just one person creating a wave which is what it was you also had a continuation of buying and eventually we had this kind of breakout rally okay we had a breakout rally uh a large amount of people took their profit and then 
this was the place where people who were can hear continuously buying and also people who took profit they bought back in after they took profit because that would be their take profit in terms of trvl and then we had a nice buy up so i'm just describing historic price action and now we've been experiencing correction why are we experiencing correction well psychologically it's because people don't think the price is going to go up any higher also it means that a lot of people are already quite high in their value and they're looking to extract some value and so that's all happening at roughly the same time but it isn't like one constant let's all sell and the price comes down you can clearly see what's happening in this in this um in the way in the way the price is falling or descending that it's people buy selling and buying selling and buying selling 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 buying selling buying buying selling 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 buying so it isn't just like one continuous move down there's lots of selling and buying and that is because people are selling but they just don't want to be out of the position for too long so they're buying back and that will be their take profit so it's a lot more difficult to sell and not buy back if you still are in the mindset the price is this the token is still undervalued that's what you're experiencing here people still think the token is undervalued so rather than sell and wait for significantly lower that's what you would normally happen if you were to sell and you think it's overvalued but you'd wait for much lower you'd wait for a real decline in price the reason why you're getting this behavior why there's a lot of selling and buying is because people still think the price of this token is undervalued even though they're selling they're quickly buying back because psychologically they still think that the price of this token is undervalued now no one knows how low it's going to get yeah if everyone if anyone who was selling here or knew that the price was going to be 5.5 two or so weeks three weeks later they wouldn't buy back but people don't know that they still think that the price of this token is undervalued and so therefore you're getting this behavior where people are selling then they're buying they're selling then they're buying they're selling that's what's happening okay until you finally get to 5.5 cents then you have a nice buy up probably from people who still who see that this is a good opportunity to to accumulate their bags and it just confirms that this level is a strong level tested twice reacted a nice reaction twice and now the price is just kind of settling somewhere in the middle of this overall range i think that with a kind of range bound between probably 5.5 and 7 that's what it looks like and over the next day or so we consolidate here and then if bitcoin goes up we'll go up okay um or if someone a whale or someone like that starts buying up buying up buying up while bitcoin is going down that would be the most bullish situation you see it's always bullish when where people buy their token when bitcoin goes down where the price goes up when bitcoin goes down that's extremely bullish yeah extremely bullish because it means there's enough demand in a token and the opportunity to buy the token is when bitcoin goes down because eventually when bitcoin goes up the token will go up anyway yeah so you have this con constant wave uh, tidal effect of bitcoin it goes up it goes down and it brings the whole market with it down and up down and up so if the price of a token goes up when bitcoin is going down then when the, the bitcoin comes up what happens to your token it starts to go up even more it starts to really go up okay and so for everyone who's interested in token who's watching these videos and is interested in uh some of the things that i've been explaining and telling people about just bear in mind that in the future going forward if we can have flat corrections it just means more aggressive buying and the prevention of collapses when bitcoin pulls back yeah now it's all going to be it's going to be a group of effort it's going to be a a, a con, it's going to be an effort of the collective of everyone who's in, interested to participate in this idea and in this endeavor because it benefits all of us if we were able to hold this level as Bitcoin dropped and absorb all of the sell pressure, yeah, and we would have ended up with a rounding bottom here, 
uh, and then it would have been a the breakout would have been from seven cents and we would have avoided going all the way down to five it also means if people are waiting for lower they end up buying higher yeah so it actually creates more bullishness if we can defend higher levels of support uh but in order to do that it has to be a collective effort and everyone has to participate and also um you mustn't be afraid if we don't if it doesn't work because if you lose levels then people sometimes panic because they're suddenly to see they're buying at seven or whatever the price goes down they panic and then they sell into that breakdown thinking now this is going to go to zero not realizing that the best strategy would be for everyone to participate in this endeavor and buy a little bit but also have enough to buy lower and it's actually more constructive that way because if we are able to defend higher support lines when there's big pullbacks on bitcoin and still haven't deployed all of our, our buy capital into the token of choice here being trvl then as the price starts ascending guess what is going to happen we're all going to add the rest of the value and push the price up okay so it becomes extremely bullish extremely bullish and for this behavior to continue and continue in the bull market as a group con collective effort is going to bring it's going to attract interest from a lot of people outside of the trvl domain yeah if people start seeing <coughs> us bulls do this to this token where support lines are held and prices brought up after bitcoin rises and the support lines are held and the support lines are held um you're going to get a lot of a much wider more comprehensive interest in this token than you can ever imagine because everyone is going to start participating in this collective effort and it's really all about bitcoin still yeah it just means that when bitcoin pulls back you defend the support lines and then as bitcoin goes up the price goes up naturally because then you get the rest of everyone buying up people buy when bitcoin buy it goes up but the secret to getting this token to higher prices is to buy when bitcoin goes down not when bitcoin goes up to buy when bitcoin goes down that is the strategy that i'm suggesting for trvl buy when bitcoin goes down and the buying that i'm suggesting is not market buying it's placing limit or orders to absorb the price now i've been testing how the, the methods of placing limit orders on different exchanges i think buy bit is still the best and with Bybit, what I've been doing is if I want to get filled by placing limit orders, you have to select the, the, the lowest sell price and then bring it down by one pip and you have to sell in small amount, uh, buy in, sorry, buy in small amounts like $100 or $50 at a time. And just by the ordinary fluctuations in the market, little robots buying and selling, um it's possible to fill uh using limit orders you're basically absorbing the sell pressure what robots will do is that they will buy from another exchange slightly lower with market and then on bybit which might be slightly higher they will sell at market so what you get is you get market buying on the other exchanges and you get limit absorbing sales on bybit so actually it's much more bullish for the whole market if people are able to place limit orders uh, and absorb the sell pressure okay and it's easy to get it's not easy it's, it's not easy to get filled but it is possible i've tried it and so basically there's a spread on buy bit and i put it one pip it's hard to see here i put it one pip underneath the sale price and that keeps on adjusting but if you do it in small amounts you, you can get filled it takes a little bit of time but you can get filled and you're not moving the price up. You're not pushing the price up in getting the price filled. Yeah. You're just absorbing the sell pressure, absorbing the sell pressure. And actually the strategy, I think the best strategy for all of us to think about is 
defending higher levels when Bitcoin is looking to, to correct. Yeah. And so naturally we didn't get that experience because here someone market sold. See that? There was a market sell. There was a lot of market selling when we lost support. Let me just delete these now. You see that? So we tried to make a higher high there. And then we made a higher low here. That was the buy up. <laughs> Didn't make a higher low and people sold into that. Okay. Now at any point in time down to here, if there were enough limit orders, the price would have just gone sideways as Bitcoin dropped and it'd be less likely. And this is what you have to understand. Just because Bitcoin is dropping, doesn't there wasn't much volume in that descent. So it would have been easy to defend that level. The volume only came in after we made a lower low. You see here, as soon as we made a lower low here, see this is the red candle the, here. As soon as we made a lower low, look at that volume, look at that volume. That's when the volume came. The volume didn't come before we made a lower low, yeah? So all of this volume would have been very easy to absorb, yeah? Just to hide, hold a higher low here. As Bitcoin dropped, holding a higher low here would have been easy. It would have been an easy endeavor if we were all on the same, had the same idea of what needed to be happen, needed to happen to hold higher prices, yeah? And so it would have been easy to defend that level if everyone participated. Bitcoin would have dropped. We would have just been holding our higher prices. Yeah. And if everyone was involved, we'd be, we, instead of consolidating down here, we'd be consolidating up here. Maybe then we would have actually had, when Bitcoin kind of rallied a little bit, we would have had a higher high and we would have been back, we would have been able to change this market structure much earlier. Whereas now we're still, we're still kind of, we're still in bearish market structure on this medium time frame, and we just have to see what happens. Either we make a lower low here, or you can actually change it and make a higher high here. So effectively, it's a little bit of indecision right now. All right. So this is just food for thought. And the point that I'm making is it would have been easy to hold this low because the volume only came in after we made a lower low here. Yeah, you see that volume, it only came in afterwards. Yeah. It'd have been very easy for us to just absorb that with limit orders. And it would have been really bullish, yeah? And what you'll get is you'll get a situation in the future. I'm not saying it's going to happen now because we've already kind of lost support lines. But in the future, if we can create, it's not manipulation. This is just the market doing what's needed to be done to be bullish, to remain bullish, to continue the bullish momentum, to continue the bullish uh, endeavor, okay? You'll get into a situation where maybe TRVL, whenever Bitcoin dumps, will start pumping, yeah? Will start rallying, and the, that's gonna draw the attention of the whole market. Because in the bull market, at all times, everyone is trying to make money, yeah? Because that's the moment to make money. And because people are just, inherently bullish in the bull market they'll be looking to buy right and so it becomes more difficult when everything's pulling back and so when you see a token that's in the when bitcoin is correcting it's holding support and then it starts going up when bitcoin goes down all of a sudden what happens is the whole market starts buying that token instead of instead of anything instead of usdtd they still still buy your token. You'll get the attention of the whole market. And it's not hard to achieve that kind of price action with all of us involved in this kind of idea that I'm suggesting. And that is to, to defend TRVL when Bitcoin is pulling back. It only made more increase. There was only an increase in volume where we made a low low and it would have been very easy to defend that low. But this is not one person's job. We can all participate in this. It will just require all of us who are watching me and in our community to just put some small limit orders there. And if everyone did that, we could easily do that. It'd be very easy. All right.
So that's my kind of TRVL update. At the moment, we're kind of range bound between seven cents and possibly 5.5. .5. That's kind of where we are. We're range bound here and we have to see what happens. I'm expecting us to go up when the halving happens. Yeah, that's usually when a lot of volume comes into the market. Uh, so I am expecting that. Again, it's the same idea. I'm, I know people, I'm not expecting people to market by, market by us out of this area, but how great would it be if now that Bitcoin is kind of pulling back and looking on edge, how amazing would it be if we could get back above there as Bitcoin is going down? That's the point that I'm making, yeah? To show strength when Bitcoin is weak or showing weakness, and then when Bitcoin finally finds strength, you end up going like that. Yeah, because then the confidence returns to the market and people start buying significantly more. All right. Uh, Tim the Chin says Bitcoin is going down again. All right. Ooh, let's have a look. All right. It's kind of where we were. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad that I wasn't bullish today and bearish and the big, and the price is doing what I'm feeling <laughs> rather than yesterday where I was bullish and then uh, suddenly in the live stream, I was like really bullish yesterday and then just remember the live stream, the price just dropped like that. <laughs> uh, that was quite weird. It was very awkward. I think in the context of yesterday, I feel a little bit good about myself, even though I wasn't 100% right. I wasn't wrong either it did go up eventually um but now i'm feeling a little bit more bearish yeah uh because of exactly where we are we're in no no man's land <laughs> chop chop and that's actually what i was saying about trvl like we have enough people there's enough people watching my stream it's not that much but it's enough and trvl is such a low liquid token that it wouldn't take much to start a trvl bull run while bitcoin is going chop chop and everyone is like sitting on their thumbs in their altcoins just not knowing what to do waiting waiting boring waiting for bitcoin to do something uh this is the worst place to be in bitcoin because you're you're buying and selling and you're not sure what to do and a lot of people are getting stopped out because they got tight validations uh, and it's not easy to trade this. I think the best strategy for trading this is as the price goes, like have an invalidation. Let's just say it's here and here. Maybe slightly wider, maybe not, maybe not even that close, just a little bit wider so you don't get swing failure out. And as the price descends, buy, 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 and the price goes up, sell, 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 and just basically buy and sell in either direction and take profit when you're in profit and so you're kind of just scalping the range it's probably the easiest way to trade these kind of horrible ranges ticket it's musk lol i made 35 sold today got in early on 35 fuck dude you're rich <laughs> 35 sold that's good huh It's amazing. Well done. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's TRVL. Uh, I'll put that in the video. That's uh, Bitcoin. We kind of know what's going on. Nothing really interesting. Um, it's almost kind of where I want to buy. So if I see a swing failure there, let me just quickly put an alert. Uh, it'd be nice to come into this trend line, actually. Just hit this trend line. There it is, almost there. Not yet. I, I wouldn't mind coming into this lower line and taking the liquidity on that line. That'd be quite good to see. Um,
There you go, that's the trade. Have to wait for the swing failure to take that trade. Yeah, I mean, well, make sure you take profit if you made that much money, yeah? Take your profit, leave one soul in, and then if it goes to the moon, you've 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 made money. Um Yeah, so it is looking bearish, it looks quite bearish. Losing the vowel, losing that range. Uh I I still think we'll probably come back up one more time at least to give it a real test. Stop out all these early shorts uh, and then maybe probably we'll just continue this behavior until whenever whatever session takes over i think the new york's starting in a couple of hours so actually maybe yeah we have to see what happens okay um pretty boring huh what else is there to have a look at um When the when the when the markets are like this, it's really important that people take profit quickly. Yeah, we're not we're not ranging. I'm sorry, we're not trending. We're range bound. Yeah, we we're, we're bound by ranges and limits in the way the price moves. So you have to take profit as soon as you get into profit. Now, take it because we're not kind of moving. Yeah, it'd be very easy to see once the price moves, and. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a fake out to break out of this triangle in either direction. We could easily fake out to go down and we could easily fake out to go up. It's very easy for that to happen. Uh, I think it's, it's less likely to have a double fake out. I think that's very, that's not likely at all. So I'd be looking possibly for the, po the potential of a fake out to go up or vice versa. Um, if this kind of over over goes much higher and then it kind of really falls, maybe maybe that could happen. And actually, I think that would be more painful. Would be to go all the way up, stop out all of these shorts just for some bigger whale to have a market sell at that level after you have a swing failure and just the price just comes up. That would look if that was to happen. That would be so bearish you would just you you would just forget about it for a while <laughs> that would be really bearish that's not and vice versa like the same thing happens it happens a lot in bitcoin so you just we just have to be aware of what could happen you could also get into a situation where for whatever reason the price does go down and as soon as you just get back up it becomes really bullish like ultra bullish for that to happen would be very bu bullish yeah you can't get just because you go down and you take the liquidity as soon as you get back up you'll start getting a large amount of buy pressure okay so these are things to keep an eye out for and so even though it's a little bit bearish and it is possible that we go down it's also very possible that we ping back up yeah so both things scenarios are possible it'd be very easy to see the value area low is, is a very clear line in the sand. But before that, just losing and reclaiming trend lines and levels. I haven't marked out the levels recently. So let me just quickly have a look and see if there's any new levels. Um, yeah, there is. Look, there's a daily level. Oh, that's today. So we kind of lost the level already, actually. So I'm going to have to clean my charts up. So basically that's your level and the, the daily candle hasn't ended yet. So we have to wait to see how the daily candle ends. That's quite a, that's the closest level that we have and the lower level that we have, it's a washed level. It's down here. I like to rename those as washed, although the current one is washed too because we've traded through it but because it's current I'll leave it uh, and then if there's any weekly levels too nothing there's nothing here and there's obviously that washed monthly level from lower down so if I look at the current price chart the 
get my train lines back. That's much further, huh? It's a little bit wash. It's a little bit further down. You see, look, we've come underneath the daily level and we've back tested it. See that? So I wouldn't be surprised if the price comes back up there again to see what the reaction will be. Um, but you can see that that daily level, there's a reaction. A whale just sold a million slurf almost. Yeah, of course. I, I think when it comes to slurf, I haven't lost 100% interest, but I do, because of the manipulation that's going on, yeah, I think it's very, it, this is really like gambling at the moment. Um, I, we made a higher high here, but we haven't been able to go above and confirm the, the market structure change. So that's kind of what I wanted to see. It hasn't actually done it yet. And now that Bitcoin is pulling back, it's very unlikely that it's going to happen now. And you can clearly see I've got some fib lines, which are kind of, we've just lost that. Actually, the re probably the reason why he sold, maybe a lower low on the local time frame, but coming back underneath this pivot, a rounding top, it's looking quite bearish on the one hour time frame. Um, let me just delete all of this now. I think the biggest problem for me right now is the way these whales are manipulating this market. And while this whole price action looks extremely bullish, uh, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be surprised because of the behavior of these whales. If anyone who is leveraged here thinking that that's it, we're going to the moon, doesn't get destroyed once more. Yeah. Why would they not do that once more? And it wouldn't be hard to do looking at the structure that's been forming higher high there you're looking to make a higher low to go up uh but if the price now suddenly does this then this is going to look terrible and you'll probably get another uh big sell-off on this token so we have to it's this is going to be partly to do with bitcoin but i think it's also going to be partly to do with the the manipulation that's happening um on this token right now i think for most people if they're if people are looking for safety um then the point of control that's the place to buy after it's been flipped into support so you can clearly see um that the point of control is acting as resistance you see that um it was a good place to take profit in the first impulse up and we've just come back to clear the liquidity retest it it's is resistance at the moment point of control is resistance and there's no reason to get bullish onto this on this token until we flip that into support i want to flip that into support yeah you see i even have a trade plan i'm not in a trade because we haven't flipped it into the support i'm not even interested in this token there's only two conditions that i'd be interested in this token looking at the price action now yeah only two conditions let me just hide all of this. And it's just simply because of the manipulation in the market. I'm not interested in participating in that kind of uh, bad behavior. Uh, I'd be very interested if we take out the liquidity of the lows here. That would interest me. Okay. I would like to see the price go all the way down. Lose everything. Lose everything one more time for an SFP of these lows. Yeah, that would interest me. If we got that, then I think the bottom would be in. For me, that would give me the confidence that the bottom is in. We're now forming a much more kind of structured bottom. Yeah, like a double bottom, clear the liquidity. I'd be much more interested in picking up this token if I saw that. Or uh, I'd be interested in picking up this token if we were able to flip the point of control, which is the highest volume on this range, in to support in some meaningful way, so I can see it, that would be a good place to buy as a, a pullback into the POC as support. Very good place to buy after you see the selling come back to the point of control. 
the other the other time the other way that i would become really interested is a much longer drawn out consolidation period yeah rather than this kind of up and down up and down up and down it's just it's just going to burn people uh if we see a kind of much more long longer tighter consolidation period yeah then i'll start getting interested in it again because it'll be easy to get invalidated from that kind of idea uh, especially if it kind of starts to come down into the value area low you start to put volume in this lower range the point of control shifts to the lower part of this range and you're just consolidating for a much longer period um that would be i'll be interested in that as well yeah that kind of price action would interest me other than that i think on the most part it's probably better to just either do one of two things leave this token alone ignore it or have a longer term higher time strategy for dollar cost averaging into this whole range this overall range i, I still think it's a good token in the sense that i think it's going to do very well in the bull market um but it's very difficult to safely trade um safely trade and enter without i mean it's easy to trade but you have to take profit really quickly what i mean is it's hard to enter without feeling that you could lose 50 percent of value instantly so the only strategy that's going to work in this erratic volatile nature of this behavior is literally just to buy a little bit every single day just dollar cost average into this token it doesn't really matter in the scale of things if you're getting it at the bottom or at the top there's a 300 percent range difference yeah that's why i'm saying you scale in if you scale in over a long period of time you will end up on average your value will be on average yeah and the longer you scale in the longer the easier it will be to get the average of this whole range you'll probably end up somewhere close to the point of control somewhere now i'm i would love to see the point of control move lower down I would even prefer it if the whole value area moved down and the point of control ended up down here. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, but I can't make that happen. So short of that, uh, it's always good to pick up to dollar cost average into this tokens uh, at the lows of the ranges, you know, when it's in the low of the range and just give it time. I think it's important to give it time. At any point in time, this could break out and go to the moon that's got to do everything to do with bitcoin i can't you know i can't i just want to see whatever happens you can't go to the moon without flipping the point of control into support yeah so it's very easy to see so there's no rush jumping in because all we have to do is flip that into support and you're basically getting it at for 41 cents but when it's at when it's support not when it's resistance Good morning, Matt. Local bullish CBD on BTC funding rates reset. Sentiment is bearish. This is weekend. Also, we actually saw capitulation on BTC. Some 30 day short term holders sold at a loss. Perfect. Well, um, looking at BTC, um, I think we're trying to what what we're trying to do right now is create some kind of bottoming pattern that's what i think i'm not i'm not changing my view on that it looks like we want to create some kind of bottoming structure this is how it's done uh uh the price tightens and we create some kind of uncertainty at the lows uh, and eventually we create that bottom okay now there's different ways the bottom can be created even if we had a capitulation, we could always go back down and revisit the lows, take out the liquidity from there, bounce right back and start rallying. That would be nice because that's another, that would be a good way to create a low uh, with a buy up, with a nice buying tail. Um, or as we're trying to create some kind of bottoming structure here, if we do kind of, break out like that and maybe form some kind of inverse head and shoulders idea 
once we're back into the range that could also work you know like we, we, we're trying to create some kind of bottoming pattern i think it's unlikely of all of these scenarios it's unlikely even though this whole thing looks like a some higher time frame head and shoulders even though i don't think it is it's more like a ghost with two big hands um small head i think um I just think it's unlikely we just go down and down and down. I can't see that. I mean, that's very unlikely. Um, I, I, simply because of the Elliott wave count that I have, and also because of the context of the Bitcoin bull market, regardless of everything, if we do suddenly go down and we don't find support, then I won't be looking for us to go lower than my the top of the wave one count that i have okay and i'll just quickly show you that again i showed it yesterday and it's hard like people some people don't really understand any ways i don't really understand it i know the rules and i'm trying to just follow the rules yeah uh, i kind of think we're coming to the end of our correction but i'm not sure exactly when it is could it be lower yeah could it be lower? Yeah, it's possible. I think looking at the timings, though, when you look at the way these waves, it's looking like we're on time, you know, like when I do some kind of, I don't know which pivot to use. Um, but just like it looks like we're on, we're kind of, it's like a one to one here, almost or 1 1.168, 618. And regardless of that, this is the bot, this is the top of one. We're in a four wave now. Okay. That takes us to 44,000. All right. So regardless of what happens, uh, I would be expecting at the very worst case scenario for that to hold a support, the top of one. That's Elliott waves. All right. That would be correct. That would be that would be um, in the spirit of the rules of the laws of Elliott Waves. Yeah, that is very possible. Uh, no, let me correct myself. Not very possible. That is possible. Uh, but it's not probable because we are coming to the end of our kind of the waves. You can see they're quite nicely balanced. This would this would literally have to do that. It would have to be a capitulation, another capitulation like some kind of crazy black swan to, to take us down there suddenly uh, like that. Because in terms of the way the waves are, they're quite nicely timed. Uh, I think it's more likely that we just find support somewhere here. And I've got these double fib lines here on 57,000. If we do go down, I, I think it's very like I think it's very likely that that will be it. Um, but you won't know if that's it until the price gets back above this previous low. So even if we were to go down there, you won't know if this is it until the price goes back up there, flips that into support, and comes right back up. Then you'll know. Yeah. So you have to wait because. You wouldn't just jump in unless you're buying spot because that would be a good place to buy because the price could continue. That would be the danger of losing levels is that once you start losing levels, if you don't get a reaction and if you don't get a swing failure of previous pivots, uh, it just means there's not enough demand and the price will just continue going down trying to find lower support. So you always have to be, you always have to be, when you're in a situation like this and you see a collapse of the price, um, if you buy a little bit on spot underneath this wick, that would be amazing place to buy some. Short of that, it's always better to wait for a reaction somewhere and then always better to wait for a, a buy up because what you really want to do is squeeze the shorts and for the price to come right back up. Clear the liquidity, squeeze the shorts and the price to come back up. You'll see that because we'll just reclaim that level and 
looking at the order flow too. And now that you were talking about the order flow, um, let me quickly have a look at it uh, and just confirm what you were saying. It's good that you're looking at it too. Um, so we've had this liquidation bubble. That's nice to see. I like liquidation bubbles because it means that you're getting a lot of market selling and um, you see the price doesn't move down that much after you have a lot of market selling. It's kind of coming down quite slowly. We've got medium time frame um, bearish uh, bullish divergences. It's very easy to see. As Matt was saying, you can see that we're making lower lows on the CBD. This whole bearish CBD divergence becomes invalidated if we make a lower low on the price. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. There's still divergences, but it becomes it just means that the price could go down much more. You you can't tell then when the how far the price is gonna go. It's a lot easier to tell now because we're creating divergences right now. So we're not expecting the price to make a lower low. We're not expecting that because we can clearly see the price is being absorbed, right? If you do make a lower low here, even though there's a lot of absorption, the price could go down much more. Yeah, so you have to be aware of that. And then what happens is that it, it doesn't happen all the time, but then this is leading. Okay. The other thing I just want to just quickly share with you is that you see the open eye is going up. The open interest is going up as the price is going down. You can see that there are shorts entering this, this down move. Okay. The OI has been going up in all of this range into this downside. So we can see now that shorts are loading up. All right and they're getting absorbed by limit longs okay uh, and so this is the fight isn't it this is the this is the fight between bears and bulls you know who wins the bears want to make a lower low the bulls want to absorb the price so that they can get a squeeze up that's what's happening yeah so every rise is being shorted and um, maybe the same shorts are placing limit longs lower down. Maybe that's what's happening. The same people. And eventually one side will win. Eventually you'll either have a, a breakdown with no swing failure or you'll have a short squeeze and the price will, will go up because <coughs> you've exhausted all the short sellers. Um, and that's what's happening. The, the longs are trying to exhaust the short sellers to get a squeeze up and the shorts are trying to make a lower low so they can have another mini capitul capitulation event ideally what the sh <coughs> bears want to do is take out this pivot here this pw low previous week low that's the target <coughs> excuse me so i mean it's just a, a battle between shorting and longing buying and selling um after we lost that neckline it, everything became bearish again unfortunately okay and that's just the way the market is even though yesterday i was extremely bullish and i wasn't wrong <laughs> i wasn't wrong thank god i wasn't wrong it would have sucked it would have sucked if uh it went downer i would have been really like what the fuck i can't i can't say the bottom's in and then the price goes down uh, but now I'm not saying the bottom's in. Now I'm saying uh, it's looking bearish again. And we are trying to form some kind of bottom. That's what's happening right now with the price action. An attempt is being made to form a bottom. It's not any individual attempt. It's the market attempting to, to form some kind of bottom. Because eventually the buyers and sellers are going to be... The balance will flip. David is saying I TP'd my long at that high where the liquidation bubble came from. All right, so that's good. It's good that you did that. Um, yeah. So this is actually looking quite weak. The reason why this is weak is because you've had a liquidation and the price is lower than the liquidation bubble. That's extremely weak. Uh, price action for the bulls that's really weak 
it's really weak to see that you can see now when i'm looking at this that people are shorting you see these uh that's a long close there that was a long that entered who closed later but here you can see here the rise was shorted there was a increase in oi the price is coming down uh, so longs are entering but they're quickly closing as they go underwater this is longs closing and here you see here you can clearly see shorts entering shorts entering shorts entering. so in many ways um exo charts the order flow is a little bit of an early early radar warning because it just helps to see what people are doing yeah like if you have this bias but now you see the market is actually shorting uh, it helps you because no one wants to do things on their own they want to do it follow the market um, I wasn't looking at the order flow actually otherwise I would have been shorting too because you can clearly see the OI is increasing and after we had that swing failure um, that was probably the you see what happened you had the long come in see that these are longing in the highs looking for a breakout and then immediately the price came back down um you can see that longs closed because the OI dropped and then short centered and what's interesting about this um price action is you didn't get a quick bounce so these shorts didn't take their profit so the shorts entered and didn't take profit or they were very slow to take profit because they were expecting lower okay so that was a that's what happened that's why you had this kind of rounding top and then it never just recovered it would usually you get a little bit of a bounce back into the local golden pocket for a second try that didn't even happen so it was quite this is quite bearish huh? the whole thing's quite bearish um doesn't mean the price isn't gonna find support and squeeze all of these late shorts that could that could also happen very possible okay I think I would expect that in the context of the, the tightening range that we're forming um, on the local time frame. We're kind of coming down to the bottom of the triangle quite quickly soon back into the golden pocket value area low this uh this trend line uh if anyone is short i would expect them to take profit at the value area low if they're a trader they would uh, and so let's see if we can get a little swing failure off one of these pivots you, you could you could long or if you're in a short you could close your short or take profit um yeah all right um that's bitcoin mm -hmm. i looked at trbl i've looked at slurf um it's interesting because <laughs> and i didn't mean to do this yesterday like i'm not honestly i'm not trying to shill a token i have no idea whether this cube coin is gonna be a valuable asset or not i literally have no idea um so i i looked at it yesterday i looked at i made a little video i posted it and uh, some people have bought into that <laughs> uh you can quite see you can see the buying there's a little bit of buying going on not crazy volume but it's quite interesting that that happened i'm not here shilling a token i have no idea what's going to happen with this token and the biggest problem with a token like this is the low volume that's the biggest problem with this token um not nothing to do with the product or the project it's everything to do with the volume now maybe that's partly got something to do with the fact that it's on cardano and probably that's got the lowest volume maybe and the reason why this uh it was a good place to buy is because when you've got a low volume token you want to try and but fill fill a bag you have to do it at the low because because otherwise you move the price too much yeah so there's two ways to fill a bag where you have low liquidity you either have to wait for the low and market buy so you can fill your bags and you don't mind 
if the price goes up a certain percent and in, in this case for i think from when i made that video uh yesterday it was like here you see the price went up like almost seven or eight percent yeah that doesn't mean there's enough liquidity so if someone was the market sell right now <laughs> it would probably go right back down so with these kinds of tokens um uh the, where there's low volume i I don't know how much the volume is it's not that much uh you're gonna see these like really long drawn out uh consolidation ranges and basically it's just people setting orders on both sides trying to buy and sell without moving the price yeah that's what's that's why you get this kind of behavior yeah when you get these kind of long i don't know if people have noticed them on it it's it's, it's not easy to see on a lot of charts don't have them because they've got they're much more liquid but when you see these kind of like consolidation ranges with like sometimes with flat tops like that that bay this one here it's it, basically someone had a large order that they were selling they saw the range the range was very obvious to see that was the range they were trying to fill their bags to sell so they were trying to sell their bags it was very difficult to get filled if they have their order at the top of the range because to get filled, you need market buying. So what they did was they put their sell order um, halfway down the range. That's what happened. And so eventually, over time, um, their bag, their sell bag, bag got filled. Or they sold their bag. And that's how this, over a course of how many hours? Many hours. They were able to fully sell their bag. And then eventually the price dropped. Yeah. So that's what these are. And that's the way on these low liquid tokens, that's how you can fill or you can market buy. Now, the problem with market buying on these illiquid tokens is you create gaps in the market. So even though here it's OK because you're just getting back above previous consolidation. So even though there is a gap here, it's almost OK because it's just a deviation from the range in the lows this gap these gaps become problematic yeah higher gaps now as you can see the reason why that gap was formed because it was, it was, there was a gap here so fast down fast up that's what i was saying to you before when you see these quick drops you also get these quick ascents because there's no volume there's no buying and selling in that gap okay uh, and that's why the price drops so quickly and that's why the price comes up so quickly now that we're back into a range we're probably range locked here for a while and it's this is called uh accumulation yeah it's like if people want to accumulate this is how they would do it and you just have to put limit order here somewhere in the middle of the range in the same way that someone tried to sell here and put their sell limit orders in the middle of the range the way to pick up tokens like this is to have your buy limit orders stuck in the middle of this range yeah and eventually what will happen is you will get filled as BTC goes down. Okay. So every time BTC goes down, it puts this kind of downward pressure on the whole market and the price drops a little bit. And that's when your bags get filled. Okay. That's, that's the way to do it, to get a bag filled. This, if we were to see this on this token, that'd be really bullish. Uh, that would be quite bullish price action after a rejection from the lows back above the point of control. In this type of token, that would be like holding support after reclaiming it. And ultimately, what needs to happen is, and you can actually see what's interesting about volume now. And this is on Mex, so I can't comment on the other exchanges. But you can now see that there's been a little bit of increase in volume. Yeah. Okay. And actually, what you really need to see with these smaller tokens is an increase in volume okay and when you see that that's going to be the first indication that the token like this is going to break out or move up um nothing changes in terms of the future of what i think could happen with a token like this uh, and just because of the hype like literally when you're investing in a token like this you almost don't care about the project you just know that you're in the right place to buy at the lows of a multi-year range. 
Um, this is a multi-year range, so it started July 22. Uh, uh, so that's two years, just under two years, okay? There's been no bull run in this token, just a massive sell-off. The sell-off in itself is quite bearish, but you can see the sell-off will have no volume. There's no volume in that sell-off. The, the volume only came afterwards here, okay? And I imagine the reason why that volume came in was because whoever was launched this project had some spare capital and they were just buying their token, okay? They probably the project itself just thought the token's really cheap, now we're just going to buy it. That actually, when you look at the context of that volume that came in, that dramatically slowed down the descent of the, the price. You see, after that volume came in here, the price totally slowed down. Yeah, the price was really descending quite fast uh, on a low volume drop. And then as the volume came in, the price really slowed down. We're only just underneath that area. And we've been in this uh, consolidation period now for a good part of one and a half years. Uh, I think that's, this is kind of what you want to see. I, I don't think it would have been good for that volume to come in and for us to be down here. If that would have happened, that would be extremely bearish. And because as soon as the price came up, you'd get people selling into that. Okay. The fact that we're kind of consolidating underneath this volume here, just underneath it, in a multi-year range. And as you can see, even though there's a large amount of volume, you can see that the volume profile had increased in the middle part of this range. It's dropped off and it's slowly trying to increase now. I think it's looking, relatively speaking, quite healthy. And eventually what will happen um, is if the price is able to get back above the value area high, flip it into support, however long that takes, yeah? Because of the way the price has uh, dropped so quickly, and obviously this has got everything to do with Bitcoin and the wider market, um, it could be very easy to see the price uh, go up quite fast in the same way the price dropped quite fast. Uh, with a maybe a pit stop at the launch price. Yeah, uh, I don't know how that would react. It could be like that, whatever. But the point is that um, these are the kind of tokens that you want to just get in, involved in uh, because they haven't run and there's no attention or hype on them. And it's at the lows. So it's not like I'm not trying to I haven't got a large position, you know, I've got a really small speculative, a really small amount, um, because it's like gambling, <laughs> literally. And the, the thing that you have to consider when you're speculating is, I know, for example, without a shadow of my doubt, that we'll probably see on TRVL, we'll probably see five dollars right I, I i've got a five dollar mark as my higher as my lowest target i don't have a doubt that we'll see that at the very least the all-time high which is a 1.56 but i'm think if we get to the all-time high which there's no reason why we won't we'll get to five dollars because we'll overshoot and for me five dollars on trvl is my lowest target so in my mind i'm not thinking about whether this is going to do well or not the reason why i'm not going balls deep in a project like this is because I know already that I'm, I'm onto something which is going to do very well already. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that's enough. I'm not greedy. I'm not looking uh, to be Bill Gates. You know, you just want to walk away from the bull market um, with a, 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 you know, with a worthwhile increase in value. That that's a success. But what? So so therefore, you have to contemplate whatever value you put into these other tokens which effectively are shit tokens yeah or that we all they're all shit tokens but some are more shit than others um you have to be thinking if i take value from one token and put it into another token i'm going to lose value in my primary token which i know is going to do x amount so now it's a game which token does better which token does 
is going to outperform, which is the next 10,000 X token. You always, it's this game that continues in the market. We're always trying to find that amazing token. And the problem is, is you find a token and for the large part of the market does nothing. You feel like you've lost money because you haven't gained money in your other tokens. That's how you feel like. It's a psychological feeling um, that impacts people when um, they see lots of other tokens go up in value and their token that they've been nicely holding out on for a long period of time isn't going anywhere. It's still at the lows, yeah? And so when I'm looking at this token, I'm seeing that kind of behavior. It could have broken out and actually it didn't and therefore people got tired they were like damn this shit i'm done and they just sold into that yeah they just kind of escaped because they're thinking to myself well why don't i just buy slurf or why don't i just go and buy trvl or something else okay i think that's why i don't have a big amount in this because i don't want to lose value elsewhere but i you have a, you have to put enough value in this that if this does do what I think it could happen to this token, which is at the very least back to the launch price uh, and at the very best all time high and maybe higher. You have to put enough enough value uh, that um, that you'll have, you know, you'll be happy with the profits, you know. So if you put in a hundred bucks, if your portfolio is like a million <laughs> and you put in a hundred bucks, that doesn't make any sense. It's pointless, really. Um, so it has to be a percentage value according to your portfolio. Yeah, that's probably the best strategy of a token like this. I've just got an alert on Bitcoin. So let me just quickly pass back to Bitcoin and see um, what's happening at the local price. Oh, look at that. We haven't had a swing failure. It's failed. There's no reaction. See that? I can't see a reaction just yet. Um, can't see a reaction. Let me have a look at exo charts. No reactions. Not no 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 reaction at all. Just selling actually. Just people are just selling into that shorting so here we've got a really important area of interest the previous day point of control and the previous day value area they're pretty much of the same area you could probably long that blindly <laughs> probably but let's just see for the reaction TRVL is holding up really nicely. I'm tempted to just sell all my freaking other altcoins and buy, buy TRVL right now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a limit order on TRVL and try and defend TRVL. I've got, I'm in these other shit coins, but they just, they just keep on bleeding. And I'm actually just really interested in TRVL right now and defending TRVL. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And that's it. It's like the market is like that. Like you, you're speculating on all these other coins, hoping to. Um, oh, look at that. Shorts are entering. You can see that? Increasing OI, price moving down. See that? That's quite a large short just entered. It's very dangerous to short the lows right into the previous day point of control. Uh, let me see if I can long this guy as, as, as he's coming in. Let me go to the one minute time frame. Some longs coming in now. Huh? It's it's a little bit front run of this previous day point of control. Oh my god, I can't see the numbers. It's too small. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's too late. I was too late. Oh, let's go back to. Uh... The five minute. It's harder to see on the five minute. Uh, let me have a look at the uh, other chart. Mm. 
no reaction uh, yet. You kind of want to get back above this 618 now, I think. Because we, we are just falling. And if we're falling, we're probably heading for lower. And we might form something like this off these lows here. Take out the liquidity from these lows and look to head right back up. And it could easily, kind of like I've suggested, fall down and find resistance and then fall down even further. So you've got to be aware of that circumstance, that situation. Yeah. At some point, anyone who's short is going to be wanting to take profit. You have to bear that in mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, because they can get trapped, especially when they're short in the lows. And, uh, and, There's no trade right now, unless someone wants to just, um, <laughs> short at the lows. <laughs> Never a good idea to short the lows. You see, there's some shorts coming in. These are shorts, short, short. Uh, I think the minute you start seeing shorts close, that's a good place to long. Yeah. So if we start seeing shorts close now, I'd be looking for that to long right into this PD park and PD value area low, previous day value area low. It's good areas. They're both pretty much at the same place. So it'd be nice to see some shorts close now and trap these shorts and go up. Go to the one minute time frame. Got all this shorting, huh? Um, and often what happens um, is it ha yeah, you wait for the hour candle to end. And so the hour candle is going to end in about 17 minutes. So there's still a little bit of time to be patient. It's not, there's no reason that there's no need to jump in when you've got an hour candle. Uh, coming in so it's sometimes good to wait for the candles to close and new candles to form when you're looking to take trades like that so obviously I'm looking to long but I'm just waiting see look there's some there was some shorts closed there see that there was a short that closed still a bit early because we want to kind of hit these levels here there's some longs entering now longs are entering a little bit early not many longs but a few. These are quite high volume, no, David? 1.6 million, no? Is it not rare? Oh, are these longs? Is that what you're saying? I don't think they're longs. What's the T size? It's quite good volume. Huh? You mean T size? Yeah, you're looking for uh, an imbalance, but you've got shorts coming in here. Look, there's some uh, imbalances there, which is holding as resistance. You see that? I'm not seeing longs close. 
Uh, I'm just seeing short center. I'm not seeing many longs closed. The longs were closing up here. And here, there was longs closing into that liquidation. David is saying you want like 15 to 20 million volume. Uh, okay, well, he's probably right. Um, Volume is dropping off here a little bit. I mean, it is a good place to long, but you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to long while the market's still going down. You want to you want to long uh, when you see signs of reversal. And uh, I think the idea that David is suggesting is correct. You want to see an imbalance. You want to see the shorts. Um, you want to see more shorts than longs, and then you want to see the price. You want to see some shorts closing too. That would be nice. Go back to one minute. Oh. There's some longs entering here, look. Longs. There's a bit of longing here. I think it's slightly premature. And the, pro the problem is, is that if the price goes down, these longs are going to close and take the pr price down even further to the correct level it's almost like these longs are front running the level because they're they're not patient or they think that the level is not going to hit it's always better to wait for a level to be hit and to see a reaction yeah it's always better to see that um there's still there's still a lot of absorption in this uh in this drop all right let me go back to the other chart let me see if we have a swing failure there is one there now look see that's a swing failure it's either a swing failure or we're going lower <laughs> I'm not seeing a reaction, so that's why I'm hesitating. Um, I'm not seeing a quick, I want to see some shorts close or I don't know. I see some longs coming in. I kind of want the longs. I want some shorts to close. Eventually what happens is if you don't get shorts close, the price will come up high enough and then these longs here will, will take their profit and pull the price right down and it will probably just make a, another low. So that's why you have to be careful. It's always better to, like if you can see shorts closing, that gives you the confidence that this is a good place, like the shorts are looking to exit here. Yeah, they're not holding for lower. Uh, they're holding, they're looking to just close out here and wait for the price to come back up. And David's correct, you can enter small uh, and build it and it's a small invalidation. I mean, it's a good place.
All right, this is quite uninteresting at the moment. I mean, that's kind of what you're looking at in the market. You're looking at quite choppy behavior and that was that is a swing failure right now. You see, we've just come underneath that level. Um, I would have wanted to see a more of a reaction, to be honest with you. Uh, that would be a lot easier to take. A little bit of reaction. And it's kind of very, it's a slow reaction. You could take it now. But the invalidation is there. That's the trade. Basically. But I think I would have liked to have gone a little bit lower. To be honest with you. Now that we've kind of lost that trend line a bit. And I think the problem is, uh, as soon as these longs take profit, if they take profit, it's going to pull the price down. If they take profit and then you don't really make a lower low here and then you see shorts taking profit too, that would be a good place to long. If you see the longs take profit and then you start seeing shorts take profit, then you can long. That would be better. some closing here you can see that some some shorts are taking profit very small amounts just probably just just to, they're in good profit they just want to take a little bit now just in case they're not sure Now, what would be interesting is one of these big shorts that came into these lows closes. That would be interesting. See, that's a long taking profit there. See that? So someone was long down here and they just took profit just now. And you kind of want to see longs take profit. As soon as you start seeing longs take profit, people are going to start shorting again. That's a short coming in. Wait for the longs to close. These these early longs to get trapped. And see where the price comes. They're closing now. You see they're closing. Longs closing. It's easy to see, but it's also hard to see. This is the one minute time frame. The range here is quite small. It's not it's not a quite it's not a big range. Not a, not a powerful reaction, huh? It's not a big reaction there off that swing failure. I wasn't too impressed. So we're still kind of trying to go down, it looks like it.
these imbalances here, you see these black imbalances, they held the price. So there was enough uh, sell liquidity here to, to keep the price from going up. And it's not that much. Huh? Look, the imbalances aren't that big. So it's, it's given me a clue that there isn't really much interest here for longing or buying. There isn't really much interest here. If there was a lot of interest, those imbalances would have been cleared quite quickly, easily. It is kind of like watching paint dry. <laughs> um, let me go back to the other charts. Yeah, this is not looking fantastic. We're probably going to go lower. That's what it looks like. I think this uh, this trade idea is in the water. This is in the water too. All of this is rubbish. Let me just get rid of them now. Uh, we, this is still good, possibly. Get rid of that. These, these are the lows. In this, these are the lows. I think we should really clear. And then we'll have a good idea of 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 the market. Once we clear those lows, if we see another swing failure, I think it's very difficult now to to long after we've shown so much weakness, after we saw so much strength. And what you'll end up with if we make a low here is a higher low, um, sorry, a lower low and a lower high, bearish market structure continues. Uh, it's, all, it's possible to take a long, but you have to bear in mind that the structure is bearish so you'll be looking for a lower high you wouldn't be looking to take the price right back up to the highs if you were to take a swing failure of these lows because we're in bearish it would, it would be a lower low that higher high there would become the lower high so all of this is ignored then and it's updated that becomes your lower high and then these becomes your lower low and it's more likely you were to take a long on a swing failure, which is perfectly acceptable. Even if you were to show strength and get back into the range here, uh, you you would have to take profit just in case we made a lower high here and continued like that. Yeah. So you just have to bear that in mind. Like you wouldn't not take profit thinking that this is a nice swing trade. I think the safest way to, to contemplate a swing trade will be f to wait for market structure to change and be confirmed, yeah? Now, when market structure changes, you can uh, you can speculate on the higher low just to try and get a, an earlier, easier entry. Uh, and I think for me, the, the, the indicator, the clue is going to be the four hour time frame. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a market structure change in the four hour time frame. Because once that happens, the whole market's going to be buying and then the price will go up quite fast. Yeah? And you can see examples of market structure change in the previous consolidation here. Look, I'll show you. There was ample opportunity to enter after you had the change. Yeah, These are the lower highs. In the lower lows here, that was the low. Okay, you see here, higher high, and that was your higher low. So it actually, it came up. This became your higher, higher low here. As soon as that became your higher high, and the price, what well, the price is, it came back. It made a higher high. That was your higher low. That's your higher high. This is your higher low. And eventually it took out the high again. High low, high low, high low. Yeah. So you can see that there was the change happened. The initiation of the change happened here. As you as you made a higher high. You went to make the pivot low and you took out the high and you held the low. 
see that you held the low you held the low and what's interesting is even after the price made a higher high here you could see that it was holding higher lows it was holding higher lows there was a lot of opportunity to enter without trying to catch the bottom that's my point my point was the market structure changed on the four hour time frame and the market started buying again that's when the that's when the market started buying when the four hour time frame changed from bearish to bullish and as soon as the lows were being you were making higher lows higher lows higher lows higher lows it was it was just holding bullish market structure until eventually uh, the breakout happened when we when it took out this high here close them get rid of these now the breakout happened when it took out that pivot and there was no there was no looking back you see it just continued yeah so that's that's how power, market structure is really powerful when it comes to trend reversals and there's a lot of time like you know when you when you're in this kind of correction you know we could be in here honestly we could be here <laughs> uh we could be here liquidation we could be here you know i could let me just quickly fractalize that from this liquidation to all the way to here let me just take that this is the four hour time frame like no one really knows that's my point yeah I might like make uh, kind of nice fancy titles and say the bottom is in. It's, it's, it's a little bit clickbaitish, you know, like, let's be honest. <laughs> I, I'm obviously, I just want people uh, to click on it and come to my stream. The reality is I don't have a clue. Uh, and at the moment you just have to trade the charts as and when they happen. And you just have to have extremely good risk management because uh, you could always, you know, you could always be wrong. Everyone can always be wrong. Um, I mean, it kind of went up first after that, that, that capitulation candle. Um, not really. And that would take us to the end of April. Look, so that would, this whole correction can, this would take us to the end of the month from the capitulation candle there so we we're kind of here you see we're kind of here where the capitulation happened we are kind of trying to we're trying to go up and then what happens is <laughs> it went down Nice swing failure, but it was weak, no reaction, and actually took out the low. And then the price is brought up. You enter in the same region. Yeah, so like if this was to play out the way the previous fractal paper played out in the previous correction. Yeah, by entering now and entering in the future, you're basically entering at the same price. You just avoid all of this, all of that. Yeah, and not only do you avoid all of that. You're entering when the market is now buying and you're seeing a market structure change in a four hour time frame. You're seeing higher lows being put in, uh, which gives you that confidence that um, that the price is going up. That's what you really want to see. Higher lows just means that the, there's not enough selling to take the price lower. There's, a, there's more demand than supply at the lows. OK, it's kind of what you want to see for a reversal. And at the moment. Hell no. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, if anyone is taking my titles as gospel, I apologize. Um, I do think we're forming a bottoming pattern. I do think it's timed correctly, and I do think it's very possible at any point in time the squeeze can, the shorts can get squeezed up. Um, it would mean the same, exactly the same. Nothing changes in that idea. You still have to make... You, this is the four hour time frame high to beat. That's six thousand dollars higher. You still have to go up, make a higher high, and make a higher low, and then take out the high. You still have to do that. Doesn't really matter where you do that, but that still has to happen because we've made a lower low. We're making a lower high. If we go down to make a lower low now on the four hour time frame, 
it would just make it easier to go up because then let's say we go down and put in a lower lower low here and then instead of the higher low being higher high being here it will be here so you then you instead of having to go all the way up to 68,000 you only have to go up to 66 and a half or so and actually what could happen is this another low and that changes things significantly um, because because then this becomes the, the lower high, yeah? If we were to go down, take out the low here, come up, then make another low, take out the, the new low, then now, to change market structure, you only have to get above 62,000 instead of having to go all the way up to 68 or to 66,000. And then it just becomes so much easier to change market structure as you keep on going down and making lower lows because the lower high just keeps on coming down with the price and eventually you change market structure um, and then you can go up now this is the problem what happens when you change my daily market structure well that happened before uh, and i think just ignore it for now you see here in this previous consolidation range um we did we did make a lower low here on the daily time frame uh, this is a lower low that's a lower low on the daily time frame we put in a higher high that was the higher low this didn't take it out this didn't take it out but we made a lower low here okay so that's the first step to changing market structure the daily time frame making a lower low but immediately after you put in a lower low, guess what happened? You changed the four hour market structure to bullish. So immediately after you confirmed a daily bearish, the beginning of a daily bearish market structure, putting a lower low, you immediately changed the four hour to a bullish market structure. And actually the four hour was key. The four hour was very important in what happened next what the daily actually didn't really matter making a lower low in the daily didn't really matter because when the four hour changed to bullish the price was so bullish the, the the sentiment was so bullish that it took out the high relatively easily and this lower low actually then became your higher low so instead of going up to there you could you'd say that was your higher low and these were your higher highs yeah and it's just that's how it went up okay and so this whole thing was just an extended flat consolidation uh it looks like it made a low low on the daily but actually that wasn't the low yeah that wasn't the low um this was the low and actually we had to make a new low here above this previous low that was just an intermediary low and you could see that only after the event when you actually made a higher high and took out the the high at the highs okay so here in the in in the idea that i have now for all of us is just let's just we have to be patient for longing yeah let's not let's not we had a chance yesterday and we lost it okay the chance we this could have easily held gone up and continued yeah, that was correct. You're, this is how it happens. This is how you form bottoms. Yeah, you could have e we could have easily had some sort of Adam and Eve here. See that? It was possible. Um, break the neckline, make a higher high, and then we're off we go. Yeah, it could have easily happened. Um, but actually, what happened was that we lost market structure at the lowest time frames 15 minute or whatever five minute and now the shorts are just entering because they're expecting the lows to be taken here and if we don't see a strong reaction uh then we're probably going for lower probably going for lower okay that's kind of what's going to happen i'm not seeing strong reaction right now i did say it wasn't looking strong and it's not looking strong 
at all. That's a long closing. You see, I was saying the trapped longs will close if the price doesn't go up. And look, that's uh, exactly what's happened. 1.6 million drop in OI. These longs who are, who are here, just they, the reaction wasn't strong enough. And so they rather than just hold on to a long which hasn't really done what it wanted to do, like when you're entering at these levels, you need the price to move in your direction quickly. And if it doesn't move quickly, you have to exit. You have to cut your losses, right? And that's kind of what is it's looking like now. It's looking like weakness. So I'm seeing a lot of weakness. Um, the only thing that gives me a little bit of hope for the bulls is this higher time frame bullish divergence that's forming. So the price is being absorbed. Price is being absorbed. And we just have to see who wins at the lows here probably at the lows we still haven't reached um the previous day point of control or previous day value area low and we still haven't um completely filled this little volume gap here we're almost there but we still or well, maybe we are maybe we filled it now and the other thing to bear in mind when it comes to these um the way the price moves down is we really want to see some aggressive shorts at the lows um and rather than try and catch the low the safest way to catch to enter <coughs> is wait for a five minute market structure change the safer way if you could even break it down to one minute things in one minute always changes quite fast and it changes from bearish to bullish to bearish to bullish really quickly yeah you put in a lower low then you put in a higher high then you make a higher low so you're in bullish one minute market structure and then the price still goes down so it's it's not easy to to trade it's um better um and safer to just wait for the five minute to change first yeah so you can see on the five minute we're making lower lows we're making lower highs you see that um so if we make a lower low here that's the lower high to beat yeah if not that's the high to beat that's the local high to beat and if we make if we start coming up we make a higher high here make a lower low here as soon as we make a higher high we've 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 changed five minute market structure then you can start buying the lows then you can safely start buying the the higher lows and see what happens you know that would be the the the, the, the short to medium term strategy for a reversal is just wait for market structure on the five minute time frame to change back to bullish and then it'll be quite easy to see and then you can long it until it breaks <coughs> until it breaks which is what happened up here it just broke didn't it that, that was the break it happened at 8 8 a.m we had the break of market structure because we were making higher highs higher lows and then break that was the break i i, I usually when this happens i see you get one more attempt you get like a a push back up and then down the fact that it hasn't happened um is probably because a lot of longs are just closing a lot of longs in this range are just closing yeah and uh because it wasn't looking strong yeah you don't expect that to happen what we needed was a test to go up and we didn't get that and actually this last swing failure was detrimental it, it would have been a lot easier to make lower highs here go down put in a higher low here to go up that would have been a lot easier if the bulls had seen that i guess what happened was people were too bullish and when you get sometimes when you get too bullish behavior you make a higher high here but actually you make it really easy for the bears to change market structure um, because then they just have to take out a very close low 
if the bulls can't defend the new high sometimes it's easier to not make higher highs let the price come down to to squeeze the shorts back up so that's why i always say it's always easier to go up if you go down uh um yeah this is looking really bearish this whole price action is looking extremely bearish i can't pretend that it's anything other than bearish all right um even trvl is kind of selling off a little bit <laughs> it's annoying stop selling bye 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 um let me have a look at my other old coins and see what they're doing should i should i should i cut back on them because they're just losers it's hard to know i don't think so i think um when you're looking at the old coins it depends you know it depends on old coins if uh a lot of old coins put in higher highs on the four hour time frame i'll show you one here now quanks uh you see it made a higher high here and this is the four hour time frame that's what i'm interested in okay you put in a higher high this is the low to beat now um so we've put in a lower low we've put in a higher high yeah now what does the price go down and make another low continued bearish market structure it's possible but at the moment we could still hold and it depends and this is this is what i was saying like if you've got people selling at market because they think the price is going down then it will go down yeah uh bitcoin will will with its tidal impact bring the price of the whole market down and what you're looking for now in altcoins is a buy buying strength to hold the price up yeah that's what you're looking for when you're looking at altcoins when bitcoin is correcting try and look at the market scale the market and see which ones are are, are holding yeah like, look this looks quite strong sui see that if i was to now m compare that with bitcoin this is the way to do it um compare it compare coins with each other and mainly with bitcoin and then what you want to be looking for are the strong ones right so in the last four hours of price action bitcoin has been sh showing real weakness which should have a, a depressing effect on the rest of the market and sui look at this they're not selling in fact the price is going up and buying this is what you want to see because it's kind of like absorption but on altcoins instead of on bitcoin bitcoin is going down you'd expect the price of altcoins to go down with bitcoin when you see the reverse behavior where you see the price hold or even better go up then that's strength that's the strength that you want to see and it's good to have a look at now now is a good time to do your research on altcoins right now right now is the best time to do your research you can have a look at all coins have a look at the last three four hour candles yeah and see how that see how the price of your all coins your favorite all coins are behaving with respect to bitcoin and then then make an evaluation of whether you think they're 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 strong or not yeah and it's ultimately it's all about the community and whether they're how bullish they're feeling about their tokens whether they're willing to let their tokens uh, uh sell their tokens at market high end lamb you want to take a look at candle what you want to cake a look at candle <laughs> take it you want me to have a look at cake Um, it's always good to have a look at the price action in comparison to Bitcoin. 
to see if you see divergence yeah the divergences that you're looking for are does the price of your take a look at candle cat I don't know what it means candle cat no not cake candle cat i have no idea what you're saying A new ticker okay I will let me just uh, have a look and just finish off um, what I was on this is what you want to see you know you want to see a lack of selling yeah this for that's why I was interested in this because I see that while Bitcoin is kind of going sideways and down, there's no real selling in this. So this is the bottom. Yeah, I feel like this is the bottom. And when you're when you're comparing other coins, oh my God, what did I do here? Uh, you can see this is following Bitcoin. So there's there's no real strength in this token. Let me look at Vo Voit. Hmm. Unfortunately, Voit is following Bitcoin. You see that. Not as aggressively um, as Bitcoin, but you can see that clearly Void is showing very similar behavior to Bitcoin. Now, if there was enough demand to hold the price of this token, you wouldn't see red candles on Void. You'd see buying, buying, like people are so bullish that when Bitcoin goes down, people are buying. Yeah, and it's the same, like if you look at any token, you can start seeing how people think what people are thinking yeah you can start seeing it like look at whiff rubbish now with these tokens with these meme tokens the best time to buy is just wait for the pump to begin not to buy the red with meme tokens you have to buy the green but you have to buy the green really quickly yeah it's best to just wait for the beginning of the pump to begin after bitcoin finds strength that's the best time to buy these shit tokens, which have no real value at all. Uh, and uh, where you just get, that's what, that's how you make your money on these memes. Yeah. You wait for Bitcoin to find strength. As soon as you see the pump, <laughs> jump in, ape, you ape into these tokens. You don't, even, you don't even really think about pullbacks with these shit tokens. You just they you just ape in, but you have to do the timing is really important, yeah. So you, with these memes, you're not really it's not a game of accumulation necessarily. You could that's one strategy, but it's easy to see it when it starts to uh, push to the upside. Um, I think it's a good place to buy tokens. I'm not like. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't buy tokens um, and it's a bad idea to buy tokens. I think it's a good place for most tokens to buy buy them as long as you don't go all in and you just have a strategy for accumulation. Um, Bitcoin's slowing down. The selling is slowing down. I think SUI was the most, uh, was the strongest that I saw actually um where did it go again lost it and i've lost it doesn't matter oh look at that vow on bit true look at that that's amazing look at that
So you see on this token, it's uh, it's kind of a good example, actually. Um, the price goes up when Bitcoin kind of goes down. When Bitcoin is going down, the price is going. These people have the right idea. So they're buying when Bitcoin goes down. So eventually what happens is when Bitcoin goes up, this will go up a lot. Yeah. When Bitcoin eventually starts going, you see here, Bitcoin is going up. Yeah. And this goes up a lot. It does sell a lot, but that's because it pumped. Yeah. But the idea with these tokens is that you buy the red on your token. And then when Bitcoin finally corrects, then you start getting a pump. Um, candle cat, candle cat. A lot of selling on Slurf. Look at that. Sell, sell, sell. Look at all that selling. Sell, 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 sell. Everyone's selling on Slurf. Like you can see it. Huh? Look. Although here it says, oh yeah, last hour. Look at this last hour. Look at all the selling. This is non-stop selling on Slurf. It's good to see her. It's interesting. Slurf is showing a reversal pattern. Uh, Slurf looks like it wants to go down, actually. I wouldn't mind if it goes down, all the way down here again. One more time. Just lose these lows, go right back down to the 220 cents mark. Um, candle cap, let me have a look. Eight days, huh? How how do you, how do you buy this token? Like, how would I buy it? You got buying it, like really small amounts, hundred dollars. Hundred dollars, really small amounts. You've got some buying. Eighty minutes. You've got a lot of buying and selling here. So, uh, do you know what this is? I can tell you right now. Yeah, what you're experiencing here is accumulation. Uh, so I need a Solana wallet, and then I swap it. Either direct from wallet or through radio. Yeah, okay. it's a bit, of a, bit of a headache. Um, so you see here, what you're experiencing is uh, you know, make a phantom wallet or soft, soft layer. Some other wallets. <laughs> so much effort. Um, yeah, what you're experiencing there here is an accumulation range. The best strategy for these kinds of ranges is dollar cost average, small amounts over a long period of time until it eventually breaks out. You can't be looking at the value when you're dollar cost averaging. You just have to be extremely, extremely patient and wait for it to to, to snap, and it probably will. And the the longer you can accumulate, the bigger your position is going to be. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to just chase the pump when it finally breaks, and so um, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a waiting game. It's a, it's a waiting game, and uh, most of the volume is much higher 
we are underneath the value area low. With this kind of token, I probably would wait because for whatever reason, reasons that you don't know, the price could always do this. Okay. And then you'll miss your buy of the your buy opportunity of the century. Yeah. Um so it's always better to wait for the price to get back into the value area. Um which is here. Roughly there. Okay. And you see that the price is reacting off the, the bottom of that. And in previously it was support. That was this is a reaction. It's a failed auction, but it's a reaction, and there's a proper reaction. That's a little bit of a front run. There's no reason to accumulate here when you can just wait for the price to go up um 20% back test and safely accumulate. The only trouble is that you'll you'll have you'll be buying into the rise. It's always better to accumulate when the price is falling back. But you know, in terms of safety, I think it's just safer to just wait for that level to flip and then just accumulate on the way up. Because the what is what are you trying to do? You're trying to catch the wave to the upside. It doesn't matter if you accumulate lower down or, or slightly higher up. As long as the strategy is the same which is to average in yeah even if you average in as the price is going up you'll still end up with a good average at the lows if the if the consensus or the thesis is that sometime in the future you're going to get like a some kind of parabolic move to the upside okay so i think the strategy here would be much safer to be patient and just and just wait for the the value area low to flip back into support that way you're just avoiding days weeks months however long hours of of lower prices and possible uncertainty who knows no one can so that's the thing you have to go of the mindset that you just you can never know the future and the speculative is speculation isn't it you're you're speculating on an increase in value um, but you also have to be aware that while we're underneath the value area low, the price could also could easily drop, yeah, for reasons that you can't explain. And it's it's not a it's not a rea it's not a reason to sell. The drop would be a reason to buy at lower prices. That's the point, yeah. So you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have to buy because your average is shit. You want to put yourself into a position of strength that you will buy with confidence because you're getting at lower prices and um, because you're getting a really good buy or it wouldn't be hard to just wait for the price to go up in the scale of things in this type these types of meme tokens 20 percent is here or there really you can start accumulating back above the value area high yeah i think that would be a much safer strategy honestly i uh, we're under the value area low no one really knows how low this is going to go and if Bitcoin was to suddenly pull back in a very ugly way, all the way down to 44,000, uh, this could be the buy of the century. Yeah, in that one moment, you could end up, you could end up like this. <laughs> you know, you could end up with, oh, this is minus, so that's not going to work. <laughs> all the way down to zero. Whatever the zero is. Because uh, what's going to happen when Bitcoin dumps, if I'm not saying when, if Bitcoin was to dump, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but all of these people who are, who have bought higher are going to panic. Yeah, they're going to panic. They're going to see their value, whatever it is, millions, thousands, whoever, however value, much value they have in this, they're going to panic sell. That's what happens. And you'll, you could end up <laughs> buying here. <laughs> yeah. So the risk at the moment is to the downside. As soon as we reclaim the value area low, yeah. Um, let me know. I'll start buying too. I'll have to figure out. Uh, now that you've mentioned it, I'll be a fool not to buy with you when uh, when we reclaim the value area low. Yeah, because 
you'll be rich and I'll still be poor. <laughs> so um, let me know and I'll start buying with you. But we ha it has to be, we have to reclaim that level. Okay. And then obviously the, the point of control will be a, a major take profit. Um, how much is the increase in value from the value area low to the point of control? It's not much. It's about 100%. That's a safe play. Take out all of half of the take out half of your profit there, and you've got a risk free trade. Yeah, if you were to enter here on the back test of the value area low or some kind of lower time frame back test, take out half of your position at the point of control, uh, then the rest is a risk free trade. Then you're basically making money for, for nothing. Ball BNB, huh? It has a cult like community. Oh, God, these cults. <laughs> Let's have a look. What did I do? Pitbull, baby bull, Trump bull, bull coin. Must be this one, huh? Bull coin or bull token. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um. You know, the thing about memes is that there really is no value. It's just speculative. I think if you think this is a good one, um, when we start getting back above the value area low, keep an eye on it. The The numbers that you should use is 68. 68 here. Okay. This one doesn't matter. That can be anything. This can be, this is 68. And as soon as we get back above the value area low, let me know. And then, you know, maybe, maybe I can get everyone who's watching the stream to pick up some of this at the, at the reclaim. All right. <laughs> maybe we can all become rich. Who knows? Um, that would be fun. No worries. Uh, it's always good to become, make money in the bull market. All right. That's that. What else is there? I'll have to get a wallet as well. So. The good thing about um, meme coins is you don't care about selling them. That's the good thing. That's what I like about meme coins. There's no emotional attachment. So you can just sell them whenever um, and be done with them. Getting a little bit of a reaction here. This is a good play. This is this is the reaction that I wanted to see. A little, let me have a look at that. Oh, look at this. Wow. See, this is a shorts closing. Look at that. Trap shorts. So it didn't actually go into the the previous day point of control. It actually, look at that. That's a squeeze. See, 1.6 million. Basically, this one, the shorts from this candle were squeezed. You see that? So just so that you realize that this is not healthy, bullish price action, you wouldn't buy that candle. Uh, you wouldn't be looking to buy that candle because it's a short squeeze. What you need to see is long starting to enter. You need to see continuation. So what we would be doing now, like the, the, the trade was valid, I didn't take it. And it's a scalp really, because it hasn't, you've only got, we've only gone up like six, $700 from the swing failure. Um, this is where longs will take profit. If they're in a, if someone long down here, they would take profit because you're coming into a level here, the previous day, uh, this is a 50 fib of the previous day. Now this is quite good. Look, you see longs are entering now into resistance. Interesting. 
So again, I, I'm in the same mind when it comes to like you can long and long and long. And the only way to long is if you're cross margin with zero with a zero liquidation point. That's the only way you can long anything in a bull market. And actually, that's not a bad strategy. Like, let's not think that there's only one way of trading. There's a million ways to trade. And um, probably this in a bull market, what you've got to be thinking of in a bull market is that the the, the demand is out is, is much greater than the supply. Yeah, in a bull market. So we are in a bull market. There's no doubt about that. And you're basically talking about an ocean keeping the price afloat and the pressure is to the upside. And so the safest way, I think, for most people is to have a really low liquidation point on an exchange like Bybit, which doesn't have scam wicks that go all the way down to 10,000. Yeah. And what you would do is you would have a cross margin account and every time it dips you'll be slowly building up a leverage position and then as you as the price pushes up you'll start deleveraging yeah and that will be your profit that would probably be this the, the easiest way for people to trade because they have a very 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 wide stop stop loss yeah and they're never going to get panicked with big dips yeah so even if the price was tomorrow to dip to to 44,000 wherever we've got it as the top of wave two there basically if we do get a like a southern wick down while most people will panic yeah anyone with a cross margin account with a low liquidation point like 20,000 or 15,000 or whatever will buy the dip they'll buy it for they'll buy it because their liquidation point is so low yeah other people will wait and uh, and they'll they'll kind of not really know what to do um and that's really the easiest way to 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 trade the bull market but there's a caveat the caveat is that when you get into resistance you have to deleverage yeah you can't be on a like a 10x leverage down here and then as the price goes up and you were like, oh, we're going to break out. Let me increase the leverage. All of a sudden they go from 10x <laughs> to 20x to 40x to, psh, you know, the idea when you're leveraging is to leverage support with a low liquidation point and deleverage when we, when you go back up into resistance and that's your, the, 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 the that's your profit. Now, I think most people, you see a lot of these big traders, they're trading. Uh, you think they've got short stop losses. They don't. Yeah. They're usually, they're trading on a two or three X cross margin account and they have very low liquidation points and they have no stop loss in the bull market. You don't need a stop loss because you have, um, we're in the waves, we're in the Elliott waves, we're in bullish market structure in Elliott waves. And we know that because of the situation of where we in now, the price can't come underneath uh, wave four in this final wave. That'll be the completion of wave three, wherever wave three completes. And uh, there is a caveat. So let me just explain it to you. And a lot of the, the, these professional traders, they know that they know how this all works. Um, most people might not, but the, the ones who are day in and day out in, uh, in trading, no, it just takes like different people have different risk appetites and have different strategies for how to, to trade when it comes to Elliott waves, the four can't come underneath the one, but that's on every Elliott wave fractal. Yeah. So right now we're in the third wave. Uh, sorry, we're in the third macro wave, the higher time frame third wave. And of the third wave, we're in the fourth wave. So we're in the fourth wave of the third wave. So according to the rules, the wave four cannot come underneath the top of wave one. Yeah. Once you complete wave three, once you complete wave three, to complete wave three, we have to go for one more bullish impulse. Now that doesn't have to go up there. If you 
have a deep correction down there the wave five could just go right back up to there and you'll have a a much shorter wave three okay then technically this wave four can't come underneath the top of wave one that will be thirty thousand or so dollars yeah that's technically correct still in accordance with Elliott waves and technically well this is a matter as long as the three is bigger than the one which it is the five can be whatever um but the, the key to technically knowing the safest place to have a liquidation point would be this macro uh correction after we hit our wave three now if we were to deeply correct now to four we might get a shorter wave five it might not be as bullish i'm still thinking 95 um but you just have to bear in mind that this four can come all the way down back to 30 the top of one here see that so you have the four on the this wave this whole wave is a wave three you have a four that can't come underneath the one to complete the next leg which will be the final wave to complete the wave three but then you have the higher time frame wave four and that can't come underneath the one okay and that would be correct and so therefore when you're thinking about a cross margin account with a liquidation point um bearing this in mind like if i I didn't do I didn't trade this way by the way, but I know how to do it. Um it's quite stressful. I don't like being underwater. Um because you sometimes you have to be underwater a lot because you're building a position and you just have to keep on adding and making sure your liquidation point is lower than areas which where the price can't go. But basically according to what I'm seeing, having a liquidation point a safe one underneath here. I wouldn't have it here either because you can sometimes get wicked out okay and the price closes above a certain level and it still wicks out people so i think honestly i think in the context of where we are now a safe liquidation point would be uh would be somewhere here somewhere underneath this higher time frame for somewhere underneath twenty three thousand would be safe and if people don't want to play any games or risk anything then probably down underneath here probably underneath fifteen thousand. that would be like i don't see that ever happening ever again to be honest with you coming back down to fifteen thousand. i don't see that at all um there's a reason for that and again that's to do with elliot waves um so yeah so that's that's the way that most people some of the bigger players do that J for A, do you think alts will bleed out next few months? Interest rates staying high. Many more coins to cycle and retail not here yet. I, I think it's all to do with Bitcoin. There's no there's no way to ignore that. It's all about Bitcoin, yeah? If we see a bullish impulsive rally to higher numbers, and I think in the context of what I'm imagining. My higher numbers are nine are, are ninety-five. Yeah, I'm thinking ninety-five. Uh I could be wrong, it could be higher, it could be lower. I, I think ninety-five makes sense for me because um because it's it's below a hundred and I think a lot of people will aim for a hundred. Yeah. And then I'm just basing on fib extensions on Elliott waves. And I see that there's quite good, um, there's quite a good confluence at 95, in the same way that there was quite good confluence at 73. You see, 73. We had two lines there, and the price came to 73. Um, and right now we're at a really key level for a back test, which is 63. So that's why I kind of think 63 will hold. If 63 doesn't hold. The next level of interest is going to be 57. Yeah. So I like fibs. Like I like higher time frame fibs, especially when they line up. I think they're the most powerful um levels. The higher time frame fib levels for me are the most the most powerful. And everything else basically comes after 
higher time frame fib on the log scale and look going up i see 95 if bitcoin if the next wave of bitcoin isn't a mediocre wave yeah so let's just say hypothetically the wave four ends now what if you have five waves and we just get back up to the all-time high yeah you have your five bullish that could happen you know like anything can happen you could have a really weak wave five like a really poor one yeah um a lot of people will be caught off guard i think if that was to happen all coins would just really struggle if you completed the wave five just by making slightly a new all-time high and then you ended up with a wave four correction that came all the way back to 33 32 000, whatever yeah i think that's part i think you'd have a terror i think the altcoins would be demolished um personally until until bitcoin found support yeah i, I think it, it wouldn't be fun for the altcoins if that was to happen because for bitcoin to pull back like that you'll have value leaving the market and it wouldn't be pretty so we have to see how the next wave when it begins we have to see how far it goes i'm still thinking that it will get to my target of 95 and also there's a higher target of 127 there where you've got confluence on fibs so it all depends on how impulsive this next five is and i'll be counting the waves the biggest one will be the wave three uh, i'll be counting them so if we end up getting two or three here, um, that would be a good place. Uh, and then you have to see, what if we ended up getting up there in the three and the one only took us to here? What if the one took us to here in one way, if we got up to 95, have a correction, a flat correction, and actually we were heading much higher to 127. So it all depends on how far Bitcoin can move uh in the upwards direction and then the higher it go the better it will be for altcoins yeah because we're gonna get a correction and the higher we go the more space there is for bitcoin to correct without falling underneath the previous all-time high here so yeah i'm just assuming that we go up the higher we go, the more space we have to correct as we go up. And also as we go up, altcoins will go up with Bitcoin as we go up as well. So there's more time, there's more space, there's more room to expand on all of the coins before the pullback. And also it means that if we do get a pullback back down to the previous all-time high, that will be really bullish, like to consolidate in price discovery, getting ready for the final the fifth and final wave however high it takes us no one can predict that um then it's more bullish and therefore this is the most bullish situation to go higher and to consolidate in price discovery for the final wave yeah that would be the most bullish situation for all coins if we if we if we suddenly get a really bad pullback and our fifth wave is is weak that completes the wave three back at the all-time high. And then we have this long drawn out correction over the summer, which takes us back down to 30K. Yeah, so you, there's two different scenarios which could play out. And one is good, one is bad, All right? So I think, I'm not thinking that way. I think it's very unusual it's, for that to happen. I think there's a lot of interest in altcoins right now. And I think most of these, like the crypto survive the crypto market honestly even though people like there's a lot of bitcoin maximists out there um the market the crypto the web3 the crypto market has grown because of all the altcoins not because of bitcoin yeah bitcoin has led the way and they pioneered it and also they provide bitcoin provides the initial capital for the growth of the market but all of the innovation all of the excitement all of the development everything is in the altcoins yeah 
uh, and also all the applications, the real world applications, the financial applications, etc. It was all in the altcoins. So I think if the altcoin market collapse, like we need the alt for the future, Bitcoin needs the altcoin market to be strong because that will create the future. That creates the future. Yeah, that makes the future stronger. It'd be detrimental if we have a bull market where the altcoins are demolished and don't don't succeed. I think that would be detrimental for the whole industry, um, for for the reasons that I said. It just uh, there'll be then there'll be no growth in the next for the next wave, because a lot of these altcoins are making um, they raise capital through increased valuations, yeah, and then they use that capital to build over the course of the next bear market for the next bull market, and so they need to raise that capital through increased valuations, and that comes from the Bitcoin bull market. And that's why the, 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 there's continued growth. That's why Solana is doing so well now, because in the last bull market, it had a massive increase in valuation. And they've obviously used that, uh, the, 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 the funds that they've raised to build their ecosystem, to build, sponsor, collaborate, you know, all that kind of stuff that happens when, you, when you're able to raise uh, significant amounts of value. That's just how it, it's just understanding how everything works. Once you understand how things happen, then it, the mystery of the markets kind of diminish. I actually, looking at the weekly candle and Bitcoin, I think we're in a really good place to buy. Often what you see is the price comes back to halfway down the wick of the previous week, find support and go right back up. So I think this is like the moment... <laughs> Yeah, this is a really good place, like, um, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fib pool. I'm going to do two things. Um, I'm going to change it to bars or hollow candles. No, bars. I'm going to do a fib pool on this previous week on the wick, just the wick. That's the wick. And then also I'm going to do a volume range pull on the previous week. And that's the three-day chart. Let me do the week. What have I done? Get rid of that. It's almost three. I've got to go soon. I'm going to do a, a fib pull on the wick. I'll do it the other way around, actually, so I get just the wick. Um, so we're at the golden pocket of the previous week's wick right now. It's a really good place. Then the other thing I'm going to do is a, a volume pull on the previous week. Okay, so that's the previous week volume. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, let me go back to the four hour time frame. Change it to candles. Okay. What happened to my range pool? There it is, but I can't see it. Right, never mind. Oh, yeah. yeah, so what's interesting about the wick is you can see the fibs are actually being respected just on the wick. So we've just lost the 50% of the wick. That's the golden pocket of the wick. So this is just a fib pull on the wick of the previous weekly candle. And you can actually see how the price is moving between the fib levels just on the wick of the previous week. Um, it's going to be it's going to be quite easy to see strength return. 
after we put in a low here yeah because the, the the idea is that we finally find support in the week of the previous week um and as soon as we start reclaiming levels what you want to see is you want to see the levels reclaim 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 to go up that's what you want to see after we lose levels we want to see levels uh reclaimed as we go up so at the moment like you wouldn't buy now because we're you see we're underneath the 50 percent mark of the previous week weekly wick candle the wick of the candle and um it'll be easy to see once the price starts making its way back up um, maybe the hour is better they see the two hour it looks like it's it looks easier to see or maybe the hour And so the, the idea is that you want the price to be moving up and then the place to buy is as the price finds acceptance above each of these kind of fib levels. Yeah, that's the kind of what you want to do. You, rather than trying to buy into weakness, what you really want to do is look into buy into strength as the price starts reversing. That would be a better strategy. All right, um, so, so the profit is unrealized profit and that's just normal in a, in a market. It goes, you know, you, you've got, um, so Jay's saying um, he has some profit that's come down over a bit over the last few weeks. Still trying to figure out if it's best to sit in BTC at this point or alts. I think um, I'm in two minds about this as well. Okay. I know that if Bitcoin runs, we could see a flow of value into going to Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but also at the same time, I can, I can also see that on Bitcoin dominance, five percent above us, we're into resistance. Between four, five, six, whatever percent, we're into resistance. Yeah. I don't really know what that means in the context of whether Bitcoin goes up fast or not. Because usually, when Bitcoin is moving quite fast, uh, Bitcoin dominance goes up quite fast too. And we see here in previous examples when Bitcoin is moving um this is january this is march this is june and it's bitcoin it's slow it's slowed down recently in the last few months because the altcoins have been catching up and naturally that value has come from the increase in value in bitcoin but bitcoin moved first and alts have been catching up with a few exceptions, so like Injective, maybe, or uh, what was the other one called? Casper, or whatever, or maybe even Solana. I think if Solana was low as $10 or whatever, and that's been, some certain coins have been keeping up with Bitcoin, uh, whereas most coins have been following after Bitcoin moved first. And so usually what happens in the market is Bitcoin moves first, okay? Bitcoin moves first, and what you'll get is you'll get a lot of tokens lose value to Bitcoin um, temporarily. They always usually recover. This is ETH, um, but they, they they there is a loss of value. So let's just say, look, look, this is TRVL against Bitcoin. It's looking quite resilient. But you see from the first rally in January, of uh it was february january february you see february had a nice explosion and then as bitcoin started to move it pretty much lost most of its value into bitcoin that's because bitcoin was moving trvl uh in that whole time didn't go up it actually went down and mainly because the value was in bitcoin and it was all everything was going into bitcoin TRVL has only really started kind of picking up against Bitcoin since January. Yeah. 
and that's basically when the spotlight has been off bitcoin and has been on altcoins so in that whole period of time it would have been better to be in bitcoin and what's in what you could argue is like with a token like this would you sell into bitcoin i i wouldn't sell this into bitcoin because looking at the overall range we are still relatively speaking in the lows and also we're above the point of control i wouldn't sell into that if you were in a token which was at the highs maybe outside of the value area like this maybe you would sell a little bit into bitcoin because there's there's there's, there's a lot of room for maneuver to go down as bitcoin goes up so i think you just have to look at your coins against bitcoin if they do have um, pairings let's say it's solana for example I mean, Solana is coming into support against Bitcoin. At the moment, there's an SR flip here at play. And um, you've got this previous consolidation range, which is back tested as support. You have a historic SR flip from this pivot here. Uh, which we're at now you lose that you have this slightly lower one which can't be lost at any circumstances so you could end up in a little bit of range before something happens but um you know context is really important if you lose if you're losing levels on a bitcoin pair as bitcoin starts pumping you definitely would sell into it if you if this suddenly goes like that why would you hold on to that you would sell into Bitcoin. Do you know what I mean? Because you've just lost the major level against Bitcoin as Bitcoin is pumping. And there's a reason why you're losing levels because people are selling their Solana into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is pumping. And even though the drop may be temporarily, temporary, and it could easily bounce back, I mean, you wouldn't go all out and all in, but you could sell a little bit and make profit on that in terms of value in terms of what the hell what the hell is this shit just randomly um so i wouldn't i mean i wouldn't sell into support um you'd be looking to sell into resistance the candles the candle formations are quite bearish uh, and actually the place to sell <laughs> was when we lost the neckline of that hat of that a little bit of a hat or a, a church or whatever you call that got a couple of couple of days of back test the confirmation was this uh, daily sell you see how it closed underneath there there's plenty of opportunities to sell into into bitcoin after we lost that pivot so even just just looking at the candles you can see but as long as you're looking horizontally, yeah, it, it really gets a bit confusing when you start looking at things with trend lines and the channels and fans and all this kind of stuff. And then you add indicators to that and it becomes even more confusing. Yeah. You just kind of look at things horizontally and just break it down into rectangles. It becomes a lot easier to see how the price moves effectively the price is moving from one range to another range this is like a bigger range this whole thing's a range this whole thing's a range right you can break the range up into sections yeah so there's this lower section underneath this line maybe a mid middle a middle section maybe we're in the middle part coming to the bottom there's a top part and the price will move in between these ranges and if you lose the bottom of the range just kind of similar you've got to look at the price action and see what's similar to the past you get something similar you have a candle closed down there you kind of can't get back in at least you have you have a really easy invalidation like if you're bearish you could say well i'll sell 
a percentage and then if I'm right it goes down I've made money and if I'm wrong I'll only lose a, a small amount on the small amount that I've risked and if you have that kind of approach uh, even if it goes down even though your overall value decreases you're still making a little bit of money on the trade and that's uh, that would be that gives you that kind of good feeling when the price goes down a good call on the take profit <laughs> 15 minute red five minute into the pd valve okay <laughs> well yeah Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, so um, why was it good to take profit? Because um, the move up was a short closing. There was no strength in the in the rise. There was no longs opening. Yeah. So it was just a short closing. And actually what you can see is that a long open. That was a long opening there. Um, increasing OI reducing prices you had some shorts opening sorry shorts opening and then these are longs closing closing so actually when you start seeing uh longs closing it's good to, good to short <laughs> really and i thought it'd come back into this level this is the level of interest for me at the moment um the price action is looking extremely weak we're still not getting any any meaningful longs enter. And I think usually you get that after a bullish day. You get, the, it's like the longs, the people who were bullish yesterday are bearish today. And yesterday the, the bulls had their chance to shine and today the bears have their chance to shine. Yeah. And I think that's what we're experiencing right now. We, we're just getting uh, the, the bulls have flipped to bearish. And they're just kind of seeing if they can take the price down lower. Uh, and that's kind of what seems to be happening right now. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to long today at the moment until we see some real strength return to the market. And you see, we've just made a lower low. Bearish market structure continues. Um, there's no longs to be had. We're not seeing any meaningful reaction from any of these swing failures. We're into a, a key support level. There's still no reaction. There's still nothing. There's no lot. Not longs aren't entering. That's what's happening. You're not getting anyone long right now. No longs. Okay. Um, if we don't get a good reaction off these lows, uh, then we could we let's see what happens. You know, like uh, I don't really want to call for another liquidation event. What's the, but anything can happen. <laughs> if you get uh, someone with a really big position, dump their, mar dump their, dump their, dump their tokens at market or get liquidated because their liquidation point is underneath these lows. Probably the low of interest is this one here. Um, where is it? Not that one. This one, yeah, this previous week low. I think that's the target for the bulls right now. Uh, for the bears. That's where they want to take the price. Uh, we had a little bit of reaction here. Let me just have a look in it and see. Uh, it looks like uh, there's a bit of taking profit. You see that? But I can't see longs enter. That's the key. So you want to see longs enter and you're not getting any longs enter. There's no point longing if no one else is longing. <laughs> don't long if i if you start seeing people long long you can't see other people longing don't long if anything uh i can see people shorting so every time we go up it's probably good to short probably uh that's probably what i'm seeing that was actually a really good place to short uh, all right um, I am still thinking of longing, but I'm not looking to long until I see a sign that gives me the confidence to long. That prevents me from prematurely longing, longing too early. 
and I'm just waiting for strength. So the strength I need to see is a reaction. The reaction I need to see are people longing and sh big shorts starting to close. Once I see that kind of reaction, uh, I can clear, it's clear to see the, the bullish divergence. It's very clear to see that we're still experiencing bullish divergence. So there are big orders limiting, lo limiting the drop, yeah? So I don't think we're gonna see a crazy drop because we, uh, I can see that the, the, the price is being absorbed by people who are just trying to fill their bags at whatever price, just by placing limit orders, probably larger institutional players. But in for, for, for small me, I'm not gonna play that game of trying to catch the low. I'm just gonna wait for strength to, to, to give me a sign, yeah? Um, and I can't see anything right now. Nothing. And it's actually good. We want to see shorting. Like, this is what I'm kind of trying to explain. How do you go up? You need to squeeze the shorts. So the more shorting that happens, the, the more bullish this becomes. Yeah? Because eventually what's going to happen is we're going to squeeze the whole lot. Uh, and that's when you start getting these big candles because suddenly they start getting squeezed and they start closing their 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 positions at market value yeah and what you have when we've short squeezes what usually happens is it happens all at the same time it happens very quickly all right um but you have to see we, we're not in that circumstance yet because i can't actually see any shorts closing <laughs> all right um that's the that um i think unless there's anything else your question i hope it answered with the btc um look at this binance coin against bitcoin is holding up very nicely very nicely indeed binance coin is very strong right now uh look at that okay uh binance is showing a lot of strength against bitcoin so yeah it depends on the coin yeah would you sell this no you wouldn't sell this because you're back into the value area um you basically change market structure potentially we've just made a high high on the weekly time frame against bitcoin you see that that's quite bullish so we're in the value area against Bitcoin. Uh, and we're in, we're like on the weekly time frame. Binance coin is consolidating. Look at that. That's like a consolidation range above a previous high. It's looking quite strong. Um, when you compare that with um, something else like Solana, it's very different behavior. See that? Very different. And the reason why is because Solana is already pumped. So uh, there's going to be a big difference between tokens that have pumped and tokens that haven't really pumped. Okay. The only exception, I guess, may be ETH. Uh, ETH is bleeding against Bitcoin. But honestly, at this stage, you're so low. Even if you do get a, a pullback lower, it's already dropped so much. That I think it'd be crazy to sell ETH to Bitcoin, even if we do go down. Um, it's probably better at these levels to buy ETH. Just keep on buying rather than sell. Because the, tr the, the, the risk now, as the lower we go, the risk is to the upside. Yeah. Uh, even though there's a large gap underneath us. You know, this is a two year consolidation range and we're finally back at the lows of the range looking to go up in the bull market. Now, no one can predict the future, but again, like you're holding higher time frame Fib levels, even though I have an SR flip here based on that pivot, the Fib is much more important. So this 382 is significantly more important than a arbitrary SR flip on a previous price action. Yeah. The FIB levels are magic and you should never ignore them and they just work uh, on the log scale from from pivot to pivot. 
fibs are amazing um it's always better on the just do it on the higher time frame you'll be fine all right let's have a look at bitcoin again i think i'm gonna end the stream soon as well no strength here now look we've taken the lows now it's looking pretty miserable right now um Uh, there's no reaction off those lows. Let me have a look at, um, oh, look at that. Just terrible. That's closing. That's long's closing. No reaction off those lows. Um, no one really should be <laughs> longing right now. And no one should be shorting right now. Um, it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty bad for Bitcoin. I think a lot of people got stopped out. We've made a lower low um, on quite a lot, lot, quite a many, quite a bunch of time frames. This is the low that we're going for right now. Okay, so it's like literally slice through the golden pocket, no reaction. How does that translate onto other tokens? Let's quickly have a look. They're all having a little bit of a pullback. You see TRVL is pulling back. Um, what's Slurf looking like? Slurf is pulling back. I mean, Slurf is quite resilient, to be honest with you, because you had this buy up. And so that's the point that I was making before. Um, the best time for people who are into their token, into their altcoins, if you start seeing buying when Bitcoin is dumping, that's a really good sign. Um, yeah or if you just see the price hold yeah so if you see the price hold um then that's a good sign i mean that looks like you see some tokens also preempt bitcoin and they're like early warning systems like they dump before bitcoin and so sometimes you can see the future just by looking at coins because you've got traders trading these coins and they they're shorting bitcoin but they'll also sell their altcoin and they, they'll do it at the same time, but they're, they're early on Bitcoin. They'll do their altcoin before everyone else. Uh, and on Bitcoin, they'll do it before everyone else. But because Bitcoin is a much larger market cap, it moves later. And so sometimes you can see, if you see some altcoins start dumping before Bitcoin, then sometimes that can give you a little bit of hint um, that Bitcoin wants to fall back. Look at SUI. It's looking quite stronger. Yeah, there's someone bought there. That's kind of what you want to see. That's like a whale has just bought that. That's a whale. So they just bought while Bitcoin is pulling back. That was last hour. Now you're getting a little bit of pullback, but it just means that the pullback on SUI isn't that, isn't that deep. The correction isn't that deep. And there's a reason why, because on, on this token, uh, I've got this higher time frame harmonic, which is completed although it kind of i had it like there at the b it would probably you could say it went all the way down to there um and it completed there so really you know that's quite bullish let me have a look at bitcoin again all right yeah it's really pulling back well, let's just hope it goes and makes a, a lower low and let's just be done with this correction. I think that's what people are looking forward to now. So let's uh, let's keep an eye on these um, these levels. I'm going to put an alert on this lowest one. This is my uh, area of interest for taking a long. And if I see the right reaction, I'm going to take a nice juicy fat long. If I see the right reaction. Uh, 
right. It looks like the bears are right. <laughs> we are going down. Well, Yeah, you see the on the on when you're looking at like uh, when I'm looking at TRBL, see on the on the buy bit, more selling. See that it's like selling. It's a bit of selling pressure. Um, that's that's the problem right now on buy bit. You've got a little bit of selling happening. Slurf is looking quite resilient. Even though that whale sold. <laughs> but everything could change if Bitcoin really dumps. So it's always good to keep an eye on uh, Bitcoin. Okay, so we're into this lower level now. How low could this go? Well, um, We might still get a swing failure and then just to go back up to test that would be a where the shorts will load up it depends on if shorts take profit now or not there's quite a large volume there's no swing failure so even if the price was to now try and work its way up you kind of wouldn't enter necessarily you'd be looking for higher it'd be easy to see if we start coming up and then finding support yeah um so really the the key to this is just letting the market do its thing uh, and not kind of trying to micromanage things let let it all play out and then decide where things calm down a little bit uh, i mean look it looks like we're heading for this low so It's a short day, huh? Lots of shorting. Uh, 
maybe what was going to happen is we're going to take the low of the previous week and come right back up that's very possible all the way down so the weekly is looking like take the low all the way down and then come all the way back up that would look really bullish yeah it'd be look it would look so bullish if right this week we went all the way down as far as possible and then ended up with a green candle like somewhere up there so you end up with a, like a green candle with a really powerful wick with really good volume No, bro, I'm not shorting or longing. I'm just here commentating. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go soon because my uh, right arm is hurting me and this table is a little bit high. This chair is a little bit low. We have a look at this harmonic. Oh, look at that. We've literally lost. Yeah, we knew that already. So we've lost those levels. So this is what this is the level to long, actually. Look, five, seven, four, four, two. That's that's the level. I think that's where we're going now. If we don't get a swing failure of these lows. Yeah. That's basically where we're heading. We're at a bull market channel right now. I mean, this is a good place to hold. This is the bull market midpoint from the previous bull market. Um, really, we do have to hold here. You kind of don't want to lose that channel. It's a higher time frame channel. Um, this is like a really good place to buy because even if the price goes down, if there's going to be a bull market, the price has to come back here because it's a it's at a support line. But you obviously, obviously, we want to see a reaction. I thought there was a reaction before. This could be the second test. And if we this is high volume node lower down. So that would be good to come down to there, swing failure and then come back up. That would be really good. And maybe, maybe the, uh, that BTCD has got to do with Bitcoin dropping. That's kind of what I'm thinking now. Maybe we get one more push with a, with a drop. Um, literally lost all our levels so that was a bit earlier i thought it was a bit early 
I thought it was. I thought it was a bit early. Should have been yesterday. Um, Oh, no, that's a map of it. No, this is correct. Huh? That's your shark. There, David. That's, uh, that's tonight. Thursday at 1 a.m. Yeah, that's that's the really good place to buy. It's into the golden pocket as well. From this pivot to the all-time high. A Ape is longing like crazy, by the way. I'm getting his messages. I haven't forwarded them because it's pointless. Because he keeps on longing. I know why he's longing, because we're at the 50% mark. I'm going to long. He's longing, huh? Let me just see the, uh, there it is. There's a lot of volume came into these lows. Uh, I wonder if they're going to get trapped. That's, that's good to see. That's a short closing. You see that? That's liquidation bubbles, shorts closing. That's really good to see. Um, yeah, you could you see they could probably long that. Take a long on that. The problem is it's already pumping so high. This is a real gamble. I don't like I don't like doing that. Catch the falling knife time. I don't really like it. I wouldn't do it. Um the best way to long is look for a little reversal. Uh yeah, you have one there. You can long that. And you have a little invalidation. So the reason to long here would be short closing, a big volume into this higher time frame FIB level. Uh, that's it really. There's no other reason. It's uh, extremely speculative. <laughs> it is a good place, you know. It's not a bad place to long. And uh, yeah, I took a long just for shits and giggles. Look at that volume coming in. Um, you gotta you gotta buy buy the blood. <laughs> it's just kind of scary because this is good. 
See that uh, longs closing liquidation? This is a big short closing. That's kind of what you want to see. You want to see short close. <coughs> if short closes, it means that they're not really looking for lower. Yeah, that's like a big take profit for them. That being said, <laughs> we're at the underneath the PD low and the weak low. So not the best place to long either. Um, but we did get a little bit of a reaction from the 50% mark. Um, so it's always good to, I like to see reactions in price. Leverage to the hill, long to the max. <laughs> leverage a bit more Let's see if we can squeeze these shorts market long just push the price up <laughs> just for fun make sure you take profit <laughs> david saying big buying the balances in the previous five minute candle uh, yep there are buying balances We're up back, back up at the PD Park, PD Val. Let's see if we can squeeze these shorts. Uh, you have like a... That's what we want to see, a little bit of a short squeeze right back up to <laughs> wherever we're going to go. This is a swing failure at the moment. We're back above the previous um, previous lows. So if, if we're going to see longs enter now, that's key. If we don't see longs enter now, that's going to look really poor. Yeah. And we're not seeing longs enter. Not many anyway. What they need to do is enter so that they can squeeze the shorts. Uh, but we're not seeing that right now. See, look, instead we're getting short center. Oh, there's some long imbalances. There's some buying there. But that was a that was like a short closing, that candle. Well, that's nice. So it's good to, I'm happy that I'm in along and uh, these shorts are really closing, huh? Yeah, the shorts are closing. You see, when you see the liquidation and then the shorts are closing, <laughs> it's always a good sign. Always a good sign to see that. Uh, Lots of volume at the lows. Look at that. Good volume. Uh, there is a bit of a reaction here. Think about it. 
we are kind of back above these previous lows. Let's just see if uh, how this pans out. Uh, we're at the 50% of this fib that I've got. So we're into support now. There's no reason to think that fib is going to break until it breaks. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. You can't just go through fib lines, higher time frame fib lines. Yeah. Uh, you're going to see some kind of reaction. At the very least, you'll have a chance to exit if things go south. Yeah, you'll see. Because if you don't start going up now, well, you'll just kind of keep on hugging the line until you probably do go down. Yeah. So you got to be keeping an eye out for whether the price hugs the line or not. So here, I'll give you an example. Um, you see this 382? It was a good place to long. Uh, but look, it, hug, it kind of hugged the line once and then twice and then it came and came underneath. So just be careful of that kind of behavior. If you see that the, the reaction is limited and you're not getting a, a strong enough reaction. And effectively, what you want to do now, you've swing failure. We swing failure these lows here. Yeah. You want to kind of squeeze up at the very least take out this pivot here that's what you want to do you want to take out that pivot um liquidate those and then that's a good take profit for another attempt at the lows that's kind of what you want to do or get stopped out and that's your invalidation but it's a good place to be stopped out because it's on the other side of a major fib line yeah so it require a little bit of strength in the down to the downside to take out the liquidity from that new uh, pivot that's been put in. And also look at the volume in this red candle. The last time we had a similar volume was this red candle. And, you know, we had a, we had increase in green followed it and look what happened to the price. Yeah. So potentially we could experience the same thing here. You could experience something very similar. Um, with the volume that's involved if the price now kind of does that now then we'll have to see what happens does it come right back down you know like we have to see all right so i'm in the long now <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens should i long more <laughs> should i buy some old coins should I sell my altcoins? Have a look at PD Val. Yeah, if it goes up to PD Val, I'm gonna <laughs> long again. Take it all the way up to PD EQ or VAR, PD VAR. Look at that. That's uh that's a big increase in OI. It's balanced all the size. It's actually there's quite a lot of shorts that entered just now. Uh, that's quite interesting. So obviously people are still bearish. Um, this could be a game changer for, for the move up. Uh, if a long enters now, they can squeeze that short right up. Because that short is at a really good position for a tight invalidation. If now the price was to go up above that short entry, that short will just close at market and the price will go up. Um, it all depends on this next five minutes um, if the if the shorts continue or if a short closes. Um, that's the question. You might get a short close now because it is back above the PD previous day low. So if someone who's short thinks, OK, well, this isn't looking as bearish as I thought, we've just basically swing failure 
it's a swing failure of the previous day low. That's what we're experiencing, potentially experiencing now. If someone is short and they're feeling that this might be it, they could easily close their short at market right now. And then the, the, the short before it will be squeezed up because they won't be, they won't, they'll have a really tight invalidation. They won't want to, they anyone who shorts at the PD point of control is now expecting the price to continue going down. They're not expecting the price to go up. So we're kind of in a nice uh, kind of area where we could have an a decisive move to the upside uh, or to the downside now. I think it's likely that like the, for me, the balance right now is to the upside simply because a big shorts have closed some longs have entered. We're in a, we kind of swing failure the previous levels. Uh, we've had a liquidation bubble. Okay. The question now is do longs enter shorts are entering. You can see that I can see shorts are entering. Uh, the question is do longs enter. Uh, if they don't, <laughs> then I'm going to have to close out with a small loss, <laughs> but that's life. You win some, you lose some. Um, J for a joining me in it. Oh God, not financial advice. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Whatever happens, um, you have to manage your risk size and your invalidation is this, this low that's been put in, right? You don't go crazy. You have any risk a small amount. That's your invalidation. The price could always swing failure and come back up again. That's the problem. So you may want a slight, slightly longer, slightly wider invalidation. That has to be um, position sized correctly because sometimes what happens is you'll get one more push down. It'll kind of go down by a couple of pips and come right back up. So if you have a really tight invalidation, uh, that could happen. You'll get stopped out and the price is still going up. You have to be aware of that. So usually what I'll have is kind of slightly away from the low. Even if that's my invalidation, I just want to make sure that if that was to happen, I don't get stopped out because that can ha that can always happen. Yeah. So you just got to be aware of that. Uh, and it's just gambling, isn't it? It's just it's calculated gambling. Uh, you risk a percentage and you're trying to win one percent or two percent. <laughs> and see what happens. Uh, I want to see longs enter, honestly. Um, sorry, I didn't show the chart, which I was showing the, the low that I said here, look, sometimes you want to kind of slightly away because sometimes the price comes back down, it pips it by one or two pips and then comes right back up. You got to be aware of that. It looks bearish, but that can happen. Yeah. Just to punish the early longs because if if you have an extremely tight invalidation, that can happen. So I usually have a slightly wide one, slightly wide, just in case. And then obviously if it goes down and does that, then you just, you, you get stopped out. If you're still bullish, you have to enter long. Um, you still have to re-enter. That's the problem. So it's painful. It's better to try and not get stopped out if you can, but then also you want, you need an invalidation in case you're wrong. So that's the problem. You just, it's hard to know. See, look, these longs are closing. That's not a good sign. Doesn't mean I'm going to close. Um, because right now, even though longs are closing short, another short could close. Yeah. We've had a liquidation event here. We've had a couple of liquidations. Um, you see now that's longs entering, see that? Price is going down. That's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, it's good that longs entered. It's not good that the price went down when they entered. <laughs> I can see longs coming in.
I mean, this is the area, really. This is an area of interest. It can either go up or down, but uh, it's better than longing the highs. <laughs> A 1 million increase in OI. These imbalances are holding out, huh? Look at that. Look at these imbalances. Oh, that's not a good sign. Now the dominant order size is shorting. So actually half is more shorting here than longs. It's an increase in OI. So... It's kind of what you want to see. You want to see shorts enter the lows, but you also want to see them squeezed. So this is the question. What happens next? That's quite a large volume, no? 20 million, 25 million, 28 million. That's quite a large volume at the lows. So if we don't get a short close now, that's not going to be good. I think that's what we want to see. Uh, the good thing is that we're coming to the end of the candle. So in four minutes, we're going to have a, a new candle. So that's also a good place for um, profits to be taken on brand new candles, uh, brand new hourly candles. So not the 15 minutes, which is what I was looking at. So this could be a good place for the price to go up. Um, the question that the question is, um, I mean, look, it's a really good place. You've got that midpoint of the bull market channel and you've got the 50 fib, which is a 50% range of this pivot to that high. Yeah. If it, if, if this fails, then the next kind of area of interest is going to be lower down yeah that will be the next area so hopefully we don't get stopped out and it goes up <laughs> we just need the hour candle to close now in two minutes So far, so good. I think it's a good time to uh, <laughs> buy spot on all your coins right now. No, not financial advice. Um, it could go lower. So, which literally what you're trying to do now is catch, catch a uh, catch the bottom. <laughs> it's kind of fun, but at the same time, um, if you over leverage or if you over risk, it it can be quite painful. All right, so. We've got a bit of shorting here, huh? Um, that's quite interesting to see. I'm not quite, sh quite sure why people are shorting here. They should really be thinking about longing, not shorting. Uh, it's a good place to long. So one minute, the candle opens, uh, closes and opens. So let's just see if we have a reaction with a new candle. It's just open now. Uh, some shorts are closing. Come on. We need more shorts to close. <laughs> huh. That's pretty, pretty poor. Oh, oh, no. Oh, that's quite the volumes dropped off. Go to the one minute.
some longing, huh? There's a little bit of longing here. See that? Bit of longs coming in. So that is a definite change of behavior. I don't know if you were noticing from before, but we weren't seeing longs come in at all. Whereas now, there's a few longs coming in. So there's a little bit of speculation at this level right now. And I think that's mainly because of this liquidate these liquidations that we've experienced and the increasing volume, the shorting into a a major fib level. Yeah, that's what you see. These are longs coming in now. See that? Uh, and it helps that the new candle has just printed uh, and it helps that the candle didn't close underneath that 50% mark. So what we need right now is to take out that high and uh, at the very least we need to kind of confirm a one minute time frame market structure change. That would be really nice. All we have to do is take out that high. Then we've got a, a nice uh, one. At least we have a one. I mean, it starts with the one minute, right? Start with the one minute and work your way up. Uh, that's what you want to experience. This isn't good. We just had uh, a long close. <laughs> uh, but we're having longs enter too. Or is that short? It could be a short. It's hard to tell. No, I think that was a short. No, no, the OI dropped. So, sorry, yeah. That was a long that just closed. Not always a good sign. That's just a short that just entered. Again, it's not, it's never a good idea to short the lows. So that's, that's very, it's, it's very risky, but it could, it could pay off, you know, because the market looks bearish someone it feels like it could go lower they could short the lows um but i would i don't think it's a good idea it's uh it's quite risky because you get squeezed but i mean look it was it could pay off let's see if we don't get enough longs coming then it could pay off but i mean where would they take profit that's the problem they'd have to take profit at this local low here so it's a very small reward to risk. A little bit of indecision at these lows at the moment. Uh, a few shorts, there were some longs. And right now it's kind of gone flat a little bit. These are longs closing. Oh, that's not good. What we want is shorts to close. I think it, we'll have to see how the price reacts if we hit that low once more time. I think that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Uh, and then we'll have to decide whether to, to exit at break even, get stopped out or let it continue. Now, what you think, what you got to think of is that longs closing, pulling the price down, is not strong price action uh, to the downside. If these if these were shorts, that would be very different to longs closing. So the longs usually close if they come in late. They don't 
they don't like to be trapped underwater uh, and so they'll close with a small loss but if you start seeing short center and start trying to push the price down that'll be even more concerning yeah um that's what i'm more concerned about short centering because eventually what will happen is the price will come low enough and more shorts will close uh There's some longing there. That's good. At least the longing is continuing. Uh, you want to see longs continue. You don't want to see longs to, the longing to stop. I'm not seeing any local divergences at all. Um, No. I mean, it depends if if the bear, if the price action is extremely bearish, then that usually when you see liquidation bubbles, you see the price reverse. So the price usually reverses. So if the price doesn't reverse, if we get a situation like this. Usually it reverses, but that was like twenty minutes. Um, let's go back to where we are now. That was a big reversal there. If we don't see that, then it's just really strong sell pressure. Just got to be patient. Yeah, David's correct. There's less volume on this second attack of the lows. So if the volume is dropping off, um, maybe what needs to happen is we need another candle to print let me see which one would be interesting this candles formations aren't aren't strong at all though that's the problem this is this is actually um we're probably going to take the low. <laughs> I can't. I can't say we're not. But I don't think there's going to be much strength in this swing failure. Uh, I'm wondering if we do that. Anyway, if this fails, then the next area of interest is here slightly lower down that'll be like one attempt then we have a second attempt lower down it's quite a lot of volume though huh? so
it's quite interesting because a lot of longs like they were all liquidated so this must be i mean if it's not longs like i mean the price coming down um I'd be interested to see if uh, if we get another big take take profit at these loads. According to a Twitter post, uh, WorldCoin Sam Atman's eye scanning crypto project announces its own blockchain. I'll paste the link here for you guys. Oh, the, the OI increased a little bit. definitely going to take that low there's a few liquidation bubbles here small ones new candle down and up it's struggling <laughs> just to get to that last little centimeter of distance there now a short has to close really otherwise <laughs> otherwise that's not going to be strong i can see the oi is dropping Increasing OI now. There you go. All right, OI just went up. Long is just entered. Do you see that? I just had a big long into there.
to that. Shorts have to close. That's the only way this is going to work. It's not just enough for <laughs> longs to enter. You have to squeeze the shorts. Otherwise, it's uh, this long will get trapped again. It's a little bit of battle at this uh, at this level, actually. It's interesting to watch. Uh, it'd be nice if it goes up. Yeah. Look, plus two point five million. Dominant order size. So look, so a lot of longs came in here uh, on leverage. You see that? So that's uh, that's a good sign. You want to see that. There's a few uh, imbalances here as well. You see, these are order imbalances. That means that um, there wasn't any short orders to fill them. It took the low by forty dollars. I did say you can't have tight stops on these lows you've got to be careful because <laughs> you know what's happening <laughs> um obviously the best trade is to take that sfp of this local low <laughs> but i mean no one can predict that but let's just see like the trade isn't over yet we're still not out of the woods we still have to go up uh, you see the price is struggling on this red order imbalance so we just have to fill those order imbalances and push up I miss your stop by three dollars. Well, don't talk too soon. You can still get stopped out. You know how it works once, twice, three times. You know how it is. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> it's going down <laughs> what the hell <laughs> there's a there's a bunch of selling going on up I, I can't see it but it's happening so if i look at the one minute time frame long's closing huh that was the big buy there was another one here that was 1 million. That was 1.5 million. There's a lot of longs that opened here in this level. So it's not the, it's the right area because you can see that there are big longs opening. Yeah. So that gives you the confidence. Once you see that there is longs, open, at least you're longing in the right area. The question is, is it enough? Is it enough to turn the price? And effectively what, what these longs are trying to do is squeeze the shorts, squeeze all of these shorts right back up there. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. That's the tr that's the game plan, really. Trap the shorts and then have a really nice squeeze, which pushes the price up. Um, and, you know, it's just risk versus reward to see what happens. Um, it's good to see that they're entering. So that's kind of what you want to see. Um, but it's still, we're, we're definitely, we're no, we're no way out of the woods um, because right now, the sh any shorts that's entered in this lower part of this range still feeling quite safe. Yeah, they're not, they've missed the SFP, but they don't really understand it. Uh, and so they're still feeling quite safe. If the longs are able to get the price right back up there, then you're going to have a really nice short squeeze will probably take us right back up to the pdeq yeah that's what will happen um so we have to see so this is the right place this is the right place for a high time frame bottom yeah 
uh the timing is key though that's the is it the right time the place is right is it the right time i don't know um that's the hard thing to know if we don't see any more longs come in you're going to get an exhaustion of longs basically and then then the question is do the shorts hold for lower or do they just close because you see that's the thing you have to show strength then the shorts will see the strength and they will close their shorts uh, and you'd, you'd probably start by a big short closing who has a position much higher up like a big big short and then all of these sh uh, shorts that came in late will get trapped okay because a big short closed now if we don't see a big short close soon uh, then you're probably going to start continue seeing lower highs maybe lower lows yeah that's the problem and that could form as well you could form a situation and then the other problem is if these longs that just entered now if they lose confidence in this like we don't know what their time horizon is if they're just scalping or whatever if they lose confidence in this location in this area they could also close their longs at market which will pull the price down too so you've got a combination of many things happening right now and it's all psychology really and then the people look in their trades you know they're they're seeing their bank balances go up and down and it's it's quite a stressful period for certain people and sometimes you want you want to see them act emotionally so maybe shorting at the lows is quite an emotional and irrational behavior because people are worried about losing value or whatever thinking it's going to go down much further not realizing that this is the wrong place to short yeah the wrong place to short not realizing that they're shorting and there's lots of longs coming in too yeah people are longing here uh, and so we have to see who wins this little battle at these at this level is it going to be the shorts or the longs the, the bull the bulls or the bears yeah but i mean if they if i didn't see longs coming in i wouldn't take a long there's no way i would take a long uh but i do want to see more longing that's the only that's the only kind of thing on the back of my mind uh but it could come as time passes because the shorts will get wary like if you're in a short and the price is kind of meh it's not really going anywhere you might just close your short you might not risk it because you're thinking to yourself because a lot of these shorts might be shorting for lower if they see the price isn't going lower they might close their short because they're shorting for the previous week low that's actually that's their trade plan to take out the previous week low that's it it's a really bad roi to try <laughs> it's like a small gap they could they didn't short higher up for the low they shorted at the lows for the low So we've actually still got these imbalances. That's good. Price is still going up. That's not that's not bad to see. It's nice to see that. When you're in a long, you want the price to go up. <laughs> um, don't you? Unfortunately, though, um, we are underneath the 50 fib mark. We have to get back above. Okay, what's the timings now? I kind of... Honestly, I'm not crazy about this price action. I, I can't I can't pretend that I'm crazy about what I'm seeing. Um, I'm not fond of it at the moment. I, I do want to see the price uh, get back above this level. The good thing about the price action is we've kind of swing failure this local low and it hasn't gone down. There was no liquidations. So the only way to push the price down now is going to be shorting or longs closing, yeah? And it really is the worst. It's not a good place to short. Like if you're thinking, if you're shorting, where are you going to short right now? Well, you want to see the price find resistance. Um, you kind of, like if you want to short, you kind of want it to do this, you know? You want to see longs exhausted and you want to short longs closing. 
we don't really want to short without longs closing but then again look at this this is this is not crazy strength on on uh, You see, that's a reversal pattern. That looks like it's trying to be invalidated. Got four minutes left on this time frame. Um, that was a good. That was a good reversal pattern, actually. This whole thing is potentially a reversal pattern, uh, but we have to go up. See, one low made a higher high here. I'm looking at the candles now, not the pivots. Um, but this really has to go up now. I think this is not The other the other problem is um, that the longer we're here, the more likely these longs that entered in the lows are likely to just exit a break even. Yeah, that's the other problem. So you have to bear that in mind. So they might not exit completely, but they might scale back um, if they don't see a strong enough reaction. So the problem is that the longer you're here, if we go up then it's very possible that some longs who are here for a while will come back down we'll, we'll sell into that and you see we're at racially we're literally back at the lows again there you go uh there's some liquidations there for sure i think i'm stopped out <laughs> you can see the liquidations am i stopped out I can't I can't remember how far my stop was. Uh, I'm still I'm still OK, <laughs> but I don't like I'm not liking this, actually. I'm not fond of this price action now. You see that that was a long closing. That was that was the problem. That's the problem. So you had that two million whatever it was long entered and he was just big. he had a really he had a really tiny invalidation really tiny invalidation if you don't see a short close now uh i don't think you're going to see short center that wouldn't make any sense but if you don't see a short enter now then you're going to get um more droopy price action that's another long closing that's a short entering. Oh my god. Alright, so they're going for those. So apologies if you're in a long. I hope you're you didn't risk much. <laughs> uh another long closing more longs closing see that so that's the danger that's the danger with uh with longing at the edges uh that if you're not going to get the reaction that you need then the same longs that kind of created the reaction could close and pull the price down even further uh it's a risk it's, it's all kind of risky so the only way to really like see strength return I think if the price now suddenly gets back above this pivot here, yeah, this local pivot, this is just a one minute time frame, you might see some longs re-enter. Um, so that's the only thing that I can see. Like, I'm just like trying to think, why would longs enter now? They've just closed. You know, you're not just going to long this now. What you're looking for now 
it was the right place. Longs are entering. There was a kind of a SFP on the table, but actually there wasn't enough longs. That's really what the problem was here. There just wasn't enough longs. And actually the other problem was that not enough shorts closed. Okay. This is the previous week low. This is going to be pivotal to what happens next. So we're about to see what happens next. This is where we might get a big short close and the price is going to go right back. And anyone who has stopped out these early longs are going to be really annoyed. <laughs> uh, that's also possible. <laughs> Paper trading. But I mean, like it's it's all kind of interesting to watch and it's quite educational because um, because you can over time when you watch what's happening, you see what's happening um you get to you get to see the bullish side the like now you're experiencing a little bit of a bearish kind of price action it's like this <laughs> in the future you know when we see bullish price action i'll show you the bullish price action and then you'll see oh wow that's very different you'll see the difference between the bullish price action the bearish price action behind the scenes and then it's quite easy to identify um well, not easy, but it becomes easier over time to identify it. And then when you see it behind the scenes, uh, then when it comes to trading, you can be like, you, it gives you the confidence to take certain actions at certain places. Uh, it's not looking strong for the bears, to be honest with you, either. Like, the reason the price just came down is because some longs closed. That's not strong bearish price action. Yeah. Like, I'm not seeing crazy bearishness in the order flow. I, I did earlier on. Earlier on up here, I was seeing lots of shorts. Sure. But here at the lows, I'm not seeing that. I want to see more shorts, and I want to see them absorbed. So the only thing that I can imagine right now is if the price does manage to get to previous week low, and we get a liquidation bubble or some kind of swing failure, a big short will close. Uh, and um, and then we have to see what happens. Okay, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Looking at the the way the price is moving down, it's like a, a crazy flush, isn't it? It's just like Bitcoin is flushing out the market. Um, look at look at these minute candles. It's like slow grind down, minute by minute, trying to attack this this magic line this previous week low and see if we can get below the previous week low and see if we get that that's a short there see that increasing away it's kind of 50 50 no it's actually dominant is is look minus 3 million yeah you need increasing oi no you need traps you need trapped uh traders at the lows so what we really want to see is, yeah, increasing sell volume. In yeah, you're absolutely right. That would be really nice. Like the breakout traders at the low. Um, we're not, we, there is shorting in this downward move. So there was plenty of shorts ready to trap. But um, what we want to see here is a lot of volume coming into the lows and for a swing failure. That would be really good to see. Um, it doesn't have to be, I mean, it could be like 20 million or something like that. It doesn't have to be like, we're not talking like billions. <laughs> you can see there's order imbalances as the price comes up. So uh, that's a short closing. There aren't like, there aren't limit sales here. That's why you're getting the imbalances. getting filled we'll go back to the one minute you can even go to the 30 seconds if you want like close-up price action these are should see that shorts are closing closing that's a long that enter though on that liquidation bubble half long half short minus one so you can see that um there are longs trying to catch the bottom. That's what this is. 
with very small invalidations. You've got people here longing, trying to catch, literally catch the bottom. That's what's happening. Yeah. So there's quite, uh, these are the, and you can see all of these liquidations. So you've got longs trying to catch the bottom. Longing, small invalidation, longing, small invalidation, longing, small invalidation. We still haven't got to the previous week low. I don't see why we don't go to the previous week low. It'd be really bullish if we don't. Um, because it's just, there's just not enough shorting to take us down. Look at this, the price is coming down. There's some short centering now. Not much. Go back to the five minute. Yeah, we have to go. We have to get so look at the volume though, huh? There's uh there's a bunch of volume here, but it's still not showing straight. It's rubbish. We're so close. There's a trend line at the week close, so it wouldn't go to the previous week. Have a look. Let me just hide this shit. There's a trend line at the week close. Trend line. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Then. All right, there you go. So we're at the trend line above the golden pocket, above the value area. Uh, sorry, the high volume node. That's your trend line slightly underneath 50 percent of the fib retracement um honestly uh, the best way to see strength like the safest way to long honestly is is just to wait for a level to be reclaimed um looking at this whole price action like i mean we just this is just fun really it's all kind of relatively speaking it's entertainment um but i think it'll be easy to see a little bit of strength because we'll just get back above these lows here like that that's kind of what you will see and probably what you will see first is all of this volume reversed so you'll get a close up here uh what i'm kind of contemplating is just bottom catching really but in terms of actually longing you wouldn't just long that uh, you'd wait for a sign <laughs> and if we can get back above there and then you find the price will come back down then that will probably be the level in the sand and then all of this underneath will be like anyone who got in probably tried a million times got stopped a million times and got the last one right probably or a strong sweep exactly so you the other way would be uh, really nice volume, take out this low, this low too. That would be nice. Like you really want to take out both of those lows. Um, why did that not line up properly? Right. So we're still away from it. And effectively what you're looking at is, it'd be nice to go all the way down, huh? <laughs> I 
I think I could I, I think it would be I would blindly long five seven five one four. Uh anyway, it's five by probably not. I think it'd be it's a good level. So we're seeing a little bit of weakness continue, unfortunately. But that's life. Um This may take some time, but look, the price, look, some longs have closed. The price is still here. Uh, I think there's going to be exhaustion soon. And I think what's happening is like, you can see a lot of these shorts, they're hungry to take out the 58K low, wherever it was. Where is it? 58K or 59? This says down here. That's the previous week low, uh, but where is the actual low? Um, let me just mark it off so I have it because I don't think I have it marked. Okay, so we have it now. That's our swing failure. That's the two lows connected. Um, we have the golden pocket here. We have the high volume node here. I think that's it. I think that's all our lines. It's nice. It's nicely. I think it's quite clear to see. There's a lot of volume coming down now. So hopefully we can trap them. Uh, oh, David's saying there's a volume gap. Uh, let me pull that up on my screen. Let me see. Oh yeah, there is. There's a volume gap, huh? So, oh, you've lined up the lows like that. Oh, you've got two different lines. Okay. We're at a really, really important area, actually. Just looking at what you're showing me. Okay, we're into that arbitrary, whatever that trend line was. Uh, let's see XO and see if there's any. Uh... Oh, more liquidations. Look at these. Liquidation, liquidation. Let's get liquidating. So we are having a little bit of a, a liquidation run. Oh, the price comes back up. Oh, I dropped price back up. That's uh, that's shorts closing. You see that? Uh, that shorts closing, shorts closing. So that was a big short that just closed after that liquidation. Right to the previous week low, didn't take it. <coughs> That's another liquidation, huh? Wow. That person had a tight stop. Price is going up now. Uh, oh my God, what the hell? I can't keep track of this. Let me go to the slightly higher time frame. Oh, I prefer the five minute, my bad. So that's the movement here is not on Bybit. You see that? So it's probably coming from elsewhere. I could look at uh, Binance, but honestly, Binance is so difficult. To, there's so much data. It's not easy to see the stuff. And then you see these candles. If you see the dark bit, that's outside the value area. So every candle has its own value area. So I don't know if people are aware of these candles 
um, these bars but basically just so that you understand what you're looking at this is the five minute uh, candle and you can see the light part is the value area uh, the red line is the point of control and then anything outside of it is outside of the candle value area yeah so that's just showing you the volume the dominant volume in each candle um, so they do mean something so here you can see the value area of this candle was in the lows and the point of control was there on this candle at the lows um, it helps when you're kind of trying to see where the volumes coming in into candles so you see on this current candle this five minute candle we're above the point of control at the moment we're within the value area of this current candle uh, and obviously the price is going up and down Hi, my friend from Brazil. Hey, mate. How's it going? What time is it in Brazil right now? And all these liquidations are like longs are getting liquidated. There's quite an increase in OI in this last five minutes. And the 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 vol look at that plus three point two million, uh, long volume. That's pretty good, huh? Uh, I mean, even if we don't go to, if we go down, it's not a bad place uh to long. Um, but just looking at the price action, I don't see why we don't go down. Uh, but you never know. It's a little bit of a battle right now. Look, increasing OI. So there's some shorts coming in as well. Look, there's a lot of shorts coming in too. The shorts really want to push this down. Uh, let me just have a look at the divergences. So we've kind of invalidated this bullish divergence by making a lower low here. Um, let me have a look at a slightly higher time frame. Previous week low, yeah, with the overall. Let me look at the eight hour time frame. Probably have to look higher if it's a daily time frame. So you see the previous pivot was here this is the the low that's being targeted okay at about 59,000 and you see where the CVD is here and so from that pivot to where we are now you see how the the CVD has gone down significantly so even if we do make a lower low here the reality is that there has been a lot of absorption uh, at the moment it's bullish divergence but on the higher time frame the thing about the higher time frame bullish divergence, they take you can't really trade them they take a large amount of time to play out yeah it's just an indication that there's been massive bullish absorption of selling pressure in this overall range you know that's kind of what you want to see um to remain bullish yeah that's it's it's hard to trade or because you have to pinpoint the exact time that the price breaks out uh, and so just like now you see it's trying to make lower lows and stuff and it's trying to liquidate leverage longs 
but it's extremely bullish to see that kind of bullish divert a CVD in the, the the absorption. Eventually, what happens is that the sellers get exhausted in this higher range. And David is saying 2.4 million short imbalance right at the low. That's correct. The point of control is at the low as well in this candle. So um, what does that mean? It means that he's underwater. <laughs> Literally, you got to laugh. But also it's good because if the price comes back down, that short could close at break even. If if so, it's got the same effect. You just want to squeeze them with the price going up. That would be much healthier. OK, um, that's kind of what you want to see. It's good to trap shorts and longs because that's how you get the explosive moves to the other side. It's just knowing how to it's just it's just timing it and unless we can get longs coming out and i really think right now no one is going to long until we sweep the lows like which we're, we're, we're too close actually i think we're too close why would you long here just wait for the lows to be taken or wait for a sign of strength maybe in the context of this down move getting above about getting back above pd low would be probably an acceptable sign of strength probably i'm just thinking about all of this sell pressure with the shorts and then the liquidations if the price was now to be able to get back above previous day low i think that would be quite a strong uh reversal <clears throat> and then flip it into support and then you're going to get a lot of um long center let's see where the view app is the view app is way up there right at P P D park so the volume is still high up in this kind of pressure to the downside. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> Matt's saying I laugh, but sometimes they are correct. You mean every time that you take a trade that they're correct and every time you don't, uh, <laughs> they're not and it goes to the moon or vice versa. That's just the way trading is, isn't it? It's just, you just never know. Uh, it's best to not have a bias. It's always good to just risk your percentage or whatever you risk and see what happens. And then if you get stopped out, you just move on to the next trade. And uh, there's, it's hard because people use different strategies for trading and it's very important to keep your strategies separate you have to have a strategy for your spot for your long-term hodling you have a strategy have a strategy for rebalancing your portfolio you need a strategy for um buying the dip on spot and then when it comes to leverage trading you need a completely separate and very unemotional strategy from everything else so you mustn't let those kind of different ideas conflate with each other because you'll lose a large amount of money on leverage trading which is normal and you can't allow that sentiment to spread to your other kind of investing ideas they have to you have to keep those strategies separate the emotions have to be kept separate too and it's not easy you could you know i've i lose i've lost a lot of money it's not easy it's, 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 you always want to fix it, but the, the answer is to move on to the next trade. Always. The right answer is move on to the next trade. Yeah. And then the right answer is that the, the next, your next best trade is yet to come. And so we just have to look forward to the next best trade. And that's the one where you're going to make all your money anyway and make it all back. Yeah. So losing is part of, is normal in trading. Uh, you just have to accept that. Uh, the hard part is is keeping your winnings. <laughs> uh, that's the hard part. That's the that's the real challenge. 
um it's kind of gone flat huh? i think it's just consolidating for another push down and david's correct so he's saying there's another rule to you should always take profit i think rule number one in trading is risk management just protecting your risk and part of that risk management is taking profit because as soon as you're in profit if you take profit it it means that your stop becomes wider yeah so it's a, that's what people don't understand taking profit isn't about taking profit it's about protecting your trade yeah by taking profit you protect your trade yeah and that i think the word for the first take profit should be renamed to protect your trade or you know and so it if you would, if I, I like when I take trade, take profit and the first take profit, I like to really protect my trade so that the trade becomes a risk free trade. Uh, I don't always do it because I have the problem is then you have this different mindset. Like sometimes I'm thinking swing, sometimes I'm thinking intraday or whatever. But actually, the right answer has always been as soon as you're in really good profit because the price moved in your direction, you should take the profit and that protects your trade because if and the price always comes back if the price comes back it doesn't matter oh yeah david is saying he has invalidation and uh he scales out of stops before the next the actual invalidation tp taking protection yeah the first tp is to protect your trade the second TP is really the take profit. That's when you're really taking profit. And and I think, I don't think it's taught really well when it comes to that. And so as soon as people are in profit, they should just protect their trade by taking profit. And the, the problem is people are greedy. So they're not willing to take profit at 1% when they think they can go more. And it most of the time it's just 1%. And then the, the one time that you miss it, it goes to the moon and that psychologically psychologically messes people up like for sure we're longing because we think that we could catch the low and it could go to the moon that's why that's why we're longing aren't we and, and i think in the in the scheme of things and most most people haven't got a good invalidations ideas or risk management it's probably best to just have really wide invalidations at lower than twenty thousand dollars <laughs> And then just keep on longing then and just hope for the best. I think most people in a bull market will do it that way. So I have a few streams uh, viewers right now. Uh, it says 10 concurrent. I have no idea how many there are. If you've joined me for the first time, well, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we're basically, we're looking at, um, we're looking at Bitcoin and we're trying to catch the bottom. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're just looking at Bitcoin and we're looking at a potential uh, trades to take out this pivot low here. And then we're looking at the order flow, this pivot. And we're just trying to catch the bottom to see when the bottom, when, when there's going to be a reversal. It's in a very good place to reverse exactly right now. That's why we're looking at it together. Um, the question is, does, do we get a reversal now and go up or do we go down and go up? That's the question. Like, or do we go down and down? So there's only three things that can happen right now. We go down and up, we go up or we go down and down. And this is the right moment. Um, maybe not in terms of time, but in terms of location. And so, I'm just here looking at the charts, trying to see when the right time is, looking for a sign of reversal. You can see here on the trading view that there's been quite a large amount of volume coming into these lows. Uh, that's a lot of longs being liquidated. So if I show you the order flow on XO charts, um, you can see these kind of pink liquidation bubbles. There's been a, f a fair amount of liquidations on this push down. 
and we've had a bunch of shorts and longs enter and still we haven't really experienced um, a reversal. It's very clear that there are longs are hesitating to enter, like one big long is not enough. That's obviously a whale who has a really low liquidation point. So for them, this is a good place to just pick up X amount of leverage token and they'll just keep on laddering in at the right places. But really what you want to see is an influx of people longing. And I think just looking at the price action, it's probably going to happen after we have, after we sweep the lows. Like it's not looking very strong at all. Doesn't mean you should short. Uh, it's a really bad place to short. Just in case one of these sh bigger shorts closes their position. Yeah. Like if you're going to short, you have to have a really tight validation here. Uh, it'd be very risky, but I mean, you, you know, you could have a tight validation. Everything's possible. You know, like a lot of people say you shouldn't do this. This is wrong. This is right. It's all about risk management. If you have the correct risk management, you can make anything work for you. Um, you could put a little stop above this candle, then you could short if you have the right risk management. It has it has to be correctly analyzed in terms of your risk to reward ratios and how much you're willing to risk. But if you look at the candle patterns, um, that's why I like to look at candles um, because... Uh, you know, look, we're closing lower. Every close in the last 15 minute run, all these 15 minute candles are closing lower. We had one green one, but it closed lower than the previous open. So we're closing lower. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means, uh, you know, you could, you could have a tight validation because you're not expecting it to come up. But it's, I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. I'm just saying anything's possible when you're you look at how these candles behave like this big drop here you could have just put your stop above the candle itself yeah. that would have been it even though people I wouldn't do it but even though people say you shouldn't short it's all about the risk to reward ratio and your return on investment and how much you risk it has to be correctly proportion, proportionate to the invalidation, whatever your invalidation is. I like to look at candles because when you get these candles, you can short or you can long. But generally speaking, I don't like to do that. I like to wait for support when I'm longing and for shorting, I like to find resistance. And uh, honestly, we... It wasn't easy to see, but I missed it. It was much higher up. Go get a coffee or tea. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> it's going to happen when I go and get a coffee or tea. All right. I'm going to be back in five minutes. Go and get myself a coffee and tea. Uh, um, I'll leave it on the EXO charts. That's probably the most interesting one. Zoom in a bit. This is the 15 minutes. Go back to the five minute. Oh, I sound dehydrated. All right. Sorry. Mm. I think this long is going to get squeezed in a second. Look, some shorts are just entering now. All right. I'll be right back. Let me just type that out. I'll zoom out a little bit, just in case.
Oh shit! <laughs> what just happened? The fuck! <laughs> oh my god! Did I miss the move? <laughs> David was like, "Go and get a tea," and I just missed it. No, boo. That's a. That's a. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have gone. Let's have a look. Come on, long, long, long. That was it. That was a swing failure. No. Well, that was one of them. Good long. <laughs> Is that not it? I don't know. I think that was it. I mean, you, it could it could always go down, but that's the reaction you wanted to see, no? I think that's the reaction I was looking for. Look at that. So annoying. Don't catch the bottom. Catch the catch it on its way up. All right, so we haven't swing failured the the low from um the low from the low. We've only swing failured last week's previous week low. That's what's just happened. Uh, and that's actually a really good reaction. We've got longs entering, we've got shorts closing. Doesn't mean we can't sweep the lows one more time, but we have a reaction, yeah? So you take those longs and to make it a risk-free trade, you have to take your profit as soon as you can to protect your trade, yeah? Um, now, if you're looking at a swing trade, you may not take that much profit, but you just take enough to make sure that your trade doesn't, you don't lose if you get stopped out at break even. I literally left at the wrong time. All because David told me to leave. <laughs> no, this is good. Look, look at these uh, order imbalances. Uh, I think this is quite good. I like this reaction. Um, <laughs> you have to stay hydrated. Look, this price is going up still. We're going to trap all these shorts and then we can kind of really push up. No, I didn't say you short the lows. I'm saying everything in trading is possible. Yeah. But if you do it, you have to have correct risk management and a proper invalidation. Idiot. <laughs> I didn't say you should short the lows. I was looking to long the lows. <laughs> you mad? I wasn't shorting the way down. I was looking for a long. All right. Uh, anyway, we can have a conversation about that later, David. All right. I'm in another long. Um... Despite what David says, telling me that I, sh I said that we should short the lows. <laughs> um, this is the reaction you want to see. You take the lows and you have an injection of volume and then you start having shorts close. And we basically had a lot of liquidations. Now, the question is what happens next? Okay. The price has to go up high enough for these longs to take their profit. Otherwise, the price is going to fall back and the, these longs that just entered are going to get trapped again, right? 
Now that can only happen if I have a longs enter now or if shorts who have seen this price action now decide that as the price comes down, they're going to take their profit. Okay. Because we have a few imbalances, it, 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 it may take a little bit of time for this price to come down. Right now you can see the price is coming down to the last minute, five minute candle. The point of control is there. Let's see what happens here. That's going to be an early indication of how sh strong the, the pullback is. Calculated gambling, that's what trading is. <laughs> uh, this is quite a good reaction. I'm quite pleased with the reaction, to be honest with you. I'm not unhappy with the reaction now. Um, so if people miss, uh, if this is good, like and then we won't know until we go up but if this is good it looks good f so far look and the reason why it looks good so far is because we're back above this previous pivot we've created a reversal pattern on this 15 minute time frame you see we've closed above there we've taken the liquidity from this low that is uh, a previous week low so that's a swing failure with liquidations we've volume so far we're having a good reaction um that being said there's no reason why the price can't do this yeah so you have to bear that in mind what we really need to happen is the price to get up there and that might take a little bit of time and if if people are there's always a set there's always a chance to enter now look one thing i don't like about this five minute is i need the, i need the price to go above this candle which it hasn't done yet and that's something to bear in mind. But I mean, the other thing that could happen, which happens often, is another pullback. And so we have to see if that happens too. Um, that would be another attempt at the low here. You could get a situation when we get that. And the, the place to see if it holds would be the golden pocket. I think that'd be quite, it wouldn't be pretty, honestly. I don't think that'd be nice to see. What would be better is if we hold here to go up on this previous pivot here. Okay, so we're losing it. Let's just have a look at the order flow. This is where... Okay, look at that. That's a short entered. That's a big short, huh? So it does look like the shorts want to take it lower and we had uh, a long just close a little bit of long the OI dropped let's see okay let's see what happens if this is just one loan short sh short then probably nothing uh but we have to see if it's just one or if there if if more shorts enter yeah so the question here is do longs close, do shorts close, do shorts enter, do longs enter? That's the question. And it's not looking too bad. There's a little bit of absorption now. Um, that would be good to see, a little bit of bullish CVD. Um, If the shorts are able to push the price down, then they could trap the longs again for another squeeze.
it does look okay on one two three times that's usually how it works three times lucky um if we can trap this short then we are going up yeah this big short that just entered you'd need another long to enter to make that happen we need someone really rich with fat fingers to press buy <laughs> market buy that's all it really takes to squeeze all these shorts uh -huh. we have a look at that david is saying it's the four hour candle oh yeah look at that that's that's beautiful that's that's actually what you want to see a swing failure on a brand new candle uh, and we this four hour candle is going to take four hours to end it in four hours time if this bullish reaction is correct um although i'm not seeing much green oh this because it's a new candle uh then you could end up with a four hour candle closing up here and then this whole thing would look really bullish again yeah of course right now it looks bearish but we're just creating the beginning of a new candle i find it very unlikely that this four hour candle is going to go down again with another red candle honestly everything's possible but i think that's really unlikely um it just depends what happens now at this at these lows again we're getting a little bit of a rejection <laughs> So maybe we are going for the lower one. Uh, if we don't get another, if we don't get strength coming now, that's going to be really problematic because you see this short that's come in, they're, they're not underwater, they're in profit. It's actually the longs that will start to get underwater if the price moves down, yeah? And so naturally, you need longs to enter or you need shorts to close. Hey Zach, how's it going? There's a few people here. I've been streaming for a while. Uh, we're just trying to catch the bottom of Bitcoin. <laughs> well, I am anyway. And I've just been uh, commentating on the order flow. Uh, we still haven't found the bottom yet. We're just trying to see if we do discover the bottom here. We've had a lot of liquidations. These, these are liquidation bubbles, as you can see. And a lot of shorts have entered this uh, decline. And now we've made a swing failure of the previous week low. And we had a large amount of longs come in, highly leveraged. And we're just now seeing what happens next. There was shorts closing too. Some shorts entered here. And now we're trying to see what happens next uh who wins between shorts and longs 60k is still strong wall yeah i i find it very unlikely that we go down fast since we've taken the liquidity from the previous week and we're still above that level we've had liquidations and we're still above that level uh i find it very unlikely that we go down very very far like if people are dreaming of 44k or whatever 50k I, f I find that very unlikely um just by looking at the order flow <laughs> 60k is cheap it's only cheap if you can 100x leverage 60k at the 
Pico Bottom. <laughs> That's the only way that is that <laughs> that sixty k is cheap. Otherwise, buy TRVL. <laughs> So this is quite good. Uh, we're not getting much follow through on the bears, on the selling. Uh, we're not getting much follow through on the buying, but if the selling stops, that's really all that matters because I think in the context of the bull market, everyone is always buying, yeah? That's what changes. That's the difference between uh, buying the bull market and the bear market is that in the bear market, no one is really like, well, they are buying, but it's a different kind of strategy to, to buying. In the, bit, the bull market, everyone is buying the dips. In the bear market, it's just dollar cost averaging. And so if the, sell, if the selling stops, then you're going to get people buy the dip. And this is the dip. And we just want, we're just trying to see when the selling stops, i.e. the shorting. If we hold a higher low, that would be amazing. That will be really bullish. Take out previous week low, but hold a higher low. This is going to be like literally the best place to enter for a long if this holds. I say that every week. <laughs> this is the best place. <laughs> this is the best place. Um... Let me have a look at the uh, trading view. That's pretty good. I like that. Look at a 15 minute candle. That's behaving as you would expect a 15 minute candle to, 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 to behave. It's basically gone down, captured as much liquidity as possible from this, this uh, previous 15 minute red candle. And the price is now kind of coming right back up hopefully above that previous wick low this this is actually if this closes like that how many minutes two more minutes that's actually quite a nice reaction that's kind of what you want to see hopefully uh longs could enter um let's see what happens or let's say the selling continues and then it's another met then maybe then longs will enter the volume is quite high look at the volume like the volume on the way down has been miserable. And then all of a sudden, you've got quite a large amount of volume here. Okay, so it's still not there yet. Two minutes to go. We're just having a little bit of a battle here at this kind of uh, previous pivot. Maybe I should help them with a little, another little market long. Every little bit helps. <laughs> It all helps. It's kind of fun, you know, just helping, helping the, risking your whole, your, all your money and just trying to push the price up. Market long. Market long. <laughs> if everyone was watching my YouTube channel, then we would already be at 300K because I'll tell people this is the right place to buy. <laughs> this is the right place to sell. Well, actually, I don't. I don't say that. I say this is a good a, a, a resistance of support. All right. So I added some more. Why not? This could be the bottom. Risk a little bit more. I can risk fifty percent of my portfolio here. <laughs> This is not financial advice, so literally all entertainment. Uh, TRVL's dropped till again. That's annoying. I wish it wouldn't. I wish people would just stop selling. What's wrong with people?
I might have to buy some TRVL if it drops. All right, did that candle close? Let's have a look at the candles. I think it was a good close. So let's just see in the next candle. I think this is a good 15 minute close. Let's have a look at the 30 minute close. I think that was a good 30 minute close too. You see how it closed above the previous 30 minute wick? Uh, that was quite a strong close. As long as it's not a trap, that was a really strong uh, candle close. You could buy that candle. Uh, and let me buy some more. I'll try and buy some without. I have to increase my leverage a bit. I'm actually trying to leverage a little bit more at this level because I know it's uh, it could be the bottom. And get an order in. I was trying to limit it, but it's just not working. So I'm just going to buy it market. Let's have a look at the lower time frame. All right, so this is the one minute time frame. You have a V-shaped recovery. You have what's normally follows a V-shaped recovery, a little kind of pullback. Uh, only one of two things can happen here. You go down, <laughs> which is extremely bearish, or we can kind of get up above that. Uh, that's on the one minute time frame. So we have to see which one plays out. What we really have to do, if you see in this candle here, this red candle that reversed, uh, there's a bunch of shorts trapped in that candle. Not trapped, but open in that candle. This one. You can see the volume. Uh, and the minute we can get back above there, that short is going to be squeezed because they won't. It's a really easy invalidation to short, to be honest with you. It wasn't, it wasn't a terrible short in the sense that the location was correct. It's just that it came in after an extremely strong reaction from a, a weekly uh, swing low, pivot, uh, swing low failure. Swing low, yeah. So, swing failure, SFB, swing failure. What? Swing, SFB. Swing failure pattern, I'm so confused. I've been doing this for too long now. So let's see. This looks quite good. Huh? I think it looks good. I say I always say that. <laughs> so, uh, entertainment value only. To be fair, earlier today I said it was bearish. So, and to be fair, yesterday I said it was bullish, and it did go up. So, I mean, I got to be fair on myself. If no one's going to be fair on me. Any divergences? Nada. Sucks. That would help. If we just, if we suddenly saw a bullish divergence on this kind of last 30, 40 minutes, that would be really, uh, that would give me a lot of confidence in, uh, in going up. Because I think we just want to absorb the, sh the sellers right now at this price, at this level. And that this is the test. I think the test is, will the bulls defend the higher low or not? Yeah, are there enough orders to do that? Because we've taken the previous week low. Are we going to take the range low?
looks like we're forming some kind of triangle at the lower time frame here um let me go and have a look at that So in terms of market structure on the five minute time frame, you could kind of take that down to lower time frames. Um, if you can see, we've made a higher high on the lowest time frame. Um, so as long as we can take out that high, then on the really lowest time frame we've changed market structure so we just mustn't make another low at the moment which would be this low here if we don't make another low make another high that's going to be a confirmation of something happening at the lows a lot of people just wait for that to be honest with you i think that's fair like usually early longs and shorts get punished I think it's very rare that you get more than three in a row. I think it's usually the third one. So I'm just interested to see how far this price comes right now. That's the line in the sand. Otherwise, we're going for another low. And actually, if people are looking at my, uh, this is the uh, range low, this SFP line here. This is the golden pocket. And then we have a, a higher time frame, high volume node down here. So we have kind of levels where the price could find support. This is a good level, but I mean, if, if, if it's still going to continue bearishness, then it could go further. It would look quite bearish, yeah. Maybe look at the daily time frame so far. It's looking pretty miserable. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at some other things while I'm here. Um... A shame uh, against Bitcoin it's still quite strong um let's have a look at slurf slurf has been resilient look look at this Bitcoin is down slurf is up that's uh that's an interesting development I actually think that that's quite, that's a bit of a sign of strength. Huh? It isn't just slurf though. I see a lot of altcoins really not bleeding. I think a lot of people realize that this is the bottom. Um, or the bottom is on us. You know, look, the last hour, Avo has gone up. Uh, let's look at Cardano. That's sold a little bit. Uh, BNB is sold a little bit. Even BNB is kind of trying to make a swing failure of the lows. Let's look at Solana. That's the that's the interesting one. Uh, Solana wants to really go up now, doesn't it? That's my trade plan for Solana. That's the right place. Mm. 
Render's fallen below the all-time high. That is not f unfortunate. Not as strong as people thought. You'd have to reclaim the all-time previous all-time high to become bullish on render. So it is incorrect it is in correction right now. And I think actually that free ended there now. You can see that free ended there and we're in a corrective phase. That's a good Rio. Oh Rio is looking quite good. Back into a monthly level. If it holds this monthly level, that would be quite strong. It's hard to buy these coins which have increased in value significantly. Uh, three, four, five, three, C. So I've got Rio looking to enter its next wave soon. Second of those. Okay, Rose is showing massive, uh, showing a little bit of weakness, unfortunately. So we're coming back down to the lowest point of support. It's a really good place to buy it because we're at the range high of this previous range uh, into this higher, higher time frame channel. And look at the volume. Go back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at the moment more interesting. Okay. So unfortunately, we're getting a little bit of weakness on that buy up. Why is that? Short centering. There's a little bit of uh, absorption here. So let's just see what happens. See that? Slightly lower CVD. Slightly higher lows. Just on this local time frame, this is the last 40 minutes. Um, back into weak low. As long as these longs don't close, uh, we have to see. What time is it? It's almost 15 minute candle. So again, it's it's hard because it looks it can look strong for a second and then fall back to weakness, which is what it's doing now. Oh, look at that market dominance of BTC going down. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> What's DXY saying? DXY is going down as well. Uh, you could argue that this is being this is a bit of manipulation at play. You know, um, everyone argues that when the price goes down. I think it's going for the for the range low. Yeah, that's what it looks like. We've just lost the golden pocket on the lower time frame. D 
these longs if they uh, if they're trapped you gotta see if they close the market if they're liquidated uh the slight bullish cvd is invalidated there is still it's still it's still there on this low if we don't make another low but right now that short is happy now the question is does that short take profit um and then the question is do these longs close or get liquidated it's possible they get liquidated one more time it's usually third time lucky are we going to get another try at liquidating people that's the question Some shorts are closing. Oh, that was the longs closing as well that was actually uh, 2.8 million oh my god i can't see anything that's shorts closing if longs don't enter this isn't going to be good it'll probably mean another attempt at the low time is it 1747 um another 13 minutes until the candle the new candle i'm probably going for this this lower line What's the funding rate on um, the funding rate is neutral. Oh, this is interesting. A little bit of a reaction here. Let's have a look at that. Shorts closing. There were longs opening. It's kind of balanced at the moment. I see some shorts closing. Usually when uh, oh, Zach is saying orders stacked between 59200 and 58600. Wow. What uh, exchange are you looking at, Zach? On um, Binance or Bybit? Look at Bybit. There is, there is a bit of a buy wall at 60k, 60k now. What's the price now? Binance, the book map. I think there's a little bit of a buy wall at 60k.
So the problem, the problem when the price slows down like this at above some kind of previous level is that if you don't get a strong react, this is actually quite nice. Look, we, we, we are still getting a good reaction. Yeah, it's really faking people out. Like it's really stressful because you're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to, the low is going to be taken again. Oh, what do I do? It's really stressing people out. It's like a really deep, it went all the way to the 786 of this local time frame. The problem though is that you don't want to be here for too long. Yeah, you, we don't want the price to be stuck here for a while. Yeah, that isn't good. Like when you come into a major support level, the, the level has to reject the price. You need you need to buy up. Uh, so we have to get out of there. Uh, otherwise, you get bearish consolidation on top of support you'll end up with a situation where you're getting lower highs and eventually it will go down again that's what happens so that's not what you want to see you want to see a, a rejection of this this lower area otherwise you're going to get into a situation where you get another attempt a final shakeout and then you then possibly you'll get the actual move So that's the problem with this kind of price action. It's not great at the moment. And actually, probably by this evening, we'd be like, we'll be back up there. And we'd go, oh, I knew it. <laughs> should have, shouldn't have, should have had a wider evaluation or should have taken the last, like I gave up. <laughs> it's the right area though. So it's always, that's the, that's the question. What happens next? Uh, I think a lot of people are looking to 100x leverage, to be honest with you because there is a massive anticipation I'm not really doing anything. I'm just on my phone. <laughs> if you want to scoop cheaper. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't care about the price. I only care about catching the bottom so I can leverage up as the price goes up. Um, that's really what I'm interested in. I'm more interested in that. I don't really care where the price is. If it's here, I'm happy. If it's lower, I don't, not really fast. Uh, also, it's, uh, it'd be good to, yeah, I'm not, yeah. Let's do good. We just had a, the price go up. We had an increase in OI. Um, it seems like there was more shorting though in that, more selling in that candle. Um, look, there's a bit of a selling absorption here. We can see it. It's on a lo very local, but look, the buying, the CBD went up. It was it made a higher high. Here, the price is slightly lower. See that? So there's a little bit of selling absorption. Someone is actually literally selling probably on spot right now. It's a bit unusual. Or limit orders, whatever. Um, we have to go up. 
Let me have a look at the overall. See that? Look, look at this is quite interesting. See the OI dropped here? Drop, 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 drop. And this came back up, right back up. So we haven't had a change in OI at all in this drop. It's still quite flat and the price is coming down. Yeah, we are hunting the bottom. Oh, bit of imbalance there. So that's uh, that's the first kind of indication of weakness. Uh, after all of it, well, there's there was a few, but this one is pretty miserable i think at this rate we are going to take the low one more time and then see what happens uh it would be nice to just go down and come back up and finish this so i can finish the stream <laughs> uh, One point one million, one point six million. That's not good. So right now, what I'm what I think I'm seeing is that, um. The shorts are holding out for lower. That's what it looks like. Like we're not, I don't feel like the shorts are under pressure right now. And we haven't uh, yet experienced that climax of selling, which, uh, which is going to help spring out of the lows. So while that was quite nice, it wasn't the, it wasn't enough. Yeah. We didn't have like a, selling climax which is what we needed to spring out of these lows so the question now is as time passes do we actually go lower or do we go higher but i mean i think it's more likely if the shorts don't close that we probably will go lower that's what it's looking like again i don't necessarily mind that um just to kind of make people feel content that they they took the lows. That's what happened in the previous consolidation and then the price went up and then it made a new high. But this isn't looking, I don't know, let me have a look. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is it's looking pretty miserable. Look, the problem is that this 15 minute candle, even though we closed higher, which was nice, uh, it would just close right back underneath it there. So we have, uh, these candles aren't actually forming strong formations at the moment, even though that closed higher, it just, it, there was no continuation. It just fell flat. Um, so you're getting, we're getting a little bit of weakness. It's pretty obvious to see. Now, if this next 15 minute candle, wait, oh, it's the hour has ended. Let's have a look. Oh God, it's a miserable candle. So if this next hour is in green, then honestly, the problem is we're going to find moment, the momentum is going to start picking up. If we continue this downtrend without springing out. That's the problem with this kind of price action. Maybe people understand how uh, once momentum starts, it's not easy to stop it. You can see already on the one hour time frame that it's trending down. And so even if you do get a, like a snap up, you know, you could, it could fall down flat like that. It's just a reality of momentum. The only way to reverse momentum is to spring up like that.
Let's have a look at this. Okay. Some buying. What's that one? No long people wanting so long are so nervous. You can you can feel it. I can feel the nerve the nervousness. Um, because they're just waiting for the price to go up before they long. They just want to get out of this kind of these these lows. If you I don't know if you guys have noticed, but on the TRV on the D Travel now, on their Telegram channel, I'm going to show you actually while you guys are here, while we're watching paint dry. <laughs> uh, this is quite interesting. Let me find it. I'm going to have to flip my screen. Um. Give me a second, let me just add a window. Window capture, three. Telegram, there it is, All right. Um, what you can see here is that, let me see. Look at this, the Travel Direct, a new booking processed, and it tells you the listing. Yeah, that's newer. So not only can you see when new bookings have been made using T on D travel, you can actually click on the listing now. Um, let me go to it. Hold on. So someone just booked this. It's in France, somewhere. Is it? Yeah, near Marseille, on the Mediterranean. It's nice, huh? I need to save um, these properties so I can go. <laughs> Look at that. cheap as well little kitchen um seaside apartment with a lateral sea view in a hotel in a hotel oh what it's a hotel <laughs> it's an apartment in a hotel um see how much it is i'll go for a week Is it the same with two guests? City tax not included. Oh look, I can pay with crypto. That. How much is it in TRVL? 
Oh yeah, TRVL's not working right now, is it? Oh yeah, it is. No, it isn't. Matic. How much is it Matic? Doesn't say. Oh, it says here. I think that's quite interesting, no? All right, let's go back to uh, what color is this? so we have some shorts closing now they're giving up a little bit a little bit there's some uh, order imbalances here look so there are more longs here than shorts Wait, I can't. You can't see because I haven't got this in the window. One. It's annoying. Can't share this. Sometimes when I like switch screens, I can't switch it back. So it's a problem with um, Obisoft. So give me a second, I'm trying to figure it out. There you go. You know, one thing I know about Bitcoin or anything to do with crypto is it finally pushes people to the edge until they give up and then it goes up. Like you're probably looking at this and going, wow, oh, God, it's like it's going to go down. It's going to go down. People are looking at this and they're feeling like it's going to go down and it could. But and then what they do is oh, this has been too long. They close their longs, <laughs> the price. That was the bottom. That's what happens. So it's uh, you gotta, you can't just. Uh, sometimes you just gotta let it play out and see what happens. I think what's interesting is there's a lot of volume here. Not as much as this drop, but we've cleared the liquidity from that low. We've cleared all of the leverage liquidity from this range, which had invalidation underneath that low. So the only one that we haven't cleared is the range low, is the uh, the actual range low. And if we hold a higher low here, then everyone's going to be annoyed at why they didn't long why they were waiting for a swing failure. If the daily close closes back up into these wicks above that uh, channel midpoint, it's going to look quite bullish. I think if, if we can get a daily close, this is going to be really important to see, like this daily close. If we can close it back into these wicks here, that would be interesting to see. If it closes here now, that's I don't think that's bearish either necessarily because it's like we failed to close lower than here. And then what could happen is the next candle could be green. And then you've just created an order block. And then what probably will happen is we'll have another test before we go up, if we go up. Or, you know. So that can happen too. And you had that here, here, I'll show you. So you had that idea here in this, into this wick, you have this kind of big close down into this wick. It went up and it came right back down just to go up. 
So you're creating a little bit of like an order block um, inside a wick. FE for life, you're back. You just finished cl classes. Classes, how old are you? <laughs> Welcome anyway, welcome. We're trying to catch the bottom of Bitcoin. Uh, this one hour candle, this red doji in the lows could be bullish if this next candle is either another, it has to be a green inverse hammer or it has to be a nice long green candle closing up here or a red hammer could work too but you need you need the hammer you need the wick got a chance to check out xrph oh that hospital xrp hospital that's what you were talking about um i'm not going to have a look at it right now Maybe I am. That's a, that's a, that's look at that volume that just came in now, five minute time frame. Someone bought market, bought that. On Max, look at that, it's a market buy. It's interesting. Oh God, why has it gone up so much? It launched in September. It's up 464%. It's in price discovery. Trending up. Hmm. These African tokens, huh? <laughs> Do the DD. What's the DD? <laughs> Due diligence. interesting i'll do i'll do the dd bunk is up 62 percent. what is that how is that up 62 percent? oh wow it is there's no volume on that either it's very liquid um Twenty percent. I'm telling you, do the D based out of Dubai. All right. I've got it on my list, so I'm going to do the DD. I have to buy some though. Let's have a look at BTC one more time. Oh God, I hate this kind of price behavior it's like it's trying to go up to go down <laughs> you just want it to snap up don't you you don't want it to just grind up but i want this is everyone's chance to 100x leverage
if if we go up you're going to get a lot of longs jumping in yeah i think a lot of people are a little bit nervous yeah man if xrp does have some type of larger move i think xrph will move as well based off the name alone you can get a discount on prescriptions as well through their app um We've had so many liquidations here and the price has kind of stayed pretty steady you know those are like market selling market selling market selling the price has been quite steady at these these lows i wonder if we're going to have a rounding bottom uh at the moment i can't tell but it's uh at the moment it's forming a little bit of a a rounding bottom so let's see if that idea plays out or not if you do have a rounding bottom it's kind of like a a little bit of a teacup isn't it and you have a little handle to break out let's see if that plays out uh dxy did form that other shoulder though it looks rough yeah, I've got DXY coming into resistance right now. Okay. <laughs> it's also above support. Um, gosh, don't expect to meet. So I've kind of looked at DXY earlier on and yeah, this is looking like a head and shoulders for sure. So I've had it going higher, but actually uh, if we break this neckline, then basically you're looking at another head and shoulders, but a much kind of higher, wider, wider head and shoulders so yeah this is looking good this is what we want dxy to the to the ground if you break that neckline it'll probably sell off back down and then maybe we'll lose this trend line again i had it coming into weekly reason i thought maybe it would go up one more time just to give it a test but maybe the dxy isn't as bullish as people think um Just keeping an eye on Bitcoin because it's about to make a low. And uh, I'm in a long. If we can't get above this, uh, this level here, then that's going to not look great. What time is it? I wonder if, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been on stream for eight hours. <laughs> like, that's funny, huh? I think that's quite funny. Why not? It's fun. What I'm seeing is, oh, look, that's quite good. I'm quite excited about that. I've got 400 subscribers. <laughs> I started in December with zero. <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> getting subscribers. So someone wrote on a comment on a video. They said, Rich Ricardo Smith commented, I'm enjoying watching and following your content. Would you consider making a review video about Golden Cobra meme token, which combines features like PTE snake game and Probably yes. It's so dark in here now. I can't see my keyboard. Uh, oh, okay, I can. So I... 
400 subscribers. That's amazing, huh? Well, <laughs> I've got a plan for a thousand subs. Uh, I haven't, I mean, thinking about it, if I can get to a thousand subs and if I can start making money on my YouTube channel, uh, then I, I'm going to put all of the money that I make, I'm going to market by TRV, TRVL with it. That's my plan. <laughs> Just market by. So, uh, That'd be funny, huh? It'd be funny if I can grow it to a lot and just with the YouTube subs and market buying TRVL at the same time. I want TRVL to go to the moon. I want it to, I want to take it to $23. <laughs> Why not? It'd be funny. I want to take down Airbnb. That's what I want to do. So uh, that's my uh, objective. Well, I mean, I just give ideas. I'm, you know, I took a long, I, I, I failed. It's not always on point. Yesterday I was bullish. Today I was bearish. So it's been okay. You know, I'm not trading like crazy. I take, I only look for the best trades. Most of my, um, game, my game plan is a, is a higher time frame position trading. And I'm not really into like, small moves and intraday moves i try but it's not easy and it's it's not easy once you get successful you have to be very consistent and very kind of rigid with the way you trade uh i'm kind of more relaxed you know i prefer to be a little bit more relaxed um not to be too stressed trading can be quite stressful so let's see if we can create a rounding bottom here. That'll be interesting. I like to see that happen. Um, we It looks like we held the golden pocket of that local retracement. That's pretty nice to see. Uh, and then all we really need to do here, if possible, is, let me think, make a higher high. So actually that's, so you see on the high on the five minute time frame, all we have to do to make a higher high is take out this high. Because that will be our higher low. If we can take out that high, we've actually changed five minute market structure, which would be the first. I think once that happens, you're going to get a lot of longs enter because I think people are waiting for market structure change. That's just an easy way to to jump in. And uh, I'll probably. Uh, long more as well if we can take out that high well i appreciate that if fe for life i hope i hope more than just you think that <laughs> otherwise i've only got one fan All right, let's have a look at my different tokens. Yeah, I think the altcoin market hasn't gone down, no. The altcoin market's kind of just stayed steady. I think the, a lot of people are just giving up selling their altcoins. They just, I think with Dave, this is the actual shakeout. The only way that I think people would get really fearful with their altcoins if, if, is if we started losing basically like 58k area if we started going down like that oof, i think people are going to start dumping their altcoins like crazy which would be weird because it would be nothing's changed with regards to bitcoins uh halving and the bull market people selling at a loss it's quite weird all right so we're kind of forming something here it's quite interesting let me have a look at the um all the flow okay so shorts are closing <coughs> the oi is dropping off <coughs> excuse me that's kind of good to see you kind of want to see shorts close 
if if the shorts are giving up that's a really good sign um to see shorts closing and then you just need longs to open and and make a higher high on the five minute time frame that would be a higher high if we take that out there then we're into bullish five minute market structure that would be really nice to see All right, guys, I have to move location. I'm being kicked out. So uh, let me just briefly, uh, I'm going to take a five minute break, okay, or 10 minute break. Um, I'm back sorry about that all right anyone here i think everyone's left by now i'm streaming for too long um 
So we are not yet making a high high. We're just waiting to see what happens. Um, we have to take out this pivot here. Um, unfortunately, we're getting a little bit of bearish divergence here. It could be leading. We just have to take out that high. So that may or may not happen. No one, no one can know if it's going to happen. That's the high to take out. Five minute, lower low, higher high. Higher low, one more higher high. And then I think we'll probably get a little bit of a squeeze up, possibly, or let's see, or maybe a cup and handle, or maybe something else, but potentially a little squeeze up, actually. And TRVL is selling off a little bit, and people are panicking. Um, Have a look at USTTD, USTDT. All right, um, that's interesting. We're pushing, pushing uh, back up to the high of that pattern. Let's see if. Um, None of that is, I don't have the brush strokes. Okay. So basically that's the pattern. Back above the value area high. That's quite interesting. Huh? <clears throat> Let me see Pax Gold. That's up as well. That 5%. So it's trying to go up. I think that's because Bitcoin is pulling back. But it's interesting because Bitcoin dominance is dropping. That could change if Bitcoin goes down. Like literally that will change instantly if Bitcoin goes down. I think it's very unlikely. Um, but who knows? No one can predict the future. Look, we're getting a little bit of consolidation here. It's not really what you want to see. You want to see the price to go up because eventually what happens is that you're exhausting the buyers as well, not just the sellers, but the buyers. The sellers might be just holding on, but eventually the buying stops. Um, whether that's shorts closing or whether that's new longs entering. This is not bad, what I'm seeing right now. Let me just get rid of these. So this five minute candle is correctly printing for a potential reversal. Um, if it holds this previous candle wick, um, you see this candle closed higher there, higher than that candle. So in effect, in terms of price, we've reversed the price action of this red candle. Um, if we pull back to fill the volume gaps, 
to there that's correct and you just don't want the next candle to go lower than that wick now what you really want is the price to define support and then go up that's kind of what you're looking for in terms of the way the candles print um that's on the five minute time frame if not you're just going to go down for more liquidity or just it's just the price is always searching for liquidity and balances it's trying to just balance the market <coughs> and so if the car if there's not enough liquidity at these levels here the price always just tries to go down and the searches for more liquidity at the bottom of these red candle uh, reversals uh, unless you can get some market buying to push the price up and um, that's the only way to push the price up so it just depends on how many people are bearish or bullish right now to see how that plays out i'm in a long right now um and i'm just waiting to see what happens <laughs> um It is a good place to long. There's a few shorts closing right now. I can see that. Uh, that's how the price moves up. And shorts are just closing a market. You see that there's zero volume uh, on the way up. So there aren't any limit orders to sell. So we're not, no more bearish divergences. That was just a local one. Um, look at this, this is good to see. This is what we want to see. We want to see shorts closing. And you want to see that because when shorts close, it means that they've given up. Literally, that's what it means. They're giving up. But it has to continue. And then the real sign is when longs start to enter. Now, I think what's going to happen is if if the if we take out this pivot, you've changed five minute market structure. There's a new low for an invalidation. It'll be the it'll be this one here, and so it'll be very easy for people to long because they have an invalidation, which would be another break of market structure on the five minute time frame, the, the lowest time frame. And um, if that happens, that will be the test. So let's see if we can change market structure here. We only have to go up a little bit more. Maybe then that short, because you have a big short that's sitting here. Um, where are they sitting? Where did the short come in? Uh, let me see. Maybe some of these big shorts will close if they see a change in market structure. The change, the close may happen on the pullback. We have to see. But we're still not there yet. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. Unfortunately, we're not there. That's a nice candle, five minute candle close. Look at that. That's pretty strong reversal. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Huh? Look, see that? These candles are nice now. They're, they're printing nice candles for the bulls. I'm thinking bullish right now. Uh, and you see, we've come back. We've tested the top of that previous candle. And now we're pushing up. So the candles are behaving correctly, as you would expect. And we only need to take out that pivot to, to change the, the lowest time frame market structure back to bullish. You're long already, of course. <laughs> We've just <laughs> taken the, the previous week low. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> This is what this is all about, catching the lows. Look, we've got a trend line. We've got this previous week low. Let's see what happens, you know. What if this, imagine if this uh, daily candle closes green. How bullish would that look? Let's see, like, this could be the bottom. We're trying to chase, we're bottom chasers, really. <laughs> it's fun. Uh-huh. 
anyway i've been uh, streaming for a good part of eight hours and thank god youtube allow does it allows you to do it for free um Now, the problem is if you go there and someone can short again, that's the problem. <laughs> and then it wouldn't look good if someone does a dumps on the market. If you go up there, take out the high and then someone dumps on the market. <laughs> We're still not there yet. We still need to make the higher high. We're just literally watching paint dry. Um, that's a short just entered. Shorts are just entering now. Four twenty or four nineteen? I thought it was Friday. The half I thought the half the halving was in two days' time. I thought it was Friday. Let me check. Four oh one, huh? You're right, I've got four oh one um subscribers. <laughs> oh, it says I've got six people watching. That's amazing. Six people. I don't know who you are. But why are you watching me? No, I'm just, I'm just joking. It's funny. Um, some longs closed as some short centered. Okay. Why did that happen? Well, I can kind of, I have a clue. Um, It's this, uh, it's these candles, you see, these 30 minute candles. Um, we're just trying to go up. It's not easy. Yeah. Like this 15 minute candle one, once it holds here, you see, we're just trying to hold and then we have to see what happens with the next candle. So we have one more minute on this 15 minute candle. So these candles have to print, uh, and they have to go back test previous weeks and then We'll see what happens right now the market buying isn't pushing the market if anything it's just shorts closing which may mean that that bears are still in control if the bulls were in control then you'd start seeing longs uh jump in so that's something to bear in mind i am mindful of that um actually i'm keeping an eye on that idea So new candle printed on the 15 minute time frame. Oh, so this one have to, it just has to hold that, that line and then it has to push up. So it'll come back down and test first, probably. It's not bad. It's quite a large volume in that cell. Here to here holding the range. And we are in a bit of a range right now. Um, let me just do one other thing. Just do a range pull on that. It's not going to be easy to take out that um, that high of this price action. Uh, and then the other thing I want to do is just from this whole drop, probably from this pivot, I do a range pull here. 
and see where the volume is oh, okay so i think this is quite bullish yeah because from the pivot high of today to the current <coughs> area of interest that we're in now if you do a volume pull you can see that most of the volume is underneath us so we've we've actually put in a shitload of volume underneath us and in comparison to all of the volume that's come into this level okay so i think that's actually very bullish to see that yeah i think that's bullish um you know this is forming to be something that could be the bottom as long as we uh we don't lose we don't lose this kind of this little this local point of control because there's a lot of volume there you can see and hopefully we change market structure but no one can predict that that would require us to take out this uh this pivot here and then i think it'll be good to see what happens next because maybe then we could get a little bit of a squeeze up and get right back up into uh that area of interest i think i'd like to see us go up there and that will probably be a good place if you're long to take profit um that would probably be a good place unless of course you're kind of in it for the swing and you don't really care about that you just want to try and risk it all or nothing I think it's a good idea to always take profit so actually the golden pocket's a bit higher up usually these kind of levels correspond that's not corresponding i'm just wondering if that means we're going down that's hmm. Well, anyway, we've put in a ton of volume right now at this area of interest. And um, let's see if we can take out that high. That would be quite nice to see. Oh, lots of writing. Sorry, I missed it. Um, hello from Istanbul, Nuri Delon. Welcome. You are a great trader. Thanks for the stream. <laughs> You're a great trader. Honestly, let's just be let's just be honest. I don't think it's it's good to say a great trader. Like I can analyze the markets, but trading, I think everyone has their own style. Yeah, it doesn't just because I'm a great analyst or you think I'm a great analyst doesn't mean I, I am a great trader. There's I'm sure there's a thousand better traders than me out there. Um but I know I can analyze because I'm a bit obsessed about charting and all of this stuff. Trading and analyzing are two kind of slightly separate things. Trading requires uh, intense risk management. Like you have to be really on the money when it comes to managing your risk. That's the most important lesson in trading. If you don't learn how to manage risk, you will never be a good trader. And honestly, when it comes to that kind of idea, we can all learn. We're always learning. It's never like it's an emotional battle of self-discovery trading because you have to deal with yourself and it's a never it's a it's a journey that you'll never learn stopping to learn about yourself and about uh about everything so i wouldn't say i'm a great trader but i, I think i can analyze like I, i'm not too bad so that's why i stream because i think i can do it uh, and obviously i'm always looking to improve so I don't think there's a one right way to do it. I think that everyone has their own idea of their own risk appetite and everyone has their own preferences. And I think everyone has to just develop their own technique and their edge. Some of the things, the tools that I use are very easy to use tools. And when you combine them together, they can you can create very powerful uh, trading ideas. Um, but the actual execution requires discipline. It requires risk management. And that's really what makes a great trader. The, the best traders in the world are the ones which have immaculate risk management. Yeah. So you, you know, maybe I do. <laughs> Who knows? 
my my trading style is I'm a cyclical higher time frame position trader. Yeah. Uh, this local stuff that I do is mostly for entertainment and fun. Yeah, it's mostly for entertainment. And also, I'm analyzing the chart on my own anyway. I always do this. So it was just, I just thought it'd be fun to just create a channel and do it, do it, do it with the community or create a community if they're interested. And then the other thing I wanted to do was bring attention to TRVL. Yeah, I've been interested in this token for since its launch. And I think it has the potential to disrupt the Airbnb market. And I want to do that. That's like really my top of my agenda. So as many people who are interested buy TRVL um, and we can take out Airbnb. Why not? Let's, we, let's begin that journey. All right. Um, XRP long. Is he trading short or long? I'm long. We are long. We're all long. I have not seen Amir do a trade live. Well, I only trade on my phone. <laughs> I, I'm not going to stream. I could stream my trades, but honestly, I don't see the point. I'm just telling people I'm going to take a trade. I'm going to risk 1%. It doesn't really matter. I, you know, I don't need to prove it. I mean, I'm not really fussed. If people don't, don't believe me, that's, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm not really here trying to show off. I just, I was just, just educational and entertainment. Um, I'm not really here to, that being said, if you look at some videos in the past, okay. Uh, let me show you one now. I, I'm, I'm actually interested to see this take that high <laughs> and to see the reaction. So I don't really want to miss this. Um, so I'm going to let me see. Let me just have that on my second screen. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, hold on. Um, I have to refresh this. I can see a lot of shorts are closing. Uh, that's really good to see. So let me just open this window. Hold on. Let me just see. I'll come back to this window. So. I mean, look, uh, if you go back into D travel playlist. Yeah. See, I'm telling people about the Golden Cross. Uh, hold on, where is it? Look, trade of the century, TRVL. <laughs> so here I am. We're into the we're into the golden pocket, and we. Have I'll kind of turn the volume down, but here I'm explaining to people the reasons why this would be a good trade, and TRVL is at uh, three cents. Okay, so I'm explaining to them my trade ideas and I create a trade plan. See this? That's the trade plan. So I created that trade plan. I called it trade of the century TRVL. That's your, that's when it was pulling back. Okay. And this was, I don't know how long ago, this is two months ago. That's the trade plan. And let me see. See, it coming back down into that area of interest. And then it goes up like that. See that? So I have, let me see what I said. I don't even know what I said. This would just go up and up and up. And, and the moon's the limit. See that? Makes sense. So at. So that's that yeah, was my trade so plan. Me. I gave that plan. Yeah. And then when you look at um, TRVL, after I gave people my plan which i took i took that trade <laughs> of course i took that trade um why wouldn't i that was my trade i gave people my trade <laughs> and so basically the price action in question was this was was this decline see that that was the trade and i've obviously deleted it 
but it was this all the way to the all-time low and it was back basically to this area of interest that I had in mind that was the trade plan and I said it would go up and up and up and it did and that was two months ago so I don't have to show yeah there's a video <laughs> I took it <laughs> I took my trade <laughs> yeah TRVL was at three cents it was pulling back and I'll do a fib extension giving yeah, people the reasons buy. why I was going to take that to trade the, why this was a good trade time high but let me just do it from... and in this run so far TRVL has gone up to 12 cents so okay you enter at what actually the entry there was at about two and 2.3 cents 2.4 cents that was what I said people should enter this was two months ago the price went up to 11, 12 uh, cents. So with that trade, that's a 6x trade. It's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all, is it? So I don't need to prove to people. My videos are there. People want to watch. Uh, all right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Well done. Pray. That's amazing. All right. That's a higher high. We've changed market structure on um on the five minute time frame um shorts are closing do you see that immediately shorts are closing they're not getting liquidated they see the market structure change and they're they're closing and you see longs are entering as well because the oi is going up okay so this is the first sign of strength that we wanted to see just make sure that you take profit at the right place otherwise you know you never know okay if you want to because of course this could be a really um this could be a swing this could be a swing you know but i mean i think it's a good idea to take profit that will protect your trade if you take profit okay um Where is a good place to take profit? Well, the VWAP is always good, but let's see where the VWAP is. Um, let me quickly do this. I mean, I think the value area high is a possible one, but it might be too high. It depends. The VWAP is going to be better. So definitely the VWAP um, would be a good place to take profit. That looks like it's at about six one six nine six wow you're long on xrp you have to take profit really let's just be honest uh even though this could be a really amazing swing trade it could be a look. Look at that. That one hour candle closed lower. I don't like that it closed lower. Okay. So we might actually see a doji next. You got to be aware of that. And if we can go up to the VWAP and touch it, then definitely that's a good place to take profit. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because we're still not out of the woods we're going to see still a little bit of kind of the good thing about this one hour candle is it closed above the 50 percent mark um it closed above this uh this red wick that was really good so that was a good close but it actually closed underneath this red candle okay so it's strong but it's not as strong as it could have been and it's certainly not strong enough for continuation so you just got to bear that in mind we might see a doji here next or it might go down to push up if it's going to go up but because it hasn't closed higher that's the problem it hasn't closed higher than that so definitely a good place to take profit will be the vwap and then if you flip the vwap into support <coughs> you can put your profit back in if you want to so The VWAP is a good place. Although the VWAP hasn't really been tested all day. 
this will be the first real test of the VWAP. People don't know what the VWAP is. It's volume weighted average price and it works, it resets at, at server reset at the beginning of the day. <coughs> so it basically tells you the average price based on volume as the volume comes in through the course of the day. And so you see the VWAP moves around. Um, usually the VWAP will act as either support or resistance for the price, usually. So it's always a good place to take profit. The VWAP is always a good place to take profit. Okay. So when you're thinking about where should I take profit, the VWAP is a good place to take profit. Uh, it doesn't have to be crazy profit if you have higher targets. And if you're looking, this is a swing trade idea. So you just bear that in mind that potentially we're swinging the lows. Yeah, this could be the low if Bitcoin goes up to $995,000 or more. This could be the low. Yeah, I'm not saying it is. But this is what the low would look like. It would look like something like this. So you have to bear that in mind. 69. Well, you're in profit. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but just bear in mind, you have to have a plan for taking profit. You have to plan for what happens if the price goes down. You've got to know what you want to do with that position if that happens do you set to break even do you take enough profit now so that if you go down and get stopped out you don't lose that would be correct yeah so the correct trading style for any kind of um leverage trade is that when you're in profit you take enough profit into resistance you take enough profit so that if the trade goes wrong and you get invalidated, that you don't lose, yeah? Because you've taken enough profit to cover the loss, yeah? That's the correct trading style. There's no way, there's other ways to do it, but this is the correct way, yeah? There's other correct ways, but this one will, will save you from a lot of headache in the future. Even if you think this is this could be the bottom and the price is going to 95K. If you think this is the bottom, and you don't want to take profit at the very least set to break even don't take a loss yeah every trade every winning trade that becomes a losing trade is a bad trade yeah you're not a, in a good trade if a winning trade becomes a bad trade does that make sense so at the very least set to break even i've just taken profit just now i just took it okay I took profit. I'm not greedy. I'm okay with 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 a with a. I'm happy. You know, I'm not. Even though it's a swing trade idea, we're coming into the rewrap. I'm going to take profit. You know, it's not a big deal. The price could go up more. I'm okay with that. That just protects my my trade from going wrong. Does that make sense? Which rewrap are we using? Um, but I mean, look, I'm not telling you what to do like everyone has to make up their own don't take a loss on the winning trade that's that's the, that's my uh that's really important i don't know this one <laughs> it says hlc3 i don't know actually the correct vwap that i use uh is the one from exo that's a better vwap what does that say Yeah, we're at the VWAP. Yeah, look, there it is. And the good thing about the VWAP is if you go above it and you come back down and it finds support on the VWAP, you can just add again. So it's an easy kind of area to see um, support and resistance. So I just took profit. I wasn't going to mess around. I don't mess around with these trades. It's a successful trade. I'm happy that I won the trade. Move on to the next trade. It's hard finding good trades. So when you find a good trade and you, t you keep on... If you find that if you find a if you're in a bad trade but you take profit then you you've basically turned a bad trade into a good trade that's my point yeah because a lot of the time you're going to get into a situation where your you, 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 your trade goes up and then it goes down a lot of the time yeah and so it's a bad trade if you don't take profit because you could have taken profit before it went down if you didn't 
have that former bias that it was just going to go up now i'm not talking about this trading i'm just talking about general so it's definitely a good idea to take profit look you're getting a little bit of reaction on the vwap why is that because people will take profit off the vwap you know traders will do it doesn't mean that that's going to reject there it just means that it's a good place to take profit all right so i'm not telling people what to do i'm just saying this is what traders do so if you want to be a good trader a professional trader you will take profit at the vwap and if you don't then you won't <laughs> uh that being said because it's a swing trade idea you may not take that much profit you may just take a little bit just to protect your initial trade because we are in a potential of a swing trade yeah uh, and therefore you might be thinking to yourself well i'm not going to take that much profit because i'll take a little bit just to protect my position my trade so and the good thing about taking profit is that it just means that you you don't have to have a stop at break even let's say you enter that 69 there you take a little bit of profit it means your stop is can be a little bit wider without taking a loss does that make sense um it, it wasn't easy this trade and that, obviously the entry was much lower when we um had this last swing failure that was the entry yeah it's good to take profit at the view it's just good practice to do that uh, and then you don't have actually once you've taken profit the vwap you might never take profit again until you reach your higher targets yeah because at least you've taken profit what if this is a swing trade well just let it run then until 95k if you want <laughs> uh it's no I'm, I'm not really fussed about that honestly i just think it's good to take profit and it pays back for some of the losses <laughs> that sucks All right, now that I think we might have made a bottom, I'm going to buy some TRVL. <laughs> or something else. Just trying to figure out how this works. Some elite wave fans suggest for further drops. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't look. It's not about belief. It's about risk management, right? If you have good risk management, it doesn't really matter if the low is in or not. What matters is that you make a successful trade, you take your profit, and then you move on to the next trade. Yeah, belief is irrelevant. If you're looking to buy spot, this is a good place to buy spot. Yeah. If you're looking to trade, then we've executed the trade. We took a swing failure. We took profit at the VWAP. That's fine. That's a, We took one loss earlier on we made one win okay hopefully that balances out and we're in profit and that was successful i've been here for like nearly nine hours today i only took two trades okay one was a loss one was a win and i'm still in that trade because i've taken my profit so if this is the swing then i'm gonna make a significant more on that trade i'm just been we've just been following it all morning yeah even though the market we could have made a lot of money shorting because of the location of where we're heading to, I was looking to long, okay? And that's what I've been doing all day. Now, when it comes to your question about Elliott Waves, well, look, I've got Elliott Waves. Uh, I'm, I'm by no means the master. Honestly, 
I'm just a student like everyone else. We're always learning. Yeah. And one thing I've learned about Ellie Waves is no one is the master. <laughs> I've heard so many people say different things on different streams about the same thing. Yeah. And what I've learned is that it's all, it's all quite subjective. And ultimately, you have to learn it for yourself and do your own analysis to, to verify uh, whether people's ideas are right or wrong. And it is quite subjective. And also, a new data creates new developing ideas, yeah? So, whereas right up here, like up here when we bounce, I thought possibly we're about to go up and form the next wave five. And I thought maybe four was complete. And that was wrong. The correction continued. Okay. And the, the thing about Elliott Waves is there's always a bearish count. There's always a bullish count. There's a corrective count. And then there's a continuation count for the bullish impulse. Yeah. And it's not always easy to know if we've started the impulse yet because sometimes impulsive behavior looks sometimes corrective behavior looks quite impulsive yeah that's the problem um because people behave they long and they short at the same time so looking at this behavior i mean it looks quite impulsive but it wasn't impulsive it was corrective so actually what we're looking for is more of an impulsive move like this like this and like that it's quite easy to see in hindsight it's not always easy to see um in the moment when you're taking trades and when you're analyzing okay i honestly think this could be it i i just think that i don't really see any reason why we should go down like i need a reason why there's massive bullish divergences where there i see higher time frame absorption um from limit longs absorbing um the price if you look at if i show you on exo charts on the higher time frame yeah we've been in this range for a while now and you see the cvd is going down like crazy and effectively the price has gone sideways yeah so there's a lot of selling in this upper range that cvd shows a lot of selling and what I'm seeing is that we're still range bound. We're still going sideways. We're not really going down. Uh, and so I don't really have a reason why we should go down. I, I can't. Have, we've we've seen a lot of liquidations today. And the price just hasn't, hasn't really gone down. Yeah. So you see these liquidation bubbles. These are This is market selling. Selling, selling, selling. Uh, and the price hasn't gone down. Really hasn't gone down. It's kind of struggled to go down. I, I'm not like, I need a reason to know why we're going down. I don't have that reason. Um, I don't have that reason at the moment. Um, and usually when the price is bearish, Bitcoin goes up or when people are bearish. So that's usually what happens. And it's always easy to see in hindsight. It's harder to see when it's happening right um but i've been on stream all day and i've been looking out for this low and look at it we took we took this trade together you know there's i'm not making this up um it happened before our eyes okay i took one loss and i i've made one win today in just live on this stream yeah. it's normal okay uh so i don't know i don't know if we're gonna go and i think that's the re that's the real answer who knows no one really knows no one really knows until after it happens are we going lower i don't know is this a good area to form a low yes that's the real question you should be asking is this a, is this the low i don't know i really have no idea i might write it on my uh, stream on my kind of images just so it's a bit it's a little bit of a catch bait uh clickbait but the reality is no one really knows what's going to happen in the markets no one really knows if the price goes up or down all i can tell you is 
areas good areas to buy and good areas to sell because technically there might be support and there might be resistance and a large portion of that knowledge comes from knowing where the liquidity is and so when i analyze i'm always looking for the areas of liquidity and then also i'm looking for fibonacci areas of confluence so you see right now i've got lots of thick double lines uh, because this is based on trend base uh, fib which I've calculated based on my Elliott wave count and um, basically using my Elliott waves uh, I was able to call the top at 73 uh, I didn't know it was the top I knew that that was a good place to sell <laughs> uh, on one of my streams I even just marked a box off and before it happened and I said this is the sell zone and that happened to be the top and I did take that short I took it with David I should have held on to it for longer <laughs> in hindsight uh hindsight is always clear in 2020 whatever you call it but actually it was quite interesting because David and I we were we shorted up this rise um, we missed that one, I think. And we shorted that. We shorted that swing failure. As the price came down, we shorted it. Uh, and we should have probably held it longer, David, to be honest with you. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> That's a lesson to be learned. So I'm not that a good, great trader because I didn't hold on to that trade. Um, and then the reason why... I don't hold on to trades is because I know I can find new trades. So because of that confidence, I'm not too, too fast um, in letting go of trades, but I should really hold on to them for a bit longer. Uh, so we're kind of finding a little bit of resistance under the VWAP. Uh, we've created a change in five minute time frame market structure. We've had a little bit of a short, squeeze where shorts have had to close uh, at market um right now the the market structure is like this this is the higher lows uh and that's a higher high now so as long as i'm just trying to think Technic technically that's this is the low that's the wait let me think no 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 hold on let me just work this out no lows low lows lower low no low 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 let me just do this again let me just work this out that was your lower low that was your lower high. Okay. That's your higher high. No, incorrect, my bad. This is your lower high. This is your lower low. This is your higher high. That was your first higher high. Okay. So you see what happened. So we put in a, a lower high here. That was your lower high here. We made a lower low here. Okay. Then we put in a lower high here. Then we put in a lower low there. So let me just do this from the beginning. So people understand how this works. Uh, so you can understand why we've exploded upwards. Okay, look. So as the price is going down, you're looking at the highs and the lows. And that's your lower high. Then it goes down to make a lower low. Where's the lower low after you put in that lower high? Well, the next lower low is here. Where's the next lower high? Well, the next lower high is here because then you make a lower low that becomes your lower low this price action is the first time we take out this lower high so that becomes your first higher high 
And then what happened was we put in a higher low and confirmation of market structure change in a five minute time frame was making a higher high, was, was taking out that higher high. Yeah. So it went from lower low to higher high and we took it out. Yeah. Lower low, sorry, lower highs, lower highs to lower high to taking it out to high high. And here we've, uh, And these are higher lows now. So basically that's our higher high. We've made a new higher high now. That's our high, new higher high now. Look, it's, it's, it's consolidating underneath the VWAP. It probably wants to go through. Um, this is our higher low. So actually, technically, even if we come like this, we're still bullish. It wouldn't look great. <laughs> but as long as you don't come back to take out that low, you're fine. Yeah, like it would still be, it would still be okay. If that was to happen, it would still be okay. Obviously you don't want it to happen. And the reason why you don't want it to happen was, is because then you'd be losing this kind of this neckline idea. Um, and it was a bit of a rounding bottom, wasn't it? Like I, I said, it was a little bit of a rounding bottom. So I thought that if we, cross that line there'll be a little bit of a squeeze so i think that was uh that was good look we're going above the vwap now so yeah i think um it's a good place to take profit you see that now the, this is the thing if you want to put your compound your profit because you see the price going up then wait wait for the price to go up and wait for the price to come back to the vwap and if you see that it's finding support you can put your profit back in, but at the VWAP after the price has sold into the VWAP. Okay. So you don't have to chase the price thinking it's going to go to the moon because you've only, you're still in, you haven't sold everything. You've only protected your trade. But now what you can do is you can wait for the price to go up. And then in the future, whenever the price comes back down, if you see that it's back into the VWAP and it finds support on the VWAP, then you can compound it. It might be higher up, like that's that's the risk. You might have to put higher up, but at least you're safe. At least you're protecting your investments and you have a really easy invalidation because if the VWAP is now going up and the price is going up and then the price comes back down and you compound on the VWAP, you add on the VWAP, and if you see that you lose the VWAP, then you have a really easy invalidation. You can just close out, yeah? Because that's not what you want to see. You're expecting the price to come back to the VWAP to go up. So you're expecting the price to flip the VWAP. Now, I'm not saying the price is going to go all the way up there. Uh, it could just do that and go up. Or you could lose it. But the reason why the VWAP is a good place to take profit is because it's an easy place to put your profit back in to your trade. Uh, it just protects your trade because it means that um, it means that you're taking because you could always find resistance at the VWAP and reject. That's the reason why you do that. OK, uh, it is a swing trade. So I, I don't think people maybe took so much profit, but it does protect your trade. <clears throat> All right. So that was a pretty uh in interesting day today huh we've had a i don't know if anyone's been here for for a long time but that was quite interesting huh we caught that bottom live on stream that's pretty exciting <laughs> pretty excited about that maybe this is the pico bottom we caught that on stream yeah we're back above the rear. we're into the previous day point of control we're into resistance now so I don't necessarily think it's going to go up in a straight line. Uh, maybe we have to back test the VWAP a little bit, find support. You can see now the price is coming back to the VWAP. If you find the price is finding support on the VWAP, if you want to, you could add a bit more, add back in. Yeah. If you want to, you could totally do that. That's not, let's see that. Look, this is the five minute time frame. If you see, that you've got candles respecting the VWAP, 
<clears throat> then you've just protected yourself because you've protected yourself from a rejection and you don't lose much because you took profit at the VWAP. Now that if you see that the price is finding support at the VWAP, if you see it starts to go up, you can just add right back in or you can just add a little bit. All right. So it's a good place, you see, and it actually looking at these five minute candles, you can clearly see that the VWAP is being um, respected. There's respect. So it's not a bad place. Like if you want to just add back in a little bit, um, it's not a bad place. <laughs> David, I just saw the video you sent me, uh, Daniel from C. He's an idiot, really, isn't he? I don't know what to say about him. Like, he's so smart, but he's just so confident. And he needs to be a little bit more humble. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh... Go to the moon. That's what we want to the moon all right i'm going to add a little bit more here because i can clearly see that there's a little bit of a support forming i'm not going to go crazy i don't like to go crazy by adding it means i'm bringing up my initial position um but that's fine because we're under the vwap if we lose the vwap i'll i'll probably scale back again yeah so i don't expect that to happen but if it happens, I'm fully, I've got, a, I've got a plan in mind. <coughs> I don't want to do, overdo it. I just bought a little bit more. Oh, sugar, I bought too much. Oh my God, I overdid it. Overkill. <laughs> All right, never mind. That's fine. If we lose the VWAP, I will. The good thing is that if the VWAP is now holding a support uh, and all our positions are lower than the VWAP, uh, if the price trends up now and it uses the VWAP to support, then we're going to be in a really good position. Yeah. So that's something to consider. Yeah. But we have to hold the VWAP as support. If we, if I, if we lose it as support now, uh, then. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. It's all, it's always good to take profit, you know. Don't don't ever don't ever think it's a bad idea to take profit. It's always good to take profit. Always take profit and look to the next trade. Um you, I can see that some people were selling and the key now is not to lose it. And actually I kind of wouldn't mind to see a little bit of a reaction. Um if we lose it, this is the question. Yeah, but it doesn't look like we're losing it now. Look, it looks like we have a little, there's a little bit of respect. Um, see that? It looks okay right now. Let's have a look at, um, but then look, you see that? Could lose it straight away. If someone shorts, if someone longs, It may take some time to play out. Yeah. It looks okay, huh? It doesn't look too bad right now. Don't want to lose it. Got to let it play out a little bit. And then the other thing I wanted to see is did we take the pivot over here? Um... So look, we are kind of losing it a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to wait. Wait for this to play out a little bit.
That's why you don't want to go crazy putting all your profit back in. You just want to scale back in slowly and see what happens. If, if that's your idea, you don't want to just put it all back in and assume that it's going to go up just because uh, one candle held. Uh, it's always better when you're kind of compounding to kind of scale back in. And that way you're not ruining your initial position too much yeah, after you've taken profit. I overdid it. <laughs> it's all right. It's not a problem. Fat thumbs, fat fingers. Oh, is it DX? You're saying you're saying DXY is hitting some support. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at DXY. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Amazing, huh? We just did that together. And look, I've got the, yeah. Look. We just did that together, didn't we? Maybe we see a, like a, a, a little bit more of a higher time frame uh, head and shoulders pattern here. That's very possible. Um, what time is it? It's uh, seven thirty-three. So we've just completed a thirty-minute candle. Let me just have a look at that. I don't always leave. That closed above the VWAP. We're coming back down for liquidity. Uh, I'm not quite fond of this, <laughs> but what can I say? Yeah. That's why you don't go crazy. Now, looking at the five minute time frame right now, and especially since we've gone above the VWAP and come back under the VWAP, okay? I'm going to give this a little bit more time, but honestly, I don't think I want to see a five minute close underneath these wick, um, underneath these wicks. Yeah. Maybe this is going to kind of do this a little bit before it figures out. Uh, so that's kind of my, in my mind, I'm just making that idea up. If I see that f fall and close underneath there, then I won't like that. I'm not going to appreciate that. Then that's fine. It just means that you'll probably better to take out what you put back in um, you don't want to reclaim it and then lose it it's like watching paint dry <laughs> there's no edge here now we've taken the trades the rest is just managing your trade yeah so i wouldn't get too emotional about it it's always best to just set set so you don't take a loss and just think about the next trade all right i don't like the way that's dropping let's see what happens but the good thing is that we took profit <laughs> at the vweb that's the main thing <laughs> Yeah, taking profit out of the VWAP. All right, uh, let's have a look at some other things uh, while that plays out. TRVL. Oh, God, look at Slurf. Woo! Damn! All right, so... Slurf is looking like it wants to go to the moon right now. I think if I if we can get a back test on the POC, I'll be interested in the long on that. Um, 
and have a look here. Where's the volume levels? So we're kind of crossing the point, the range point of control right now. Um, slightly lower. Right. So what I'll be looking for on Slurf is a back test on a slightly like a medium time frame on the range point of control. I think it'd be very weird to lead, to lead, to cross the range point of control and never to come back. Yeah. I think that would be very weird. I'm not really expecting that. If that happens, then I've missed it and I don't really care, but I'm not really expecting that. So I'd rather wait for the price to do what it's doing. We'll go wherever it wants to go, but I, I'll wait for it to come back to the range point of control. I want to see that it, confirms the support that way at least i know that most of the volume is underneath us and then i'm i'll be looking to take along that way i also i'm not looking because because i'm a bit i was a bit annoyed about the way the whales manipulated this so at the very least if you buy on the range point of control on a back test then that kind of gives you a little bit of uh, a little bit of a safety net the safety net is the volume underneath you so that's kind of what I'm looking for on Slurf. Definitely not interested in chasing the pump. Um, definitely not, not interested at all. all. Right. So that's just kind of my Slurf. Let's have a look at Bitcoin again. Gee. All right, sorry, I had to speak to someone. Um, let me have a look at the VWAP again. All right, so it's not looking great. Um, but that's fine because we took profit, right? That's all that matters. Uh, let me just change it to XO and see what that says. Where is it? That's a big short that just entered there. Okay. So as we lost the VWAP, can you see that someone shorted like a 1.3 million increase in a, the, the, the balance is with the, with the sellers. You see that? So that's quite interesting. So someone shorted the VWAP and that's normal behavior. You'd expect that. You'd expect that kind of behavior. Um, so I'm just scaling back now. Uh, I, I'm not really fast. I like taking profit <laughs> and moving on to the next trades, even though it's a swing. The reason why I'll do that is just because what if we go down? I'm quite mindful of that. Uh, and the reason why I'm mindful of that is because uh, I'm looking for a higher low. Yeah. So I'm not really too fussed about, you know, trying to hold on to a trade that much. Different people have their styles, different styles. Maybe this is the higher low right now and we go up. But that would be good because then all you have to do is just wait for it to go up, wait for it to back test again and you can long again. Yeah. But I'm not like looking to mess about with uh, being in a heavily positioned long if we suddenly find the VWAP holding as resistance, take more profit, and then can add it back if we get a pullback um, to make a higher low. I'll be, I'll be thinking about a higher low. Um, but, you know, no one can predict the price action. You just have to... You just have to take it as it comes, as you see things happen. So like, look, look, we're, as long as we hold the VWAP as resistance, um, then it's possible we could come down a little bit to try it, to try and make a higher low. It could be any one of these fibs, but obviously the golden pocket is the best one. 
this could i mean i'm not saying it's happening right now i don't want to freak people out especially because everyone has hopefully taken profit but there's a little bit of head and shoulders the mini head and shoulders forming here it has to click break this neckline of this 236 which is now holding the price at the moment and it'll be easy to just long because we just have to go back above the vwap and flip it flip it into support it, it didn't really hold the support as much as i'd hoped uh and so that's something to bear in mind i can see some longs entering now so that's uh just have to keep an eye on that and um see what happens There you go, that's some longing now. Uh, let's see if the VWAP holds as support or not. Uh, resistance is not or not. Let's see if shorts open or not here. This is the question. But I mean, it's you have to you have to bear in mind that five minute market structure has changed to bullish. Yeah. So it's one thing shorting when the market structure is bearish. It's another thing shorting when the market structure is bullish and maybe that short is a hedge it is possible that that's just a hedge and someone has got a larger position lower down and they're just hedging themselves that's very possible right so it's looking okay right now but we're still not back above the vwap and you have to bear that in mind and we just have to wait and see um Oh God, there's some more typing. DS to support. I'm still in, baby. <laughs> All right, DXY, huh? Well done. There you go. Look, it's showing a bit of strength. What's the DXY saying? Well, we're still, DXY is still above uh, that fib level that I have. So let's see how that plays out. It's obviously just, it's a bit of a falling knife right now, the DXY. Um, that's what I'm seeing. So it will take some time for the DXY to find support. Uh, and that's having a direct reflection on Bitcoin, probably. Uh, but I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't long here. I'd wait, again, I'd wait for the same thing. I'd wait to, it's perfectly good trade to long the VWAP. You know, even without all, of, even if someone has missed all of this lower move, yeah. Uh, if we get back above the VWAP, you have an invalidation, back test the VWAP, that's your trade. You know, you have a perfectly acceptable uh, trade plan there. Yeah, but all you want to do is you want to see the VWAP hold as support. That's all you want. So we're back above it now. So that's good to see. And if it holds us as support, you can uh, you could potentially take a, a long. And if we take out that high, then that's your higher high. This is your higher low. Okay. So if we find support here, I'm looking at the three minute time frame. One minute fib is tearing it up. I'm looking at the... Uh, the five minute, the three minute time frame. Let me go to the five minute. Yeah. Uh, maybe the three minute is better because we'll get more faster data. But ideally, what you want to do is you want to back test the VWAP, find support, and then take out that pivot high. Yeah. If you do that, then you've made a higher high. This is your higher low. And hopefully, we're going to go up further. That's kind of what you would be expecting. And you'd kind of, you'd invalidate these shorts and squeeze those shorts. So right now you see, we're trying to hold the VWAP. We're trying to hold it, but we're not yet there. Uh, you could also zoom into the one minute if you're really interested. Um, but actually you see that it's not easy to see of the one minute because it flings around. The reason why you want to wait for the back test is because you want to see the reaction just in case it just flops like that yeah you don't want to just buy into a flop you want to wait for a, a, some kind of candle closure to show you that there's some respect uh, and sometimes it doesn't work but at least sometimes it does 
so you don't prematurely jump in thinking this is going to go up you just want to wait for a little back test uh, of the vwap all right so we just kind of still here <laughs> still waiting I'll go back to uh, exo charts and um, see what the exo charts are saying. Oh, I am on exo charts. My bad. It's hard because I have to have the screen in front of me. So this is the potential trade plan. Um, that could be the higher low. Uh, that's the higher high. That needs to be taken out. High, high. This could be the higher low. Then we just need to go up and squeeze those shorts. Okay. If not, this is still our higher low because we haven't made a new higher high. Yeah. So at the moment, this is our higher high. Okay. This is our higher low. We might be putting a higher low here. We might not. We just have to see what happens. So you're basically going from a high low all the way to a higher high. And now we have to make a higher low. And the only way that you know that you've made a higher low is by putting in a higher low and then taking out the, the higher high. Yeah. So that could happen here. Or it can happen much, much lower down. Yeah. But then you still have to take out that higher high. It doesn't matter where, how far you come down. The objective it's still that high it's still to make a higher high and then bullish market structure continues but remember this is on the five minute time frame you can you can you can apply that idea to every single time frame yeah so you can go into every single time frame and like okay in the 15 minute time frame well no it's not the same on the 15 minute time frame we haven't made a higher high yet yeah and that's the problem like for continuation what you need is you need to make a higher high and a higher low on every single time frame. Um, let me do it on the 30 minute because that's probably better. You see on the 30 minute time frame, this is the lower high to a lower low here. So it kind of went from there all the way down to here, all the way up to there all the way down to here so on the 30 minute time frame if you want to if we want to make a higher high to change market structure we have to take out that pivot then we have to make a higher low and then we have to take out the the new higher high uh it's always the same it's the, there's no there's no um it's <laughs> four million he should be in profit now david i just saw what you posted there's no reason to think that this is going to go to the moon that's why you take profit yeah you have to remember that yeah there's no reason to think this is going to go to the moon until we change market structure so the market structure that we've just changed is a five minute time frame market structure. Uh, and f what I'm really interested in is the four hour. OK, so this is the four hour time frame. All right. I'll just get rid of these fibs now. Get rid of that training idea. And let me just hide this EW stuff. Uh, and. You can see we've just made a lower low on the four hour time frame. Yeah. So that becomes our lower high. That was our lower high. Uh, high, low, high, low, low. 
lower high no it's that one the top one that's not a lower high it's that one that's the problem with bitcoin right now our lower high is quite high <laughs> up there we have to get all the way up to 66 67 000 to take out the higher the lower high the reason why that's the lower high is because um this wasn't the lower high because we didn't make a lower low here yeah so you go from lower low to lower high to lower low see that so lower high to there so if you want to zigzag it if i draw it in zigzags from the top just so you guys understand what i'm saying it goes from a lower high to a lower low yeah and you just follow that idea so And you can start it on the way up so it got to there here was the first lower low here okay <clears throat> actually made a lower low here as well so probably here and then here as it came back up it made the lower high that's the lower high then it took out the lower low here so that was a change in market structure then it made a lower high and then it made a, a lower low here and this is a lower high here that's it there and now we've made a lower low here okay and so actually we have to the four hour time frame has to get to sixty seven thousand to make a higher high so the chances of that happening aren't that high <laughs> Just be honest, you know, like it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the price of Bitcoin right now. You really need a, a massive squeeze up to get there. And so what needs to happen potentially could happen. And I don't want to prepare people for the worst. Is another lower low. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. That's kind of what you would need to do, I think. It make it a lot easier. Because right now the higher high the lower high is there you kind of need a bit it needs to be a little bit lower <laughs> and then you need to make a lower low and then you can take out that high so i am actually thinking now if we don't see massive continuation on the way the price is moving that we could possibly round to make another dip and let me tell you something. The problem that we're going to be experiencing soon is is momentum change. You know, like we have to be aware of that. So, if the price keeps on dipping, uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a really negative momentum. Um, I'm not expecting it. Actually, a Bitcoin halving is a supply shock. Why would it go down? It makes no sense. Uh, and and david you know you were saying that daniel thinks it's going down you know what that means that means it's going up i mean you know that you know what that means if he says it's going down it's going up okay so this is the reason why you take profit look at that and that is exactly the reason why um you uh you don't long unless you see a back test um yeah you see that and you could also short that let's not let's not let's not be let's not there is a short potential there too like losing the vwap or not is also short potential <clears throat> that would be a hedge um, and then you'd be looking to take it down to the golden pocket
it'd be a lot better to short the VWAP. <laughs> it's quite a wide invalidation. I wouldn't just short red candles like that. It would have been better to short it as soon as we came back underneath it. Um, so I'm just saying that the VWAP is important, <laughs> which you can see now it is. Yeah. I hope everyone watching can see that. Like we called it, the VWAP is a good place to take profit. And look, we had a reaction. Um, so yeah, so there's plenty of room to, to form a higher low. I think that would be more preferable to do that. But again, the problem is that on the four hour time frame, um, it's very difficult to make a higher high. It's at wherever I said, 69,000, wherever it was, 67,000 up there. So it's probably a lot easier if we go down and make a lower low now, it'll probably be a lot easier to change market structure if we take out the low one more time. I don't want to like say that's going to happen, but you know, I'm just saying it'll be easier. All right, so I hope that's been entertaining. <laughs> I think it's time for me to go. Huh? Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like uh, look, Slurf is. Kind of bummed about Slurf because I didn't re-enter so annoying uh it's life huh what's that one uh, okay that's fine that's okay then. if it quakes oh look at that it's just come right back up good void void is rallying wow a lot of altcoins are rallying, huh? Interesting. Um, what's Cake doing? Oh, not very liquid. What's Optimism? Well, look at that. And this one's rallying too. So they're kind of following Bitcoin a little bit. Like once that low was made, a lot of value came back into the altcoins. That's actually quite dangerous because <laughs> if the value is leaving Bitcoin, when Bitcoin needs to make higher prices uh then you could see bitcoin drop and then the altcoins will pull back again okay <laughs> short stream <laughs> look craig i've been um we've been we took this long and we took two longs and we were trying to catch the bottom right so it takes time huh? it takes time to trade you can't just trade <laughs> two minutes um it was fun. I feel like uh, I can't leave, but I really need to go now because it's late and I haven't eaten. And I've been streaming for a shit long time. Amazing. And look at that. Harmonic bounce. Perfect. Let's have a look at Iota. Oh, God. It's still correcting. A, B, C. Yeah, you you got to wait for a back test to hold that. It almost did, but it lost it immediately. Point of control is the problem. Um, it's still good to go up, huh? Iota. I think everything depends on Bitcoin right now. Let's have a look at Arkham.
see if BTC doing. It's up a bit. That's why the altcoins are going up, see? Because if BTC is going up, uh, that's really the reason why. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. Thank God for the VWAP, huh? Thank God for taking profit. Yeah, imagine if, uh, imagine if we never took profit. There was no profit taken. It would be very annoying, huh? You have a long position in near coin entry 6.35 USDT. UST. You want to hedge near? Near is a beast. <clears throat> oh. Gosh, much higher, huh? 6.35. Oh. Why did you buy why did you buy it at 6.35? I have it coming into resistance. I think I think you shouldn't worry, honestly. We're just about Bitcoin's about to have I don't know. I have near on uh the wave three. Um it's coming to the value area, is it left the value area high and now it's coming back to find support um honestly i think it could be trying to find support for the next wave that's what it looks like the thing about hedging is you have to hedge at the top you don't hedge into support yeah it, that doesn't really make any sense as the price is right the lows to hedge um if you go the the way to hedge is okay so this is the way to hedge right you have higher time lip time frame levels so for example up here i've got this yearly level right as the price goes up that's the hedge you take it you hedge yeah you don't wait for the price to drop and then hedge you take the hedge on the level exactly on the level you sell some <laughs> or buy some or short or whatever and that's your hedge so if the price does go down you're hedged but it has to be at the right level and if the price goes up then you're expecting it to come back down to the same level before it continues yeah so that's why it's called the hedge you're hedging just in case the price goes down same idea of the VWAP so I don't know how you would hedge as the price is dropped underneath you know, I'm not quite sure how you would hedge. Like, you would have to scale back some of your position at a loss. And then you'd have to put it back. That's basically what a hedge is. It's, you'd have to, you have this VAH here. Like, I mean, what I'm looking at this, like, and it could happen. It, Bitcoin halvings in a couple of days. We could see an explosion. But you have this neckline here. 
you could sell some at a loss and then if it goes up you could put it back in and that would be your loss that's your hedge that loss is your hedge yeah so if it goes down whatever you sold you can put back in lower so you're making value in near but honestly i think that's the wrong strategy if you have to hedge because the price is dropping it means you're not accumulating and you don't have enough fiat to accumulate as your price dips so i think you're you've got too much value in if you have to hedge um like this after you've entered i think the safest play is just to wait um i don't have this going down honestly i have this going up but um it's just being patient now the minute you start playing around with your trade oh if btc breaks support well So you have to identify the support that you are thinking about when you're thinking about BTC breaking support. Uh, and then you have to have a plan. What support are you thinking about when you're thinking about support? Because at the moment, we're at the range low. Um, that's the range low. That's the range high. We're in the range. Yeah. We're range bound between the high and the low. We're at the range low, right? And... If BTC was to break support, it's not going to just like I think it will take some time. Like I don't like I don't see it happening that quickly because I see a lot of absorption in the market, you know, like I don't know. I mean, it is forming some kind of ugly shape. Um, it's Bitcoin, isn't it? It can fake out so many times. I don't know I, I can't tell I can't give you an answer I like I mean for me with 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 my spot positions I'm not looking to sell if if Bitcoin breaks support even if I lose 95% value I'm looking to buy more lower yeah I don't have a strategy to sell until alt season next year yeah that's my higher time frame strategy to sell i'm waiting for alt season yeah and bitcoin goes through these stages where people feel bearish and the prices drop and it's depressing i think you have a if you have a strategy to buy every dip then you won't get into that you won't worry about you'll just be dollar costing averaging i mean that's that's the safest strategy honestly i don't think it's a good idea to to do what you're suggesting and you might be right if bitcoin drops this could drop well look you basically you're taking a loss by selling the best time to sell right would be now because we're back into the vah the, the value area high and you'd have to have a really tight validation something like that and then the hedge would be to take a loss you'd have to take a loss now um but the problem is it's not a really good place to sell because it hasn't really tested the neckline yet so you may get a test first it's still kind of underneath the value area h and this is because of bitcoin i think near is quite strong honestly i'm looking at the price action now and it's looking quite strong to me it's not looking weak um there was a liquidity level here which we've cleared with a swing failure there was a buy up there was a take profit this is the buy up this buy up now has taken the liquidity off this low here you know when the sellers struggle to push the price down eventually what happens is the price comes back up um i think if the bears were fully in control after losing this vah this value area high i think you'd see more downsides like already, I don't think the, the price would just be lingering here. 
because um, if you look at this pattern it's it doesn't look prettier it's not a pretty pattern you'd see like a real sell-off and i'm not seeing that right now you've lost like some major levels and you're not seeing that sell-off in fact what you're seeing is the price finding support here that's what's happening at the moment there's an sr flip in play um if you lose that sr flip then you could probably sell it'd be a lot safer to sell losing that um because then and you're probably looking for a close like a higher time frame close um maybe 12 hours or four hours or something like that four hours is a bit is a bit low um that's your line in the sand that's your sr flip maybe a, a slightly higher time frame close underneath that level The problem is the price could easily swing failure this pivot and come right back that's the problem yeah but at least with a sr flip like that you have a very definite line that needs to be crossed and uncrossed to decide what you're going to do um with your position you also have that with the vah uh, let me just update the value area high now It's fine. It's right. These are all okay. I think near is bullish at AF, honestly. I, I don't think you should worry about buying up there. 6.5. You really bought at a bad place. Huh? um i'm just trying to calculate these waves for you actually just now i haven't done it yet so let me just see What's interesting is that the three day type candle closed above the value area high. You see that? So we're still in the three day candle. It closes in four hours. Um, what you really want to see is a higher time frame back test to confirm an SR flip on the value area high. I think until you see that, you, you're just going to have to be a little bit patient. Um, all that's uh, all that's actually happened is you've kind of back tested this SR flip at the moment. So that's like holding support. Um, it's not easy to do counts on this one. This was this. This is the one, two, three, four, five. This behavior is slightly different. Potentially what I'm looking at, I'm not really going to count it, but I'm thinking to myself, one, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm thinking right now. 
right? I don't know 100%. Um, but to kind of go into the waves and count them, and I, I'm not really going to spend time doing that. Um, let me just see if the fibs will work. I think it's I think there's a quite a strong support here. It's like a 50% of this fallback. You've got the previous pivot. It's quite a strong support. Um we don't have much volume here. That's the only that's the biggest problem. And most of the volume is down here. Okay, that's fine. I think you're fine, huh? Honestly, I've just look. We've got a lot of interesting confluence here. From the from where the bull market began here, we did a volume range pull, and you see that you have uh, this value area high, which is also an SR flip. And also, if you do a fib pull from this pivot here. Um, from this pivot all the way to the high that was put in you can see that the 50% mark also corresponds on the same area so you have the value area high of the the, the, the bull market volume plus you've got the 50% from this pivot to there plus you've got um, and some kind of pivot pivot SR flip um, so there's a little bit of confluence there, which gives me, uh, which you, that could give you a little bit of confidence in that level. Obviously lower is better, but you don't really want to lose that pivot. And then let me just uh, see if there's any trend lines as well. There might be some trend lines too. So let me just have a look for you. I mean, we're at a very important one now. It's finding support. But it's that you kind of want it to to lose to leave that area. I'm not sure of trend lines. It's hard to know because these it does over. It's not very accurate. Um. Look here. What was that level before? That one, isn't it?
I think if I think this needs to go up, obviously. I don't think this is a good place to be. Yeah. Even though this looks quite um this could be yeah, it doesn't really look bullish, you know. Look, we've just we've dropped, we're consolidating underneath a loss level, which is the value area high. It's not really a good place to be. For sure this could this could go lower. But here. <laughs> Because this is quite an important area, yeah. It's four point about four point six. I think that's quite an important area, and you may get into a situation where it drops, takes the low here, and goes right back up. Um. So, if you want to hedge, hedge now, yeah, hedge now, and if you get back above the value area high, you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to buy back in so you don't lose the losses you don't lose the losses or what yeah and if that's why people use derivatives because they can short they can have spot you can have spot on on near and then using derivatives you can short the same value and that's your hedge so if the price goes down you're making money on your derivatives and if the price goes up you'll get stopped out of your short and you could have your invalidation above these daily highs, yeah? Because that would be quite bullish to go up. So by the time you go up, you want to be stopped out of your trade. That's kind of the only real way to do it right now. This is the right place because we're underneath the value area high. The problem is that I actually think this is bullish. <laughs> Even though it looks bearish, I still think it's bullish. It's hard for me to explain why. Um, I just think it should have gone down after we had this kind of, it looks like a really ugly head and shoulders. It's not because it's the shoulders are smaller. So it's more like, a, it's actually more like some kind of, something like that. dropped and i think that pattern's complete now because <laughs> you've kind of come the distance do you see what i'm saying and we've test back tested support even though we've lost the value area high i think that's just bitcoin and i don't know i'm, I'm not like crazy bearish on this no and it, and context is really important and i think the other thing that I'm seeing here is in this wick, the price has failed to close underneath the wick of this drop candle. So it is actually just range bound here. And it could be bearish volume for sure. It could be. Uh, and if Bitcoin dumps, we could go down, but then possibly just down to here. Um, that's what I'm thinking. All right. I don't know. It's a little bit complicated. Yeah. Um, it's hot, you know, like. It's hard because on one hand you want to hold spot and not mess about with it. And on the other hand, you want to trade it. And most people who trade spot lose their spot in the process of trading it because of fear and because of greed. Right. And not ex like because you sell and you're, you're, you're afraid that the price is going to go up. So you're firmer back in higher and then the price comes back down. Yeah. So, you know, someone sold, let's say, say someone sold here. They were right. The price was going down, but they ended up buying here <laughs> and the price went down. That's what happens. You know, like you're looking at a price action. You, you, you see, you see that from the high to the here, you see it's coming into the golden pocket. You can see that. So you can see it's finding resistance. So you sell. Okay. Then you see this kind of the price action bounce. This is really looks like very V-shapey. You go, oh my God, this is really bullish. Buy back in. 
all it does is it goes to the golden pocket and then dumps you know so it's very deceptive reacting you have to have a plan beforehand yeah and the most important plan is where to where your idea is invalidated and where you're going to be taking profit okay now if you're looking to hedge that's kind of like taking profit yeah hedging is like taking profit just in case the market pulls back and you have to figure out the time frame that you're going to hedge on um are you going to hedge on are you going to hedge throughout for the duration of the bull market or are you looking to just hedge at key intervals at major intervals okay there's a lot of lines here so let me just get rid of them and focus it's always good to focus on the big ones okay so keep that that's quite interesting so the volume levels are very important which is why i have them um and then you have to look at higher time frame levels which i don't i haven't put in yet I've got the yearly level. Where is the yearly level? Where's that one now? I think that's probably your biggest level to hedge against. Yeah, that top one there. That's going to be quite strong resistance at the top of the value area. It's going to be look, it's going to look, people are going to be bullish, but you're actually coming to quite strong resistance. Um, that corresponds with. You know, it doesn't really have, there's a lot of the liquidity was washed. This previous range point of call, the value over there. Mm, losing the golden pocket. Probably going to find this like these higher time frame fib lines are powerful so it's always a good idea to to hedge against those yeah that's the one really actually even though the 50 fib is there look you're only coming you're coming back to, to back test this higher time frame 382 see that that line there so you have a sr fib lower down but actually you've got a much more um important higher time frame fib level from this pivot low to the all-time high you've got this uh full fib on the log on the log chart and you see where the price has come all the way to the back test there and now the price is down here so basically you're in a little bit of a range between there and there I think if you lose five dollars uh, and then you could just scale back a little bit you just start you just sell like a little bit start scaling out and the other way to do it i don't know if if you're not leveraged and you don't i don't know i wouldn't really mess about with with spot if you're long-term hodling but you could like start scaling out and scale back in. So that's always. Couldn't understand how to be profitable. How do you choose? Hedge. Basically. You, you hedge. <laughs> at these higher time frame levels. The FIB ones. As the price comes into those levels. Yeah. You can, you can short. A percentage of your portfolio okay and as the price comes back down you can buy back yeah so if you were short there and you short there then as the price comes back down you can buy back so it's just it just allows you to trade without messing about with your spot but the value is a reflection of your spot it's not easy to do i don't think it's a good idea honestly to do it in 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 between i think it's good to do when you come to the all-time high but even then most people don't know how to do it and uh, they fail and it's not that easy it's not that easy to people say it's easy it's not that easy yeah and i think the, the hardest part is 
conquering your emotions when you hedge. You just have to be quite ruthless. Basically, you're selling as the price goes up. That's what a hedge is. But you're, you've got a small invalidation. So if the price goes up, you'll lose, but your value of your bag will still go up. So in a situation like this, this is the weekly time frame. Let's say you don't like the price action. You see a reaction. You don't like the price action. You take a hedge. That's your invalidation and that's your that's your hedge. So in that red zone, you risk a certain amount of your tokens, um, whatever percentage that you decide. That's really not the way to do it, to be honest with you. The way to do it. is um, in the area of interest, you have to zoom in <laughs> on a lower time frame in the area of interest, wherever you're interested, and you have to look for some kind of change of structure in the area of interest where you're looking to short, okay? And so here you can see the one hour time frame. Um, you waited for the structure change. Yeah. And let me see. So it was there, wasn't it? Low low. That was the low low. It made a higher high, but the problem here was, are you looking at the candles? You lost that, you lost the neckline. That was your hedge. Just, this is hindsight. Hindsight is a lot easier, um, but you have to be very, you have to be very attentive to the way the price is moving. Yeah. You have to be really on it. Once you made the market structure change, that was your signal to look for a hedge. Yeah, you could have just sold, but actually you see it came back up It made a higher high, but it was just a, like a dead cat bounce or some kind of relief rally of sorts um, because people were interested to pick up this token. They bought it right up, but actually what was happening was people were taking profit and other people were selling into that rise. And so what you had is this previous pivot as the price came up, you can't lose that pivot now because you have to go up. And the minute the price, the minute that pivot was lost, it came underneath that. That was your hedge, and so you have. It's a little bit more complicated than just I'm going to hedge, and you're effectively trading, but you're taking a position with an invalidation. Now, this could be a wide invalidation, but effectively you lose that neckline. You're out. Yeah, you're out. And what's interesting is it does come back, but it can't, it comes back to the same neckline. You see that? Comes all the way back there. And it's hard because you might short, that's your hedge. But technically, you don't really want to take profit on your short because that's the hedge. The idea is that you hedge short so you don't lose USD value. Um, but you're still buying long. You're still longing as well. Okay. And what you what people do when they hedge is they let their shorts get stopped out without taking much profit. And what they're actually doing is as the price comes back down, they're still longing. Okay. So they're hedged on their one position, but then the price comes down, they're still longing. Longing, but the only way to do that would be to take profit because you don't want to get caught in a long, which goes bad. So it, it's very difficult to do just spot, but when you're doing leverage trades, you can long take profit, long take profit, long take profit. You're still hedged. Yeah. And as long as the price doesn't go back above your invalidation, then you won't get stopped out. So that's the hedge. Yeah. So it's, you have to, it, it's not as straightforward as, um, <laughs> as you think it's quite, in, it's quite intense. It's, uh, uh, you know, I can't tell you that I'm an expert at it. I know how it's done. And 
like I said to you before, we all we all we always in a in a in a we're always educating. We're always becoming learning. Everyone is always learning. You never stop learning when it comes to the markets. I don't think that helped because I don't think I got much from that myself. But maybe uh, you can ask me again. All right. So Bitcoin is pulling back from the VWAP probably yeah and it's a good lesson to learn about the VWAP <laughs> live on air now we're still looking for a higher low on the five minute time frame um I'm not I'm not fond of losing this high as support to be honest with you I'm not crazy about that but it doesn't matter as long as we don't take out this low the five minute could come all the way here make a higher low and head right back up it's very possible for the price to do that um, that being said the price could also be going down to make another low yeah, it's very possible for the price to now lose hope and make another low there. I think that's probably more preferable. <laughs> Dare I say it? I'm I'm actually thinking higher time frame. The reason why that would be more preferable for me is because one, it will give me another opportunity to long, and two, um. Just to change market, it'd just be easier to change market structure. Yeah, like this one hour time frame. Let's go down, make another low. Make another low. It'd be easier to change one hour time frame market. So we kind of we will need to change market structure. So it's not going to just be five minute to fifteen to to, to one hour. It's going to require lots of changes. Um. Okay, I've been streaming for a lot. I think I'm going to go soon. <laughs> it was fun. Um, if you've got any questions, you can always post them in um, on my Twitter. Uh, or in the comments on the videos. See, Slurf is coming back into the, to the, to the point of control. I'm not fond of this price action. I think this pump was very deceptive. So I'm not thinking that this is going to hold, actually. <laughs> um, so that's why you have to wait for a back test. You always have to wait. You've got to find support. Well, I need to I need to know that that is support. Yeah. And I'm not fond of the way it pumped. It was bullish, but not not if you lose support. So. Are we losing support? It looks like it. <laughs> it looks like we're losing support. Or it looks like we're not holding support. Or we're not back testing support. Or we're not flipping support. Resistance into support. It, it wasn't resistance, huh? but it really was. Look, you can see that it was resistance here. Um, it kind of went through it. This is not very strong price action for bullish behavior. You're not really getting much of a reaction here at the point of control. Yeah, it's quite at the moment it is it's looking quite weak. And ideally what you want is you want like some 30 minute close. You see how before? How long did it take to, to confirm this is resistance? One 30 minute candle, two, three, four, five. Oh, you kind of want the same thing here. You want one, two, three, you know, you want to, you want resist, you want to see that that's flipped. You want exactly the same behavior, but in reverse. So it's always good to just be a little bit patient and just wait and not rush into these things and just make sure that that level is holding. Um, there's a little bit of reaction now. It's not that strong. 
why is that happening well exact i'll tell you why because bitcoin yeah that's bitcoin um actually bitcoin did do a head and shoulders pattern didn't it yeah so this isn't looking strong sorry guys uh, maybe we're going to go for another low again um that's possible let's see what happens at the golden pocket but i i think this head and shoulders pattern here was was uh was uh wasn't great <laughs> turkish baklava whereabouts in turkey So we're back at the look we're finding support on the 50 percent of this uh pool i think if the price can get back above there then there'll be a little bit of a long opportunity just because it's a reclaim of that pivot and it's corresponding to the 382 um you'd have to see how the if the price can get back up to the vwap So the price is quite volatile right now. Let me have a look at the other flow. Some longs are coming in here. That's good. It's good to see longs. What I really want to see is some bullish divergence here. Honestly, that's I'm going to get confidence in this whole kind of longing business. Once I start seeing some whales absorb uh, the selling. And I think we'll know as we come lower to the lows here to see how, to see if there are people absorbing, if there are whales absorbing this uh, this sell pressure. Because at the moment I'm not seeing it and that's going to give me the confidence. Okay, There is a long here. Look, that's a, is that a long? No, that's a short. What the hell? But it says, it's a long, it's both actually. If someone's shorting as the price is coming down if someone's longing to uh someone's longing the 50 percent check view up that's view up there that was fine oh it's different now huh? because it no that's fine no it came that's fine that is the view up six one seven four oh Six one seven. Oh, it's a bit lower. On TV, it's slightly lower. It's about the same, huh? So what would be nice? So to to flip that pivot back into support, that would give me confidence, or just find support slightly lower, um, and then look for some kind of reversal. All right. Wait for the cross and the golden pocket. A mere candle theory chart in Bitcoin. Wait for the cross and the golden pocket. Golden pocket will be the best. Uh, let me just have a look at the volume profile as well. Let me see. So we're back into the value area. That's pretty miserable. <laughs> that golden pocket is the best you've got the point of control you've got the golden pocket um is there anything else oh you've got no you don't
I think because we've lost this value area, then actually uh, it's probably better down here. Probably here. That would be the area of interest for a long. Um, I don't like, even though it's above the 382 now, I don't like that we're back underneath the value area. So, and also there's this monthly level. Um, probably I would be thinking to myself, you have a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern formed here. You have a neckline, which is that monthly level. So if we can actually get back above there, I think that would be the better long. That would be, it'll be under the VWAP, but it's a different circumstance now. It's the second time. Second attempt, and we're back above the level, invalidating the head and shoulders. You invalidate a bearish pattern, it actually becomes bullish. Yeah. So if we get back up to there, above that monthly level, into the head and shoulders pattern, uh, I think that will then go through. That's what I'm thinking. And look, it's interesting that it went into the daily level there. So I didn't have my levels up. I should have had them. So that was definitely an area of... Uh, potential resistance otherwise it's probably best to long here the problem is if the price really starts going down you just don't want to catch a falling knife either you know because then what's going to prevent the price going all the way down so you have to wait for the price to find support before you long you can't it's not a good idea to just long into falling prices you have to wait for the price to find support and then you can take a long otherwise you could you could get uh you could be catching a falling knife so we are back above that pivot now it's kind of good it's going to mess people up this for me i like to be safe and that for me safety would be to get it back up there or lower down Thirty minute candles look impulsive. Let me have a look. Mm, apart from these two red candles <laughs> into the daily level, it's like a, it's like miserable. That's like a, you've lost, you've lost a really, like looking at the price action now. I honestly think it'll be a lot safer to just long the daily level on a reclaim. I think right now that was, we had our long opportunity. That was the swing failure here. And probably now looking for lower. I don't want to be bearish, but I don't look, look at that. I wasn't really paying attention. I should have shorted that. Apologies. But we're trying to catch the bottom. That's really what we've been trying to do. Uh, and I don't really like shorting at the end of um, kind of downward moves, but that was a perfectly good short. Losing the VWAP into the daily level was a really good short, by the way. Uh, but you, again, you have to take profit until we make a lower low. But yeah. Probably the first opportunity is what I said trying to get back above this uh into this kind of into this head and shoulders invalidating that pattern getting back into the neckline but ideally the best long here for sure is there flipping the daily level into support that will be another higher high um you'll miss the higher low which could be here but you'll you'll probably push up then be a nice long let's have a look at the order flow to see if there's uh, anything interesting there's some longs entering there shorts closing longs entering don't know Things entering. I wouldn't mind seeing some divergences here now. All right, guys. Um, I hope you guys have a lovely day.
Uh, I've been on this train for too long. It was fun. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, TRVL. <laughs>so much for that idea <laughs> all right guys all right have a good evening thanks